Chapter 51. Not enough talent. Huang Zuji asked someone to deliver this to you, Xie Yujia said while observing Hao Ren's facial expression. Hao Ren's face was emotionless as he knew this trouble was eventually going to come to him. However, he didn't expect it to happen this soon and this direct. What's this? Zhao Jiayi took the note from Hao Ren's hand as he felt something odd was going on. After he read the note, he shouted angrily, FCK. He really dares to cause trouble. Ren, don't be scared. I will call a few of my guys to go with you tonight. Shish. Xie Yujia immediately stopped Zhao Jiayi and told him not to shout. She then turned to Hao Ren and said, I think I know why he is trying to talk to you. However, this thing between you and him can be fixed. Why don't I come with you tonight so that I can explain it peacefully to him and we can resolve it as quickly as possible? It will be alright. Let's wait until tonight and see. Hao Ren took the note back from Zhao Jiayi and ripped it into pieces. Then, he threw it into the garbage bin behind the classroom. Xie Yujia got more anxious when she saw Hao Ren's calmness as she thought Hao Ren might do something irrational. She asked tentatively, you and Su Han's relationship, isn't like the rumor, right? She wasn't sure about the answer to her question. Since last time Zhao Yanzi came to school for the athletic games, Xie Yujia was more convinced that Hao Ren had a special relationship with Su Han. However, deep down, she still believed that Hao Ren wasn't the type of person who was capable of stirring up trouble. After all, he seemed like an honest guy. Especially after his performance at the athletic games, she had an entirely new appreciation for Hao Ren. She thought he was down to earth, brave, and also very humble. No matter what, it was her responsibility to make sure no one would take this opportunity to cause trouble, especially since Huang Zuji wasn't only the son of the deputy mayor but also a troublemaker at school. If Zhao Jiayi and the others were to start a fight with Huang Zuji, they would be the ones suffering more losses. Su Han is my distant cousin. The necklace she gave me was purely a gift, Hao Ren replied. Xie Yujia was relieved. How stupid was I am to think that Su Han is Hao Ren's girlfriend, she thought. All right, I will come with you tonight and clear things up with Huang Zuji, she said. There is nothing to clear up, Hao Ren's words suddenly turned tough. When facing a guy like Huang Zuji, the more you let him bully you around, the more arrogant he becomes. Do you think telling him that nothing is going on between Su Han and me is going to solve this problem? Because he wants to be with Su Han, nobody can be close to her. Because he is the son of the deputy mayor, the entire school has to listen to him? Xie Yujia was speechless after hearing Hao Ren's series of questions. In the end, Hao Ren packed his bag and stomped out of the classroom without saying whether he was going to go. Ren, I will go with you tonight. Zhao Jiayi ran out of the classroom and called Hao Ren. We will go too. Sao Ronghua and Zhou Liren both added. Go my asterisk SS. I didn't say I'm going to meet him, Hao Ren said. Zhao Jiayi thought Hao Ren felt powerless and said, Don't be scared. I will call a dozen of my guys. If Huang Zuji dares to fight us, we will fight back. Don't stir up more trouble. I will fix my own problems. If I go just because he had told me to, that will be like me paying him respect, Hao Ren replied. If you don't go, he will think you are afraid of him, Zhao Jiayi said emotionally as if he wanted to start a fight. He lost in the long distance race against me, so he is the one who should be embarrassed. Why should I be scared of him? If I am really scared of him, I wouldn't even compete against him in the first place, Hao Ren said. Yes. Screw that son of AB asterisk TCH. Let him wait on the field alone. What can he do about it? Sao Ronghua agreed. The four of them went to the cafeteria for lunch and then went to class as usual. Most of the courses in the second year were foundational courses. The schedule was busier as there was less free time between classes. After having experienced retaking failed courses during the first year, Hao Ren and his friends didn't dare to skip class again. After finishing programming and C language class in Academic Building D, all the afternoon classes were over. Like always, they were about to go to the internet cafe and play some games, and then have dinner at the Hongji Square before their night class, Principles of Marxism Philosophy. You guys can go without me, I have something to do, Hao Ren said to the guys after they walked out of the classroom. What's going on? If you are not coming, how are we going to team up and play the 3C tactic? Zhou Liren complained as he had been planning his 3C tactic during classes. Anyways, I have something to do. You guys go have fun. Hao Ren waved at them and walked towards the opposite set of stairs to prevent Zhou Liren coming to get him. 
All right, let's go. It's fine if he is not coming. Zhao Jiayi said to guys as they all started walking down the stairs in excitement. Xie Yujia, who just walked out of the classroom, looked at the stairs on both sides and decided to follow Hao Ren. The thing that Hao Ren said he had to do was actually to find Su Han at her office. Because of the interrogation, Hao Ren missed his chance to cultivate last night. Fortunately, there were no classes in the afternoon after 4 p.m. today so Hao Ren could cultivate in Su Han's office for two hours to make up for yesterday's time. After crossing two bridges between the tall academic buildings, Hao Ren entered academic building F where all the teacher offices were. He walked up the stairs to the fourth floor and went towards Su Han's office. Along the way, Hao Ren had no idea Xie Yujia was secretly following him. When Hao Ren knocked on the door and entered Su Han's office, Xie Yujia was shocked and there were no words to describe her feelings. You were being followed, and yet you had no idea. The moment Hao Ren closed the door, Su Han, who was wearing a purple chiffon skirt with floral patterns on it, said with her eyes closed. Oh? Hao Ren was slightly shocked. He opened the door and looked into the hallway, but he didn't see anybody there. Close the door, she is gone already, Su Han said lightly and opened her eyes. Hao Ren was perturbed as he closed the door, turned around, and looked at Su Han. Su Han was wearing a long purple chiffon skirt. The U-shaped neckline presented her sexy clavicle curve and plump chest lines. Because she was sitting cross-legged, her long beautiful legs were right in front of Hao Ren's eyes. Even her toes and glittering pink nails could be clearly seen. Also, the room was filled with a slight smell of incense which was very comforting. Su Han pointed at the window, and the closed curtain started to open up by itself. The green color and the peacefulness of the school appeared in front of Hao Ren's eyes, and the bright light wiped out all the dubious vibes in the room. Look at the nice view outside of the window instead of staring at me, Su Han slightly opened her lips and said. Hao Ren's face turned red as he quickly moved his eyes away from Su Han's long pretty legs. I have only practiced half of the spirit concentration scroll that Elder Lu gave me. I hope Su, Sister Su can guide me, he said. Ha, Su Han nodded, let me hear you recite the spirit concentration scroll. Hao Ren thought about it for a moment and started reciting it. The road to earth and heaven, is wide, thick, high, clear, peaceful, long, and infinite. The sun, stars, moon are the things of the world. Containing the seas and rivers, yet they never leak. Everything is contained, like reciting a poem back in middle school. Hao Ren recited everything he remembered in one try. He then looked at Su Han and waited for the next instruction. That's it? Su Han asked. That's it, Hao Ren replied. So, Lu Qing only gave you the first chapter of the spirit concentration scroll. No wonder you haven't made any progress after you have been cultivating for so long. That old guy, saying he would take care of everything, yet so careless, Su Han complained quietly. She then said to Hao Ren, I am going to read the next two chapters of the Spirit Concentration Scroll to you, listen carefully. Whether or not the validation is real, instead of guessing, open it and show it, or close it up entirely. Those who open it feel sympathy. Those who close it differentiates it sincerely. Whether to stay or to leave, it starts with one's ambition. Such as yin and yang, like circle and square. If there is no shape, the circle is the way. If there is shape, the square is the problem. Nothing is predetermined. If things go wrong, the wrong path was chosen. Things aren't always right. Feelings and integrity are forgotten. Sun Han's voice was clear and crisp and was lovely to listen to. Like a chain of pearls. Each pearl was a word that came out of her mouth. Hao Ren sat down peacefully and listened carefully as he concentrated and memorized every single word. Almost 20 minutes had passed, and Su Han finished reading the last word of the spirit concentration scroll. She asked Hao Ren, have you memorized all of it? Actually, Hao Ren wanted Su Han to read it all over again. Not because he couldn't remember, but because her voice was so lovely that he wanted to hear it again. However, he knew Su Han wasn't someone he would want to mess with. He was fortunate that she was willing to guide him already. Therefore, Hao Ren wouldn't dare to push his luck. If she found out what he was trying to play tricks, he would be the one to die first. Yes, all memorized. Hao Ren answered honestly. All right then, you can start cultivating by yourself, Su Han said coldly and started cultivating with her eyes closed again. 
If she didn't think Hao Ren was hardworking, she wouldn't spend all this time reading the basics of the spirit concentration scroll to him patiently. Instead, she would have smacked all these cultivation techniques into his brain and have gotten it over with. However, she didn't know that even though Hao Ren did not have the second or third chapter of the technique, he had almost gotten to the second level of the concentration cultivation techniques by touching the stone monument at the Taoist temple and communicating with the earth and heaven. Chapter 52 well, masters. Blue smoke floated from the incense burner, and the office was so quiet that one could hear a pin drop. Su Han was meditating, and the blue smoke from the incense burner floated around her without being disturbed. She looked as if she had stopped breathing, and even her eyelashes were frozen still. Stealthily, Hao Ren observed the beauty who looked like a photoshopped beauty in online gaming commercial. It suddenly occurred to him that with her capabilities, she would know that he was looking at her even with her eyes closed. At this thought, he looked away in a hurry and silently recited the first chapter of the Spirit Concentration Scroll three times. After that, he closed his eyes and tried to understand the second chapter. The second chapter corresponded with the second level of the Spirit Concentration Scroll. When Lu Qing taught Hao Ren the cultivation technique, he didn't expect Hao Ren to break through the first level so soon. He was afraid that Hao Ren would rush through the process and thus had only taught him the first chapter. Later, Lu Qing was immersed in businesses and had planned to check up on Hao Ren's cultivation progress in one month. However, he didn't know that Zhao Guang had personally given tips to Hao Ren, and Hao Ren's talent was better than he had thought. Therefore, Hao Ren had to stumble around without the second chapter of Spirit Concentration Scroll. On the other hand, Zhao Guang thought Lu Qing had taught Hao Ren the whole Spirit Concentration Scroll, a basic cultivation technique, so he didn't teach Hao Ren the second chapter either. He just gave Hao Ren some tips. It was like you telling a student to go to class without giving him or her a textbook and the student had to learn all the concepts through the practices. Without a systematic understanding of the structure, only the super smart kids could get a good mark. Emerged in the second chapter, Hao Ren gradually entered a meditation state and was oblivious to everything around him. The clock on the wall showed 6 o'clock. Sensing that the time was up, Su Han was about to open her eyes and send Hao Ren back. Suddenly, something was wrong. A massive pile of white clouds had accumulated above the top of the academic building F, and the clouds formed a tremendous and colossal vortex. The five elements nearby began to move violently, and even the soundproof array formation she built around her office was unstable. A powerful enemy is here, Su Han thought as she opened her glinting eyes. With a wave of her palm, a blue sword appeared in her hand. She was about to stand up and leap up into the air when the weird fluctuation suddenly vanished. The large vortex of clouds that were above the building and the whole campus suddenly dispersed. At this moment, Hao Ren, who was sitting across from Su Han, opened his eyes slowly and said shyly, Sister Su, it seems that I have broken through the level. What? Su Han stared at him blankly. She put away the blue sword and grabbed Hao Ren's arm. She immediately sensed that Hao Ren's body contained a little nature essence, it was empty before. Relieved, she let go of Hao Ren's hand with a bit of astonishment as she blushed. She blushed not because she grabbed Hao Ren's arm but because she, a heavenly level master, had panicked. Fortunately, she knew Hao Ren didn't see her panic, and the turmoil in her mind began to calm down. At that moment, alarmed Lu Qing barged into the room. Ms. Su, did you see that? Su Han turned around and said lightly, Don't panic, Elder Lu. It was just Hao Ren breaking through the second level of the spirit concentration scroll. Oh, Lu Qing's expression changed from being alarmed to embarrassment to calm and then to pleasantly surprised. Mr. Hao broke through the second level? Yes, he was cultivating here, and he just broke through, Su Han said calmly, keeping her usual aloofness. Ms. Su is indeed a master of cultivation. Under your guidance, Mr. Hao has broken through the second level so fast. Standing at the door, Lu Qing praised sincerely. Inside, he was amazed that Su Han was unfazed by the sudden change, and he was ashamed of himself for panicking and rushing to Su Han at the slightest movement. It was no big deal. Su Han sounded calm. Then I will leave you guys alone. I'm sorry that I barged in thinking something serious had happened. Embarrassed. Lu Qing kept berating himself as he backed out of Su Han's office. After Lu Qing left, Su Han had also regained her composure. Good. 
Lu Qing also panicked, and he shared my embarrassment. Anyway, I still have to work on my composure, she thought. Seeing Lu Qing barging in and then backing out apologetically, Hao Ren was confused and asked, Sister Su, what happened? Don't call me Sister Su. Call me Su Han, Su Han said coldly. Hao Ren obeyed her. Su Han, what happened? He asked. He felt weird calling her by her full name. But on second thought, a difference of a couple of years in age was no big deal for the dragons who could live for hundreds of years. Your breakthrough of the second level caused a slight phenomenon in the sky. Lu Qing thought something happened and came here to check with me, Su Han dismissed the incident lightly. Oh, Hao Ren looked up at the clock. Time is almost up, and I've got to go since I have class tonight. If I have time tomorrow, I will come here to continue my cultivation, he said. Okay, Su Han nodded coldly. Looking at Hao Ren who was walking out, Su Han thought, this guy is such a quick learner. Although his breakthrough was unexpected, my startled reaction was uncalled for. I have to work harder on my composure, she thought. With a wave of her hand, the soundproof array formation was activated again. She closed her eyes and entered her cultivation state. With books in his hand, Hao Ren hurried to the lecture hall in academic building C as class was just about to begin. Ren, Zhao Jiayi, sitting in the last row, waved at Hao Ren. Hao Ren hurried over and found that his three buddies had reserved a seat for him. Where have you been? We had a great time playing the 3C tactic. We completely destroyed those four guys in Yu Rong's dorm, Zhou Liren told Hao Ren excitedly. I went out of the school for an errand and didn't have time to eat dinner, Hao Ren said. Did you see the vortex of clouds above the school? It was almost as big as the basketball court, Zhao Jiayi asked Hao Ren. Really? I didn't see it. Is it still there? Hao Ren asked. It lasted only a few seconds, and I didn't even have time to dig out my phone to take a picture. Sao Ronghua and I saw it when we were on our way to class, Zhao Jiayi said. Before Hao Ren could ask more about it, roll call had begun. Since it was a big class of over 100 students, the teacher did it randomly. The teacher was quite cunning, and he would call out the names of those students who were close. For example, if he called Hao Ren's name, he would definitely call the names of Zhao Jiayi, Zhou Liren, and Sao Ronghua. In this case, it would be impossible for Zhao Jiayi and the other two to answer the call for Hao Ren if the latter was absent. Today, Hao Ren was lucky since he was the first name to be called among the hundreds of students. As predicted, Zhao Jiayi, Sao Ronghua, and Zhou Liren's names were also called one after the other. Luckily we are all here. I guess we won't be called next time, so we can skip the next class, Zhao Jiayi said after raising his hand and shouted, Here. Ren, it seems like many girls are looking back at you, Sao Ronghua, whose name had also been called, leaned towards Hao Ren and whispered. Hao Ren raised his head and looked forward. Indeed, many people were looking back at him. Is it because the teacher called my name? He thought. He listened carefully and overheard some glimpse of conversations. So he is Hao Ren. Oh, he is the guy who outran Huang Zuji at the athletic games. He seems to be close to Su Han. Did you know that Huang Zuji has called him out for a fight tonight on the field? When? 8 o'clock tonight after this class. Hao Ren felt a little uncomfortable after seeing more and more glances cast toward him. Chapter 53 The pains in cultivation Zhao Jiayi and his other buddies, who were sitting together with Hao Ren, had also heard the conversations around them. He bumped Hao Ren with his arm and said, Ren, it seems like you are quite popular. Whatever, Hao Ren lifted his book as a shield and lowered his head behind it to avoid being looked at. Hao Ren was now well known as Huang Zuji's rival and Su Han's boyfriend. Any one of those titles would result in him being in the center of the attention. We'll watch a good show tonight. I guess Huang Zuji will teach him a good lesson. The conversations continued. Huang Zuji is a vicious guy. He called you out for a fight and then spread the news to everyone. Sitting next to Hao Ren, Zhao Jiayi commented with a fierce frown. Ignore him. He thrives on attention, Hao Ren rested his head on the desk and said. For some unknown reason, he felt tired and desperately wanted to take a nap after breaking through the second level of the spirit concentration scroll. He was in a hurry when he left Su Han's office and didn't ask her if this was a typical reaction. Compared with the business of the dragon tribe, Hao Ren thought the incident with Huang Zuji was trivial and not worthy of his attention. 
It was like a man who had hundreds of millions of yuan wouldn't care if he had lost 20 yuan on the street. Su Han can easily destroy me if I don't work hard on cultivating. That is the real danger, Hao Ren sighed and clutched his head in his hands. They sat in the last row which was next to the windows at the back of the classroom. Hao Ren regulated his breathing and re-entered the second level of the spirit concentration scroll as he carefully tried to understand the essence between the heaven and the earth. The nature essence which had been running around him was now being sucked into his body, and the parts that couldn't be fully absorbed were tossed out. This process repeated continuously. Hao Ren found the dragon core that he had swallowed begin to respond to the circulation of nature essence flow. Under the repeated rush of nature essence, it started to automatically store the nature essence in Hao Ren's limbs and other parts of his body. The dragon core is indeed impressive, Hao Ren was amazed. The nine main acupoints in his body were slowly absorbing pure nature essence, giving him an indescribable pleasure. How can this guy fall asleep when there is trouble waiting for him tonight? Zhao Jiayi felt resigned when he saw Hao Ren closing his eyes. Ach! Hao Ren yelled suddenly, and his head bounced up from his desk. Seeing the teacher and students sitting in front of him all looking toward the last row, he lowered his head in a hurry and pretended to act innocent. Luckily, most of them didn't know who had yelled. The teacher paused his lecture and berated the students without a specific target. Without catching the troublemaker, the teacher had to resume the class. Seeing that everything had settled down, Zhao Jiayi reached out and touched Hao Ren. Hey, why did you yell? He asked. I'm fine. Hao Ren gritted his teeth and waved his hand at Zhao Jiayi. A moment ago, the nine acupoints in his body suddenly hurt like hell as if someone was piercing needles into him. Now, his whole body was in so much pain that he felt like he was being split apart. Seeing Hao Ren sweating in pain, Zhao Jiayi was alarmed. Are you okay? He asked. I'm fine. Hao Ren held his breath and pressed his clenched fists against the desk. He felt acute pain in every inch of his bones. Now he knew that the listlessness and sleepiness a moment ago and the tumbling of his organs and bones that happened just now were all parts of the process of cultivation. So painful, even cultivating the second level of the spirit concentration scroll, which is the most basic cultivation technique, is so painful. Can I survive on the rest of the cultivation path? Hao Ren gritted his teeth while those thoughts crossed his mind. The pain was finally over after a dozen deep breaths. Hao Ren looked down at his sweat-soaked shirt and then turned to Zhao Jiayi, Zhou Liren, and Cao Ronghua who were staring at him with astonishment and concern in their eyes. I'm fine now. I had a cramp, Hao Ren explained. Man, it was an artistic cramp. Your whole body was twisting, Cao Ronghua said. With a bitter smile, Hao Ren swept a palm over his sweaty face, thinking that the pain was not less excruciating than the cruel ancient tortures. He now understood why Zhao Yanzi, the only daughter of a dragon king, was so weak in terms of cultivation. One reason was that she couldn't focus her attention, and the other was that she couldn't withstand the pain. He remembered her words about the dangers of cultivation, the least danger was the loss of limbs and the worst danger was death. Although the path of cultivation wasn't as scary as she had described, the risks were indeed high. Then, he suddenly thought of Su Han who was also a female but had become a heavenly level master in her twenties. That not only required unusual talent but great fortitude as well. In her office, Su Han looked up at the clock and murmured to herself, well, the pain should have passed. If he couldn't withstand such small hardships, he will never make it through in the future. Then she put away the bottle of small golden pills she had in her hand. In the lecture hall in academic building C, Hao Ren, who was hardly in the circle of cultivation yet, was oblivious to the fact that there were pills that could alleviate such pain. He stretched and found that every joint in his body was more flexible, and his strength had reached its peak level. Don't you think that Hao Ren is a bit taller all of a sudden? Zhou Liren, who was sitting farthest from Hao Ren, asked Cao Ronghua in a whisper. Cao Ronghua turned to look at Hao Ren. He didn't think Hao Ren had grown taller but believed that Hao Ren's presence was different. His skin was smoother, his eyes were brighter, and even his hair was softer. Damn! Am I into him now? Cao Ronghua shivered in discomfort. After careful considerations, I think tonight you should. Zhao Jiayi turned to speak to Hao Ren and paused in the middle of his sentence. For a second, Zhao Jiayi thought the guy sitting next to him was someone else. 
He looked again and realized that the guy was indeed Hao Ren. Am I hallucinating, or Hao Ren suddenly became more handsome all of a sudden? Zhao Jiayi wondered and totally forgot what he was going to say. At that moment, Hao Ren's mobile phone vibrated. He thought it was Xie Yujia calling to ask him about tonight's fight. But when he answered it, he heard Uncle Wang's anxious voice. Ren. Your grandma's blood pressure suddenly rose, and she has fainted. Chapter 54. An emergency. What? Hao Ren froze and felt a surge of blood rush through his head. What's the situation? I called an ambulance, but it's not here yet, Uncle Wang said anxiously. Zhao Jiayi, take my books to the dorm for me. Hao Ren stood up and rushed out of the classroom. The teacher watched Hao Ren sweep past him with a blank expression. He was only enraged when Hao Ren was gone. The students nowadays are so rude. They are so audacious that they think they can leave the classroom in the middle of the class without giving any explanations to the teacher, he thought. Hao Ren dashed out of the academic building toward the main gate of the school while he spoke on the phone. Uncle Wang, don't panic. Did you call the hospital close to the cottage and ask them to pick up my grandma? I can't find their phone number. Uncle Wang sounded extremely agitated. Lamenting silently at the muddle-headedness of Uncle Wang, Hao Ren dashed out of the school's main gate and tried to grab a taxi. Since the school was in the suburbs and it was almost 8 feet o'clock at night, there were many taxis in the area. He stood there for a while before spotting several taxis, but they all had passengers in them. In the half minute that he tried to grab a taxi, Hao Ren kept talking to Uncle Wang. However, this half minute seemed to be longer than a century. He even thought about jumping into the middle of the street and stopping a random car. While he was as agitated as an ant on a hot oven, he tried to calm Uncle Wang down over the phone. In the height of anxiety, he saw a red car driving past him and suddenly remembered the dashing sight of Zhao Hongyu in her red Ferrari. Zhao Hongyu. Hao Ren thought of a sudden idea. Uncle Wang, I'll hang up now since I need to call for help. Call me when the situation changes. Hao Ren ended the call and fumbled through his contact list. After finding Zhao Hongyu's number, he dialed it. When Hao Ren accompanied Zhao Yanzi up the mountain on that weekend trip, Zhao Hongyu gave him her number in case of an emergency. He hadn't used it until now. Usually, he wouldn't bother Zi's parents. Since this situation was urgent and his parents were still abroad, the only people Hao Ren could think of now were Zhao Yanzi's parents. The phone beeped six times, and no one answered. Hao Ren was so agitated that his palm holding the phone began to sweat. Hello? The phone was suddenly answered, and Zhao Hongyu's gentle voice came through the phone. Auntie, it's me. Hao Ren shouted urgently. Oh, it's you, Ren. Why didn't you come here and tutor Z today? I was going to call you to ask about it, Zhao Hongyu said. I have class tonight, and I skipped class to tutor Z last week. I told Z yesterday. Hao Ren explained in his mind. Right now, he had no time to explain this to Zhao Hongyu. He said urgently, it's my grandma, she. For some reason, Hao Ren was so moved after hearing Zhao Hongyu's voice that he got choked up. What happened? Don't panic. Take it easy. Sensing the agitation in Hao Ren's voice over the phone, Zhao Hongyu was alarmed. My grandma fainted due to high blood pressure, and she needs to be taken to the hospital. However, Uncle Wang, the caretaker of my grandma, doesn't drive. Hao Ren exhaled and cleared his head before explaining the situation. Give me the address, and I'll go over now, Zhao Hongyu said immediately. Blue Sea and Golden Sand Resort in the southern suburb of East Ocean City. The number of the cottage is 16. It's the sixth cottage on the right after you enter the south gate, Hao Ren said. His heart latched in his throat, and his arm holding the phone shook violently. Got it. I'll be there soon. We will keep in touch. Zhao Hongyu hung up, and it seemed like she had already run to the garage. Lowering the phone from his ear, Hao Ren stood at the main gate of the school, not knowing what to do next. The road ahead was dark, and the cars driving past him shined into that darkness. Buzz. His mobile phone vibrated. Hao Ren immediately answered it and heard Zhao Guang's deep voice. Are you at school? I'm on my way and will pick you up at the gate in about 10 minutes. Hao Ren said, okay, and the phone call ended. He stood on the empty place in front of the main gate feeling the cold wind penetrate his shirt. Snap. Snap. Under the force of the strong night winds, the big banner hanging over the gate danced with a loud snapping sound. 
Hao Ren turned his head and looked at the banner with sudden resentment. Squeal. A black Chevrolet stopped before Hao Ren. Zhao Guang stuck his face out from the window and said, Get in the car, and we can wait for the news at home. Nodding numbly, Hao Ren got in the car and found that Zhao Yanzi was also there. She looked at Hao Ren with concern and sympathy. It seemed like she was worried about Hao Ren and came with her dad to pick him up. Steadily, Zhao Guang started the car and drove toward their home. It was not a long ride from their home to East Ocean University. Pale-faced, Hao Ren sat in the car and thought for a while before asking Zhao Guang, how did auntie go there? She drove, Zhao Guang answered. Hao Ren was a little disappointed since he had expected Zhao Hongyu to use her superpower and fly there. As if he had read Hao Ren's mind, Zhao Guang continued, don't worry. It doesn't take much longer for your auntie to drive there than to fly. We have a lot of restrictions on flying. If she encounters an inspector, a lot of time will be wasted on answering questions. Besides, if she flew there, she couldn't bring your grandma to the hospital. Right. Hao Ren nodded as he felt grateful for the help of Zhao Yanzi and her family. He just hoped that his grandma was okay. It took only a dozen minutes to drive from East Ocean University to Zhao Yanzi's home. Zhao Guang parked the car and brought Hao Ren and Zhao Yanzi into the house. The cozy and familiar setting slightly calmed down Hao Ren's agitated nerves. He took out his mobile phone and called home again. Uncle Wang answered the call, and Hao Ren immediately asked about his grandma. A woman just arrived and claimed to be your friend. She applied some first aid to your grandma and carried her into a car. She drove away less than a minute ago, and I was so agitated that I forgot to ask her name, Uncle Wang told him over the phone. Well, Uncle Wang, although good at cooking, is not someone you can depend on in an emergency, Hao Ren lamented about Uncle Wang's clumsiness in his mind as he comforted him over the phone and hung up. Uncle Wang panicked when Hao Ren's grandma got sick. He couldn't find the hospital's phone number and didn't know how to deal with the crisis. He even needed Hao Ren, who was far away at school, to direct him, and he didn't even ask for the stranger's name before letting the stranger take Hao Ren's grandma away. Hao Ren became more and more agitated when thinking about this. He thought it was quite unsafe to let Uncle Wang continue taking care of his grandma alone, and he berated himself for not being able to help his grandma when she was in danger. With a frown, he looked up at the clock, thinking that it was quite fast for Zhao Hongyu to get to the cottage at the seaside in just 20 minutes. Zhao Guang and Zhao Yanzi sat together with Hao Ren in the living room instead of tending to their own businesses. About another 20 minutes later, the phone in the living room rang abruptly. Zhao Guang picked up the phone and listened. He turned to Hao Ren and said, Hong Yu has taken your grandma to the eastern hospital in the city, and she is being treated. The doctor said she would be fine. Chapter 55 Life-saving Grace Hao Ren was slightly relieved when he heard the news. Come on, I'll take you to the hospital. Zhao Guang picked up his keys and said to Hao Ren. Okay. Hao Ren stood up from the couch immediately. Zhao Yanzi also followed him to the door. Zhao Guang drove smoothly, and they reached Eastern Hospital in 20 minutes. He got in touch with Zhao Hongyu and found out that Hao Ren's grandma was in stable condition and was placed on a hospital bed. They walked along the stairs and through the quiet corridors. Then, they reached the room Zhao Hongyu mentioned. There were four beds in the room, and three of the beds were taken by other elderly patients as well. Zhao Hongyu didn't want Zhao Yanzi to get noisy, so she made shushing gesture to her before they entered. Hao Ren's grandma was lying flat on the bed, and she had an intravenous drip in her arm. It was the saline solution. Her eyes were closed, and her breathing seemed regular. The wrinkles on her face were like the valleys between the hills. The doctor says she will be fine after resting for two days, Zhao Hongyu stepped forward and said to Hao Ren softly. Thank you, auntie. Hao Ren was relieved and walked over to take a look at his grandma. Since this was an emergency, she was put into a standard ward like this. I will talk to them tomorrow and see if they can transfer her into a single room, Zhao Hongyu whispered to Hao Ren from behind. It's okay, Hao Ren turned around, having no idea how to thank her. I need to pay for a bunch of speeding tickets tomorrow, but I have an appointment with Philip Stark because he wants to visit my studio. So, I won't have time to pay. Zhao Hongyu whispered into Zhao Guang's ear. Hao Ren sat beside the bed and looked carefully at his grandma. He caught what Zhao Hongyu was whispering about, and he thought about how she helped him out even though they were not related. 
he was incredibly grateful towards her. Let me pay for the tickets, auntie, he turned to Zhao Hongyu and said. She was surprised at how sharp Hao Ren's hearing was. After a short moment of pause, she shook her head and smiled, it's all right. There are only two or three of them. Zhao Guang looked at Hao Ren and thought for a bit. Then he asked, did you break through the second level of the spirit concentration scroll, Ren? Hao Ren nodded. He was so worried about his grandma that he forgot to mention the good news to Zhao Guang. No wonder I sense something different about you. Your five senses have gotten sharper too, Zhao Guang suddenly understood. Five senses? Hao Ren was confused. Yes, five senses, seeing, hearing, smelling, tasting, and touching, Zhao Guang explained. Hao Ren didn't feel anything special, but since Zhao Guang said they were enhanced, then that must have been the case. Zhao Yanzi, who was beside Hao Ren, looked at him in surprise. She thought, it hasn't been long, and he has already broken through the second level of the spirit concentration scroll. I ate elixirs at home as if they were candy and barely got to con level. You should keep your grandma company since she is alright. Z has school tomorrow, so I'm going to take her back home. Oh, I have already paid for the hospitalization and treatment fees, and I also paid 6,000 yuan in additional deposits. She can take her time to recover here, and I'll come by tomorrow if I have some time. Zhao Hongyu said to Hao Ren. I'll pay you back. Thank you, auntie, Hao Ren said sincerely. It's not much money so don't worry about it. Taking care of her is your priority. Zhao Hongyu took Zhao Yanzi by the arm, and the three of them left. Hao Ren stayed in the ward, waiting for his grandma to wake up. She finally came to her senses at midnight when Hao Ren was about to fall asleep. Ren, she called out softly as soon as she saw him beside her bed. Hao Ren was suddenly woken up by her voice, and he rubbed his eyes to have a better look. When he saw his grandma awakening up, he called out in excitement, Grandma. Then, he immediately covered his mouth as he remembered that there were still other elders in the room. Why am I here? His grandma asked. You fainted at home, so we took you to the hospital, Hao Ren answered lightly. Oh, I remember now. I was cleaning the house, but I don't remember what happened next. She raised her skinny arm and pinched her forehead as she continued. Why are you here? Shouldn't you be in school? Hao Ren told her exactly what had happened. However, he replaced Zhao Hongyu's identity of mother-in-law to his student's mom. In that case, they are a family of good people. I must go thank them in person after I recover. Grandma sighed. She was too weak to keep up their conversation, so he persuaded her to rest some more since he didn't want her to pass out again. When she looked at her filial grandson, she was delighted and forgot about her health condition. At sunrise, a nurse brought over breakfast, and Hao Ren took it from her and fed his grandma carefully. Ren, today is Friday, so you still need to go to school, right? Grandma asked as Hap Ren lifted up a spoonful of soup. It's okay. I can take a day off to keep you company, Hao Ren said immediately. He was planning to go back on the weekend to keep his grandma company but he didn't think that something like this would happen. Hao Ren felt guilty when he thought about his grandma being home alone when Uncle Wang wasn't very good at taking care of her. However, his grandma's words reminded him of Zhao Jiayi and the guys. He called them up and told them to help him out. That meant if a teacher took attendance, Zhao Jiayi and the guys would need to inform the teacher of the situation. Grandma had to keep having her intravenous drip today, and Hao Ren went back and forth as a filial grandson. He washed towels and peeled apples for her, doing whatever he could. In the afternoon, Hao Ren received a text message from Xie Yujia, asking about his grandma's condition. Hao Ren knew she must have overheard Zhao Jiayi when he explained it to the teacher, and this message was her way of caring for him. Although it was only a friendly text, Hao Ren was still a bit moved by it. Grandma saw Hao Ren hesitating on his cell phone, so she laughed, Is it your girlfriend? No, he laughed and typed in, thank you for asking, after a few seconds of hesitation. It's normal to have a girlfriend at your age. Grandma kindly brought up the old topic again. Hao Ren knew that she had the traditional concepts of the suburb farmers and believed that boys should start dating at the age of 20 and get married before they turn 25. However, given her age, it was understandable that she wanted to have a granddaughter-in-law as soon as possible. Therefore, he didn't argue with her. The strange thing was, Xie Yujia would always pop up in his head whenever his grandma brought up this topic. 
It was as if his instinct had been telling him that a smart and understanding girl like her would be the type of granddaughter-in-law his grandma would like. But if you do have a girlfriend, she would probably be visiting me now that I am sick, right? Grandma didn't want to let this topic slip, so she kept asking tentatively. As she finished her sentence, Zhao Yanzi entered the room curiously. She was in her blue school uniform and had the pink backpack on her back. Chapter 56. The Genes of a Clever Wife and a Wise Mom? When she saw Hao Ren and his grandmother in the room, she confirmed that she didn't walk into the wrong ward. She walked towards Hao Ren slowly, turned to his grandmother on the hospital bed, and asked softly, Grandma, do you feel better? Ha ha, I feel a lot better, grandmother replied. Turning around, she asked Hao Ren, this is. Ah, she's Zhao Yanzi, the little girl who I've been tutoring recently. You fainted last night, and her mother took you to the hospital, Hao Ren replied. Hearing that Hao Ren called her a little girl, Zhao Yanzi pouted unwillingly. So, this is my little savior. Grandma looked at Zhao Yanzi with appreciation. Come here and let grandma have a good look at you, she said. Zhao Yanzi came closer to the hospital bed when she saw grandma waving at her. Grandma narrowed her slightly cloudy eyes and observed Zhao Yanzi happily. After she saw this little girl with the ponytail being so delicate and cute, it struck her soft spot as an elder. She gently stroked Zhao Yanzi's head and said, This little one is so pretty. Zhao Yanzi smiled as she heard grandma's compliment. Her eyes curved like a bright half moon, and that made grandma like her even more. Ren, little Z is my savior. You have to work harder when tutoring her in the future. Grandma stroked the head of this cute porcelain doll-like girl and said to Hao Ren. Zhao Yanzi heard her words and looked at Hao Ren with pride as if she obtained the Shangfang Sword 1. Hao Ren could only nod his head. By the way, why are you here? Hao Ren looked at Zhao Yanzi and asked. I only have a half day of school on Fridays. I got off early and wanted to come to take a look, Zhao Yanzi said. Even though she spoke calmly, Hao Ren knew she was worried about his grandma and came to see her. He looked at Zhao Yanzi and thought, even though this little girl is harsh when she speaks, she is kind-hearted. Have you eaten lunch yet? Hao Ren asked her. Going to go home and eat, she answered. N, 0, Vel, B, J, N, served as the original host for this chapter's release on N0 V3 LB1N. I'm going to buy lunch for grandma. Do you want me to get something for you too? Hao Ren asked. He knew that Zhao Guang had work today and Zhao Hongyu might be busy welcoming a foreigner. If Zhao Yanzi went back home now, there wouldn't be anything for her to eat. Zhao Yanzi thought for a bit and left her backpack on the chair beside the hospital bed. I'll go with you, she said. Grandma lied on the hospital bed, listened to their conversation quietly, and thought, this little girl is great. However, she could never think that this lovely girl was her granddaughter-in-law. Zhao Yanzi and Hao Ren went downstairs, walked to the restaurant near the hospital, bought three meals, and returned. Perhaps Hao Ren was surprised by Zhao Yanzi's voluntary visit. He felt like this girl wasn't as inconsiderate as before. When they returned, a few nurses were planning to change Hao Ren's grandma into a different room. It was because Zhao Hongyu used her friend's connection and talked to the hospital superintendent, and that was why the hospital was moving Hao Ren's grandma from a general ward to the best private room. Hao Ren and Zhao Yanzi helped carry some items and followed the nurses and grandma to a south-facing private room with better air quality. Seeing Zhao Yanzi carrying a bunch of stuff in her hands, Hao Ren had a more favorable impression of her. A nurse pulled the curtains to the sides, and the bright sunshine from the garden outside immediately brightened the whole room. This was definitely one of the best places in the hospital. Lunchtime, Grandma. After his grandma settled down, Hao Ren brought her lunch to her. You guys eat too. Don't starve yourselves. Grandma said while looking at Hao Ren and Zhao Yanzi. She felt like this Z, as Hao Ren's student, had helped out more than enough today. Hao Ren and Zhao Yanzi opened their lunchboxes. Zhao Yanzi was craving for the braised pork in Hao Ren's lunchbox, so Hao Ren had to give it to her. Grandma was slightly confused when she saw them fighting but yet also being very intimate. After lunch, Hao Ren asked the nurse to change the saline solution and watched grandma as she fell asleep. Zhao Yanzi was going to go home, but she stayed because she thought this room was wide and comfortable, and she started to do her homework here. At the table in front of the window, Zhao Yanzi's body seemed to become more feminine under the sunshine. Through the light, 
her curvature in the blue school uniform was perfect, and her arms underneath the sleeves seemed translucent and cute. How Ren sat beside her and answered all of her questions patiently. Their bodies formed a pair of shadows, cuddling on the floor of the room. Time passed by, and Zhao Yanzi finished half of the weekend's homework with Hao Ren's assistance. A few of her textbooks were still at Hao Ren's place, and Hao Ren could only return them to her on Monday. Ah they changed the room, a gentle voice sounded. Hao Ren and Zhao Yanzi turned their heads around and saw Zhao Hongyu appear in business attire at the door. Why are you here, Z? She was slightly shocked when she saw Zhao Yanzi. From Zhao Hongyu's expression, Hao Ren was positive that visiting grandma was Zhao Yanzi's own idea. Um, I came here to visit Hao Ren's grandma, Zhao Yanzi packed up her homework and said. Zhao Hongyu smiled in gratification. She probably felt as if Zhao Yanzi had suddenly grown up. Hao Ren saw that there were a bunch of fruits and dietary supplements in her hands, and he walked over quickly and said, Why did you buy so many things for us, auntie? It's nothing. Zhao Hongyu smiled as she put the fruits and dietary supplements by the cabinets beside the hospital bed. She asked grandma, are you alright? Hao Ren's grandma wasn't dull and knew who Zhao Hongyu was from her conversation with Zhao Yanzi. She sat up and said, thank you for bringing an elder like me to the hospital yesterday. Don't mention it. That's what I should do. Zhao Hongyu answered frankly. Grandma continued and said, the money for the hospital. Zhao Hongyu held grandma's fingers and didn't let her continue, please don't worry about it. Seeing Zhao Hongyu being so polite about the issue, grandma felt terrible and repeated, no, no, no. Auntie, please don't treat me like a stranger. We are a family, Zhao Hongyu said. A family? Grandma looked at Zhao Hongyu in confusion. Hao Ren felt like his heart just dropped on the floor. Chapter 57 an honored guest seeing the confused look on Hao Ren's grandma's face, Zhao Hongyu laughed. I mean, Ren has been tutoring our Z, and we have gotten acquainted like a family. He he, grandma laughed happily at this explanation and said, Yeah, I can tell. Ren does have a good relationship with Z. Zhao Yanzi's face blushed immediately as she defended herself in a quiet voice, who says I have a good relationship with him. I just asked the doctor, and he said that if everything is okay after another day of observation, you can go home, Zhao Hongyu continued. Thank you so much, but I still need to pay you back. Once I am discharged, I will look at the bills and give you the money, grandma insisted. Seeing her like this, Zhao Hongyu couldn't refuse any longer. Therefore, she nodded reluctantly and said, all right. Mom, didn't Philip Stark come to visit your studio today? I thought you were having dinner with him, Zhao Yanzi said. I showed him around the creative center today. But since Hao Ren's grandma is ill, I canceled our dinner arrangements, Zhao Hongyu smiled. Hao Ren was touched that Zhao Hongyu had prioritized his grandma, but he had no idea that Philip Stark was a world-renowned designer who worked on the renovation of the most historic and luxurious hotel in Hong Kong. The Peninsula Hotel as well as the personal residence of the French president Francois Mitterrand. Zhao Hongyu didn't just give up an ordinary dinner in order to see Hao Ren's grandma at the hospital. Since she was here, she certainly wouldn't leave without chatting with Hao Ren's grandma for a bit. Although she was in business attire, she was still an understanding wife and loving mother who was down to earth. Her thoughtful conversations and smart responses helped her bond with Hao Ren's grandma. Grandma was a bit unhappy about how busy her daughter-in-law was since Hao Ren's mom was working all the time. Therefore, after she found out that Zhao Hongyu was great at doing house chores and taking care of her family, grandma liked her even more. During their conversation, Zhao Hongyu asked, Auntie, it's pretty inconvenient for you to stay in the beach house. Why don't you move into the city? The inception of this chapter's publication is linked to N. Zero. Vel. B. J. N. Ren's dad said that the air on the beach is fresher, so he bought me the cottage there. We sold our place in the city many years ago, grandma answered. You are a senior, and it's not safe for you to live alone over there. Ren almost lost it yesterday when this happened. I think it would be easier for you if you lived in the city, Zhao Hongyu carried on. Grandma was a bit convinced as she turned to Hao Ren and imagined how stressed out he was the day before. Zhao Hongyu continued, how about moving in with us after you have recovered? Hao Ren was listening to their chat from the side, and he tensed up at the suggestion. Grandma moving into Z's house? What would that mean? He thought. 
That's not necessary. Grandma waved hastily and said, I'm used to living alone at the beach. It's as okay. Plus, Ren's parents are coming back next week, so I will be alright with them taking care of me. Next week? Zhao Hongyu's eyes lit up. Yes, should be next Wednesday. I will ask Ren's dad to take your family out for dinner to thank you for saving my life, Grandma said. Please don't bother with that, we are a family, Zhao Hongyu kept mentioning that they were a family. She soon added, but it'll be good for us to all meet. How Ren's heart sank. He felt like he had just fallen into a trap. Although his grandma looked healthy, she had severe high blood pressure. It was an indisputable fact that Zhao Hongyu did him a huge favor this time. Great. I'll have Ren's dad make a reservation when he comes back so we can show our gratitude, grandma said brightly. Zhao Hongyu covered her mouth as she laughed and glimpsed at Hao Ren, and he lightly sighed helplessly. He knew that the meeting was destined even if this incident with grandma never took place. With Zhao Guang controlling the Mingri group, and he would be able to meet up with Hao Ren's parents by either investing or sponsoring their projects. Since we are already a family, Zhao Hongyu added in the heat of the moment, maybe you can stay with us for a few days and fully recover before Ren's parents come back. We can take you back to the cottage afterward. Plus, we are very close to Ren's university. You guys would be able to see each other more often because Ren comes to Tudor Z every day. That sounds great, doesn't it? Ren was so worried when he heard the news yesterday. You don't want to worry him too much too, right? Those words were persuasive, but grandma was still hesitant, that's too much trouble. Not at all. We have a spare room, and I will get it ready for you after we get back. It's not troublesome at all. Just an extra pair of chopsticks, Zhao Hongyu said enthusiastically. Grandma turned to Hao Ren and was still hesitant. Hao Ren was in a dilemma himself after hearing Zhao Hongyu's suggestion. On the one hand, he didn't want to trouble Z's family because of his grandma. On the other hand, he wanted her to be taken good care of after getting out of the hospital. He wanted her to get well soon because she shouldn't go through too much at such an old age. Uncle Wang was not young, and he might neglect a lot of things. How Ren would still be worried if he let her return to the cottage directly from the hospital. Therefore, he said after a thorough consideration of the situation, since my parents will be home next week, it's better for grandma to stay with Auntie Hongyu for the time being. We can take you back to the cottage after my parents come back. He thought to himself, we must pay back the favor to Z's family because they have spent money, time, and energy on grandma in her time of need. It's a good thing that Z is still young. I can ask dad to give her a thick red pocket with 7,000 to 8,000 yuan as a gift when they meet. That should be enough to express our gratitude and cover the cost. Grandma finally made up her mind after hearing Hao Ren's words. She said to Zhao Hongyu, embarrassed, Aoi, sorry for the trouble then. She had the same thoughts as Hao Ren. She wanted to thank Zhao Yanzi's family a million times once Hao Ren's dad was back. Then take some good rest, auntie. I will send a car to pick you up first thing in the morning tomorrow. Zhao Hongyu laughed cheerfully. She stood up and lightly bowed to grandma. Then she waved Zhao Yanzi over. Goodbye, grandma. Zhao Yanzi put the backpack on her back and said to grandma in a girly tone. You have really met a great family, Ren. Grandma sighed as the two walked out of the room one by one. Next morning, after having examined Hao Ren's grandma's condition, the doctor confirmed that everything was fine. He told Hao Ren to complete the discharging procedures. After everything was done, Hao Ren held onto his grandma and helped her to walk out of the hospital, she was still weak. A black stretch Lincoln limousine was already waiting outside, it was 5 meters away from the entrance. Chapter 58. Backup is here, similar to last time, short elder son, dressed in traditional Chinese attire, was standing beside the car with two brawny men in black suits. Seeing Hao Ren walk out with his grandmother, elder son hurried over. Gongzi 1 Hao, Taijun 2, congratulations on your recovery. Please get in the car. Hao Ren's grandma was uncomfortable to be greeted like this by elder son who looked older than her. Baffled, she turned to look at Hao Ren. Hao Ren was feeling awkward as well when he saw people in and out of the hospital looking at them. Hurriedly, he helped his grandma into the car. Bam! Bam! The car doors closed after elder son got into the car after them, and the stretch Lincoln limousine drove away from the hospital steadily. On the way, elder son was all smiles but remained silent. Hao Ren's grandma was full of questions, but she refrained from asking them. 
The car arrived at Zhao Yanzi's home. This time, elder son didn't go in and say hello like last time. Instead, he left with the car after dropping off Hao Ren and his grandma at the door. Zhao Hongyu heard the car and hurried out to welcome them. At the sight of welcoming Zhao Hongyu, grandma's mood got better. Oh, I'm so sorry to trouble you again after all the inconveniences I caused you when you brought me to the hospital, she said. Well, it's really no trouble at all. We are a family, and that's our duty. Zhao Hongyu took grandma's hand and led her into the house. It was grandma's first time inside Zhao Yanzi's home. She looked around at the luxurious interior and the large high-end rugs on the floor of the living room and knew that Zhao Hongyu's family was very well off. Here you are. Welcome. Zhao Guang walked out of his study room and came to greet them with a smile. Grandma had never seen Zhao Guang before, but she guessed that he must be Zhao Hongyu's husband. She nodded at him amiably and said after some thinking, your home is so beautifully decorated, but I think I'd better not stay here. Why, didn't you promise yesterday to stay in our home after you're discharged from the hospital? Zhao Hongyu interrupted anxiously. Grandma had thought that Zhao Hongyu was from an ordinary family when she saw her simple clothes the day before. But after knowing that Zhao Hongyu's family was wealthy, Grandma got a little uncomfortable. After all, Grandma was from the countryside and lived a very simple lifestyle. Grandma. Hearing the sounds from downstairs, Zhao Yanzi, dressed in a hooded shirt and a pair of denim shorts, ran down. She looked cute and innocent, like an energetic little white dragon jumping out of the water. She had meant to say hello to the guest as required of a good-mannered family member. However, Grandma was charmed by Zhao Yanzi's cute and innocent look. She took her in her arms and patted her head. Good girl. I just came out of the hospital and hadn't get you a gift, Grandma said. Grandma's health is the only gift I want, Zhao Yanzi said sweetly. She meant what she said since she had been quite concerned about Hao Ren when she saw him so anxious and lost when Grandma was in the hospital. That was why she had gone with her dad to pick up Hao Ren and hoped that she could help out. Of course, caring for Hao Ren didn't mean that she liked him. Auntie, please stay with us, Zhao Hongyu urged again. Looking at Zhao Yanzi in her arms, Grandma hesitated and said, Well, fine. I'm just afraid to disrupt your beautiful home. Let's sit down for lunch, Zhao Guang called to them. Hao Ren looked up and saw delicious looking dishes on the table. Hao Ren helped his grandma to the table. With a reclining chair added to the table, the five of them sat down and had lunch in high spirits. After the incident with his grandma, Hao Ren was very grateful towards Zhao Yanzi's family. Even if they could find another solution to the problem between him and Zhao Yanzi, he would never forget this big favor that Zhao Hongyu and Zhao Guang had done for him. After lunch, Zhao Hongyu helped grandma to rest in the room that had been newly cleared for her, Hao Ren and Zhao Yanzi were put in charge of cleaning up, and Zhao Guang had left as there were some urgent business matters he had to take care of. Zhao Yanzi stood shoulder to shoulder with Hao Ren in the kitchen while washing the dishes. To tell the truth, Zhao Yanzi sucked at washing dishes as none of the plates she washed was clean so Hao Ren had to wash them again. Thank you for all the things you did, Hao Ren said while he rewashed the plates. I didn't do anything, Zhao Yanzi pursed her lips. Hao Ren smiled and said, do you want me to play games with you this afternoon? I don't need your company. I'm going shopping with Ling this afternoon. Zhao Yanzi pushed all the dirty plates to Hao Ren and skipping out of the kitchen. Afterward, she dried her hands and thought her task was over. Hao Ren turned and saw Zhao Yanzi tiptoeing out of the door and running to the street through the glass door of the kitchen. This girl is going out shopping without her mom's permission. She must have gone pocket money from her third uncle to buy girly things. Exasperated, Hao Ren shook his head and continued washing the dishes. Maybe it was her way of telling Hao Ren not to be smug. Zhao Yanzi had dinner in Ling's home after shopping with her. Then, she asked Ling's parents to call home to tell her parents that she was staying the night at Ling's home. Knowing that Ling and Zi were best friends, Zhao Hongyu agreed to Zhao Yanzi's request. After all, it was the weekend, and she wanted her daughter to have some leisure time. Hao Ren stayed the night in Zhao Yanzi's home to keep his grandma company. The next day was Sunday, and he returned to school after being assured of his grandma's comfort. After the eventful weekend, Hao Ren returned to the dorm and went back to the messy and happy life with Zhao Jiayi and his other buddies. Another week began. After two classes in the morning, Hao Ren carried an armful of library books and went to the library alone to return them. 
After returning the books, he borrowed some new ones. In the past, he had some time for reading. Now, he had to tutor Zhao Yanzi and cultivate outside of his regular class schedule. He almost had no time of his own and couldn't play cards and games like Zhao Jiayi and the others. Hao Ren gradually felt like Zhao Yanzi's home was his own since he went there every day after school and now even his grandma lived there. He walked out of the library with those thoughts on his mind. When he walked toward the stairs, he saw class president Xie Yujia dressed in a white shirt studying in the periodicals reading room. She seemed to have sensed his presence as she turned and saw Hao Ren on the stairs. Hao Ren smiled and waved at her. After that, he continued going downstairs with books in his arms. He went into the hall and out of the library. When he was turning towards the direction of his dorm, he heard hurried footsteps behind him. He turned and saw Xie Yujia rush towards him with books and notebooks in her arms. Hao Ren, wait. I need to talk to you. Chapter 59. Why are you so disrespectful? Xie Yujia was running so fast that she almost tripped over the steps outside the library and landed in Hao Ren's arms. She barely steadied herself, and her face was red due to the run. She panted and said, Are you going back to your dorm? Yeah. Hao Ren looked at her, baffled. I come I am heading back to my dorm, too, Xie Yujia said after half a second pause. Oh. Let's walk back together, Hao Ren still looked nonplussed. Wait for me for a second. My bicycle is over there, with her books in her arms, Xie Yujia walked to the parking lot on the right side of the library. She put the books in the basket in the front and unlocked the bike before walking it to Hao Ren. Dressed in a white shirt, a pair of denim shorts, and a pair of green canvas shoes while walking a semi-new bike, Xie Yujia looked like the girl next door. In Hao Ren's mind, she had the perfect image and should be the most popular girl in the school instead of that blatantly dressed up Lin Li from the third class. Seeing Hao Ren staring at her, Xie Yujia blushed and said, Let's go. Okay. Hao Ren walked with her shoulder to shoulder. They walked across the open space in front of the library and crossed the bridge over the school lake. The sun was shining, and the bike rolled forward slowly, matching their steps. They walked for a dozen meters in silence before Xie Yujia asked abruptly, How's your grandma? She is fine now, Hao Ren thought for a moment and said, Thank you for your concern. Xie Yujia lowered her head and asked after a few seconds, What is going on between you and Su Han? With her white hands on the bike handles, her soft and elegant body leaned slightly to one side. She is my distant cousin, Hao Ren forced himself to say the words even himself wouldn't believe. That day, Thursday, I saw you enter her office, Xie Yujia said. Hao Ren turned to look at her. Now he knew that the person who had followed him was actually Xie Yujia. He thought quickly and said, Oh, I went to ask her about something I didn't quite understand from her class. Oh, so she tutored you privately, Xie Yujia said immediately. Well, Hao Ren smiled at the assumption, though the content of the tutoring session wasn't about the topic taught in the class but about cultivation. Any more questions? Hao Ren asked after Xie Yujia turned silent. No, Xie Yujia shook her head. Looking at her bright and pretty face, Hao Ren thought the beautiful class president was quite cute. They continued to walk. Although Xie Yujia had the bike with her and had finished asking her questions, she didn't seem like she was in a hurry. Warm welcome to world-famous biologist Hao Zhonghua and globally well-known meteorologist Yu Yang who will be giving lectures in the university. A red banner hanging over the top of the Green Hill cafeteria came into their view. It was hung here to get more students' attention. Looking up at the banner, Xie Yujia started another topic. I didn't expect our school to be able to invite such famous people to give guest lectures here. Oh. Do you know them? Hao Ren was surprised. Seeing Hao Ren's surprise, Xie Yujia said immediately, How can I not know them? Hao Zhonghua is China's most famous biologist, and the domestic media says that he is the most promising Chinese candidate for the Nobel Biology Prize. His paper on genetic information transcription has been published in Nature magazine in the United States. International media also has a high opinion of his other research projects, though I can't remember the titles now. Xie Yujia had a lot to say about the global reputation of the so-called greatest biologist in China. However, when she talked about his biological research projects, she couldn't remember the titles. Seeing the confusion on Hao Ren's face, Xie Yujia was angry at her futile efforts. 
Anyway, he is one of the greatest scientists in China. Besides, he is very young, only in his 40s. He published papers in all kinds of science magazines, and he is in the news frequently. You haven't heard of him at all? Seeing her serious expression as if she was giving a lecture to a student, Hao Ren had an urge to laugh. You guys only know about playing online games, watching movies or reading comic books in your dorm, and you don't care a bit about the world around you. If you guys keep going like this, you will be left behind by the world. With one hand on her hip, Xie Yujia lectured him sternly. Seeing her all riled up, Hao Ren had to give in. Okay. Okay. Now I'll remember his name, he said. Good. Xie Yujia was satisfied. It would be shameful if you knew nothing about such a famous scientist. Besides, he should be a distant relative of yours. Distant relative? Hao Ren was baffled. Yeah. Since you both have the surname of Hao, you guys probably belonged to the same family 300 years ago, Xie Yujia stared at Hao Ren and said. Hao Ren chuckled. You are right, class president. I didn't know you are a fan of this Hao Zhonghua. Be respectful. He is the most famous scientist in China. Xie Yujia began to lecture him again. Yeah, yeah, Hao Ren didn't want to argue with a girl or the class president. He surrendered and said, class president. I guess you will definitely go to the lecture this Thursday. Of course, and this time he isn't alone. His wife will be here, too. This is a rare opportunity for us undergraduates. As academicians, he and his wife are busy with their research and rarely show their faces in public. I wonder how the school managed to invite them both to give us lectures. This is even a rare opportunity for doctoral students. Xie Yujia was excited about this topic. She had been a straight-a student since elementary school, and she had her eyes on science and technology. As a result, her admiration of scientists was understandable. Of course, even the students who had no interest in science would go to the auditorium to see the famous couple Hao Zhonghua and Yu Yang. Xie Yujia continued her lecture while walking with Hao Ren. Hao Zhonghua is only in his 40s, but he is already a member of the Chinese Academy of Sciences 1. And his wife, Yu Yang, is also awesome since she is a member of the Chinese Academy of Engineering. Some say each of them could be a member of both the Chinese Academy of Sciences and the Chinese Academy of Engineering, but they aren't given the titles because of their young ages. Hearing the gossip about the couple from Xie Yujia, Hao Ren found the serious look on her face funny. Soon, Xie Yujia found that Hao Ren was still unimpressed after her lecture and was almost treating what she said as some jokes. She was seriously upset and said, You, you don't have any respect for such great scientists. Hao Ren was about to argue his case when the cell phone in his pocket began to buzz. Digging out his phone, he saw it was from Sao Ronghua. He answered lazily, Well, I'm on my way. You can take out the cards now. It's not about the cards. SH asterisk T went down. Sao Ronghua's agitated voice came from the phone. Zhao Jiayi is in a fight with the guys from the basketball team. Chapter 60. The outburst of Hao Ren Hao Ren was astonished by the news. He asked immediately, where are they? Zone B on the basketball court. Sao Ronghua yelled on the phone. Got it. I'm coming. Hao Ren hung up and looked towards the direction of Zone B. He was ready to take off. Xie Yujia reached out and held him back. What happened? He asked. Zhao Jiayi is fighting with the guys from the basketball team. Hao Ren answered. Suddenly, he looked at Xie Yujia's bike and reached for the handles. Lend me your bike, he said. No, I'm going, too. As the class president, Xie Yujia felt it was her duty to make sure that everyone in her class was safe. Hao Ren didn't want to argue with her. He threw his leg over the bike and was on it instantly. Xie Yujia held onto his shirt tightly and sat on the back seat of the bike. With Xie Yujia on the back seat, the bike was still not heavy. Hao Ren paddled hard and dashed forward at a hurtling speed. Xie Yujia was astonished at the speed and the powerful strength of Hao Ren's legs. She had no choice but to clutch his shirt in her hands and hold onto Hao Ren tightly to stop herself from falling off the bike. The ordinary bike rushed toward zone B of the basketball court. Screech! Hao Ren braked hard when they reached the court, and Xie Yujia's soft body crashed onto his back with great momentum. However, Hao Ren was oblivious to all this. Jumping off the bike, he dashed onto the court. With her chest hurting, Xie Yujia caught the bike and kept it from falling. She saw the court was crowded with people and fighting noises could be heard coming from the center. 
she pushed the bike aside and ran after Hao Ren onto the court. Hao Ren pushed through the crowd with a force he didn't know he possessed before, rushing towards the center. Xie Yujia had followed Hao Ren closely and thus also got into the inner circle of the crowd. In the center of the basketball court, four big guys from the basketball team surrounded Zhao Jiayi while giving him bashes and kicks. Zhao Jiayi was bruised all over. Although he had fallen to the ground, he stubbornly kicked at his opponents who were wearing sports shorts. Hurt and enraged by his kicks, his opponents beat Zhao Jiayi with greater force. Stop. A surge of hot blood rushed into Hao Ren's head. He rushed over and punched the guy who was giving Zhao Jiayi the most vicious kicks in the face. That guy was red in the eye and had not expected someone would dare to stop him. Unprepared, he was solidly punched by Hao Ren's fist. He fell back three steps, and his face instantly swelled up. The inception of this chapter's publication is linked to N0V3L, B1N. It happened so fast that the others didn't notice Hao Ren's interference as they kept kicking Zhao Jiayi. Enraged, Hao Ren rushed into the circle of the fight. Shielding Zhao Jiayi with his body, Hao Ren grabbed onto two ankles and swung them out. Bang! Bang! Two big guys from the basketball team crashed onto the ground. Xie Yujia's eyes widened, astonished by Hao Ren's great strength. Anxious to save his buddy, Hao Ren stood up and grabbed another two guys from the basketball team by their shirt and swung them out with force. The two six feet tall guys flew into the air. All the people in the crowd were stunned. Is him Superman coming to the rescue? He looks thin and weak, but he had just knocked down six to seven big guys from the basketball team in the blink of an eye, they thought. With a bruise on the corner of one eye, Joe Liren, who was standing at the corner in the crowd, was also stunned. He was six feet tall, and he had tried to help Zhao Jiayi but was knocked down by one fist instantly. Beside him, Cao Ronghua, who was even weaker than Zhou Liren, was standing there. He had tried to break up the fight and was pushed far away by one brawny arm of one of the basketball team members. He had called Hao Ren to get more help, but he was astonished to see Hao Ren knocking down all the opponents. Who dares to come? Red-eyed, Hao Ren shielded Zhao Jiayi with his body and yelled. His act was extremely courageous in Xie Yujia's eyes. Looking at Hao Ren who was sweaty and red in rage, Xie Yujia, a well-behaved student who hated fights, suddenly found him extremely dashing. Kid, who do you think you are? The power forward in the basketball team stood up and threw his 6 feet 4 inch body toward Hao Ren. He didn't believe Hao Ren could catch his body. He had blamed his earlier fall to his unpreparedness, after all, the brutal force of the basketball team was unrivaled. Seeing this guy rushing toward him, Hao Ren's rage ignited. He didn't even dodge since his buddy, Zhao Jiayi was lying at his feet. Bang! Hao Ren reached out and caught the 6 feet 4 inch tall and 200 pounds power forward. Their palms collided with each other. Like in Russian wrestling, they were competing with pure force. Dang! 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 The brawny power forward was forced back four steps and then crashed onto the ground at the last unsteady step. It happened in the blink of an eye. All the people had disbelief on their faces. What happened? The question arose in the mind of everyone present. The fallen power forward also looked at Hao Ren in astonishment. This ordinary student who is one head shorter and half of my size pushed me to the ground. He thought, I am the power forward of the basketball team which had won the champion of the college basketball league. Snap. Snap. The shoelaces on both of Hao Ren's shoes snapped. He bent his back and helped Zhao Jiayi to get up. He looked back at the members of the basketball team and spat out two words, just wait. Swoosh. The crowd stepped aside and opened a path for them automatically. Hao Ren helped the limping Zhao Jiayi out of the basketball court and toward the dorm building outside the campus. Zhou Liren and Cao Ronghua exchanged a look with each other, hurriedly stood up, and followed Hao Ren. The dazzled crowd was left speechless on the basketball court, including Xie Yujia, who had her cell phone in her hand and was planning to call her older brother. Looking at the four guys leaving in the sunset through the wired fence of the basketball court, she was at a loss as to what to do next. Chapter 61. The attitude of the school the guys in dorm building number 7 didn't know about Zhao Jiayi's fight until the four of them returned. Yu Rong, Ji Yu Jiadong, Huang Jianfeng and the other students in the nearby dorm rooms all came over to ask about the incident. 
They were all astonished when they knew Zhao Jiayi had been in a fight with the savages from the basketball team. Zhou Liren's eyes swelled up and looked like a panda. Cao Rongwa, though not injured, had his clothes torn open. And Zhao Jiayi had the most severe injuries with a bloody mouth, a scratch on his forehead, a bleeding nose, and countless bruises on his arms and legs. Only Hao Ren was intact except for his broken shoelaces. It was the most severe group casualties for room 302 since the day they enrolled in school. Yu Rong fetched some anti-infection medical solution from his own dorm and applied it to Zhou Liren's wound. Zhao Jiayi, on the other hand, had to go to the hospital to check if he had any bone fractures. Damn. They dared to fight with us. Yu Rong, call all the guys from our department and go crash their training court. Huang Jianfeng, who liked to stay in his room and read novels, was indignant. He called and shouted to Yu Rong, the most trustworthy guy among them who could summon a lot of students. Stop it. Suddenly, a crisp female voice came from the outside of the door. Xie Yujia in her white shirt walked into room 302. Under the watchful eyes of the guys, she walked to Zhao Jiayi and asked, Are you alright? Zhao Jiayi didn't expect the class president would come to see him in person. He had been grimacing with pain, but now he suddenly toughed up and answered firmly, I'm fine. Nodding, Xie Yujia looked at the other guys in the dorm and said, School management is aware of the fight and is dealing with it. Don't put yourselves in the wrong. We should just forget about it after being beaten by them? No way, Huang Jianfeng shouted. The members of the basketball teams are also injured. The point guard has a fracture in his arm, the shooting guard sprained his ankle, and the power forward injured his back. There will be a basketball match between our school and Jinghua University the week after next week. If they can't play in the match, our school will be in the danger of losing. You must not do anything to make the matter worse. The unrivaled players on the basketball team were also injured? The guys in room 302 couldn't believe the information Xie Yujia just told them. Seeing their expressions, Xie Yujia continued, In short, the school will deal with the matter seriously. You must not make the matter worse, or you will have to endure the consequences. Yu Rong took half a step forward and said, but the school will surely stand behind the basketball team, and Zhao Jiayi will be punished unfairly. Besides, the record of disciplinary punishment would not affect the future of those guys on the basketball team while it would be different for Zhao Jiayi. Fine. I will report it to the school. Irritated, Xie Yujia interrupted Yu Rong. She was incredibly bothered with the whole thing. On the one hand, the guys from her class caused trouble, but she didn't want any of them to be punished. On the other hand, the starting players on the basketball team were injured because of the fight, and the basketball team would probably lose the match against Jinghua University in two weeks. Her older brother was now furious and had said he would handle this situation in person. That meant Hao Ren, main fighter, would face her older brother's fury. Besides, she had asked around about how the fight started. Zhao Jiayi and his two buddies had gone to the basketball court after finding no seats in the internet cafe. While they were playing, some members of the basketball team tried to take the court from them. Zhao Jiayi didn't agree and argued with them. It had been quite an ordinary argument until Zhao Jiayi cussed at them and threw the basketball at one of the players on the basketball team. These members on the basketball team were always hot-tempered, and thus both parties got into a serious fight. The fact was that Zhao Jiayi and his buddies had started the fight. Anyway, I'll take you to the hospital and get you checked. Xie Yujia turned to look at Zhao Jiayi and said. No, I'm fine. Zhao Jiayi wanted to show his strong side in front of a girl. You better get a check up. There will be more trouble if you have some unknown injuries. Xie Yujia was stubborn. She grabbed Zhao Jiayi's arm and insisted. Yeah, go check. The injury report will also be proof against them, other guys urged. Fine, Zhao Jiayi finally gave in. He looked at Zhou Liren and said, you will come as well. You must have your eye treated. You look like a panda. Okay. Okay. Rubbing his eye, Zhou Liren stood up. Other guys volunteered to go with Zhao Jiayi, but Xie Yujia stopped them, saying, Yu Rong and Cao Ronghua can accompany them. Hao Ren, you stay in the dorm and rest. Then she left the dorm with the four guys, and the other guys all returned to their own dorm rooms. Xie Yujia came to their dorm and prevented the escalation of the situation while giving them comfort and emotional support. She was an excellent class president. Hao Ren was left alone in the dorm room. He thought for a while and was still unease. 
he dug out the thick engineering philosophy book and found Lu Qing's business card that he put in it. The school's attitude on this incident was critical, and Lu Qing, the head vice president supervising the school's management, would play an essential role in dealing with this incident. Hao Ren didn't want Zhao Jiayi to be mistreated. Although Zhao Jiayi started the fight, the trigger had been the longtime bullying behaviors of the players on the basketball team towards other students, especially junior students. With the card in his hand, Hao Ren took out his phone and thought for half a minute about what he intended to say. He was about to dial the number when a thought occurred to him, so he put the card back into the book and stood up with the key of the dorm room. It would be better to talk to Lu Qing face to face, rather than talking to him over the phone. Hao Ren left the dorm building and hurried onto the campus. He went directly to Vice President Lu Qing's office, situated on the sixth floor of the administration building. He knocked on the door and waited a while, no one answered or opened the door. Worried that some teachers passing by would ask him questions, Hao Ren waited for half a minute at the door and had to leave when Lu Qing didn't answer. N0V3LTR0VE served as the original host for this chapter's release on N0V3LB1N. He knew the vice president was a busy man. Since the punishment decision wouldn't be made so soon, Hao Ren was not very anxious. He wasn't even certain that the fight had been reported to Lu Qing. With this thought, Hao Ren took the elevator and went down. While he was walking out of the administration building, a mountain-like figure walked toward the entrance. With a height of more than 6 feet 5 inches and a width of almost 3 feet 3 inches, this figure blocked the sunshine from coming in through the door. The giant had to bend his back and lower his head to enter the door of the building. With a scowl on his face, he was not in a good mood. Hao Ren guessed that he must be the legendary captain of the basketball team. Is he here to see the vice president Lu Qing, too? The thought occurred to Hao Ren. Indifferent to an ordinary student's astonishment, the giant walked into the elevator from which Hao Ren had just come out. Dang! Dang! The moment he walked into the elevator, it shook slightly. Hao Ren stood there and watched the number above the elevator door change from 1 to 2, 3, 4, 5 until it stopped at 6. Chapter 62. The Unyielding. Hao Ren thought about it for a moment but walked out of the administrative building and returned to his dorm instead. On his way up the staircase and through the hall, he found that all of the male students, whether they knew him or not, were all staring at him strangely as if he was an alien. Is that him? Sun Han's rumored boyfriend? The guy who beat Huang Zuji at the long distance race, and the one who fought against half of the basketball team on his own. You can't really tell from his appearance, can you? He looks just like a normal kid, who would have thought? They continued to gossip behind Hao Ren's back. None of them had ever imagined that Hao Ren, an ordinary looking student and a nobody in the school, could have badly beaten up those arrogant and presumptuous players on the basketball team. Their words, more or less, had not escaped Hao Ren's keen hearing. He found that as more people talked about it, the more exaggerated and distorted the descriptions of the incident had become. Paying no attention to their comments, Hao Ren directly returned to the third floor. All he cared about right now was Zhao Jiayi's condition. Ren, you took care of half of the basketball team all by yourself. Ji Yu Jiadong rushed out and asked astoundingly as he saw Hao Ren pass by their dorm room. It seemed that the people in their dorm building fell behind on the news. After Zhao Jiayi went to the hospital and Hao Ren went to the administrative building, the reports of Hao Ren's heroic deeds such as how he took on multiple players and frightened and restrained them finally came through. By the time Hao Ren had come back, word had spread throughout the dorm building number 7 and the entire southern region of the dorm area. Is Zhao Jiayi and the others back yet? Hao Ren asked. Not yet, but Yu Rong called just now and said that the test results are out. According to the results, Zhao Jiayi's injuries are mostly bruises and the worst injury was just a muscle strain on his right arm. Zhou Liren also only has a bruise around his eyes, and that's all, Ji Yu Jiadong replied. Hao Ren felt slightly relieved upon receiving this update. Luckily, Zhao Jiayi had tough skin. Acquiring only minor injuries after being assaulted by a round of basketball players indicated that Zhao Jiayi was no doubt the fittest in their dorm room. Oh, and there is something else, seeing that Hao Ren started to head towards room 302, Ji Yu Jiadong stopped him and said, apparently, two of those guys on the basketball team have mild bone fractures, one pulled his hamstring, and one got scrapes on his back. Out of the six, four have been injured, 
and the situation seems more serious than what the class president had said. Since this is the latest update acquired by Yu Rong, I think it should be accurate. Hao Ren went blank for a second and did not say anything. It seemed that the basketball team suffered more from this fight. No wonder even the basketball team captain, who usually only stayed in the training court and rarely made any appearances in the school had gone to talk to Lu Qing in person. Not only that, he looked horrifyingly mad. This matter won't be settled very easily, he thought, nonetheless, taking advantage of their special status, the bad eggs on the basketball team had been bullying other students on a regular basis. Therefore, they weren't so innocent, and one might even say that this outcome served them right. Taking out his key, he got into their dorm room and seated himself in front of his desk. He then opened a textbook and tried to read, but he couldn't digest any of it. After all, with the occurrence of such a hectic incident, he could not remain calm. Shortly after, Zhao Jiayi and Zhou Liren had returned with Xie Yujia's company. When they saw that Hao Ren was reading on the balcony, they couldn't help but almost applaud him for being so composed. How was it? Are you all right? Hao Ren inquired as soon as the gang walked in. Nothing serious. I just pulled my arm. With a few days of rest, it will be fine, Zhao Jiayi answered. After today's incident, he looked to Hao Ren with a slight sense of reverence. No one would have guessed that Hao Ren, who was mild and gentle and had a name even resembled the pronunciation of good person, was such an incredible fighter. To Zhao Jiayi, who had shared a room with Hao Ren for a long time and supposedly knew him well, it came as an even bigger surprise. You already know about the situation with the basketball team, right? Yu Rong walked over and asked Hao Ren. Yes, more or less, Hao Ren put the book back on the desk. The basketball team consists of 12 players. Four of them are now injured, and they are all starting players. Not only that, this incident will likely affect the outcome of the basketball match between East Ocean University and Jinghua University which is taking place two weeks from now. Hence, the school will definitely take this incident seriously, Xie Yujia said solemnly as she turned to face Hao Ren. She was a little irritated. At a time like this, the fact that Hao Ren was able to read calmly and act as if nothing had happened had angered her. She felt like all the worries she had for him had gone to waste. Ren, this has nothing to do with you. I started the whole thing. It doesn't matter if it results in punishment or expulsion. I am the one responsible and will deal with the consequences alone. Zhao Jiayi spoke up suddenly. What nonsense, I was the one who injured those guys, and you are a victim who was assaulted by those players. This has nothing to do with you. Hao Ren stood up and stated determinedly. Don't leave me out. With bruises around one of his eyes, Zhou Liren stood with them. Me too. They'd better penalize none of us or all of us. FCK, if they're going to make one of us a scapegoat, then all of us in room 302 will be scapegoats together. Sao Ronghua who was usually gentle and soft-spoken declared fiercely. All right. Stop this, you guys. Xie Yujia raised her hand and interrupted them, at any rate, I will try my best to ease things with the school. Don't you dare stir up any more trouble at this time. Zhao Jiayi disagreed with her words. What do mean we stirred up trouble, they were the ones. Seeing that Zhao Jiayi was raising his voice at Xie Yujia, Hao Ren promptly pulled at Zhao Jiayi's arm to stop him from continuing. He then turned to Xie Yujia and said, Thank you, class president, and sorry for all the trouble we caused you. Looking at Hao Ren, Xie Yujia paused and gave up on lecturing him. In the end, she could only let out a sigh. I. Then, she turned and walked out of room 302. Ren, don't worry, it's probably going to be detention or something. I will see the guidance counselor tomorrow and explain everything. I will take full responsibility and accept all consequences. In any case, this should have nothing to do with you. After Xie Yujia walked out, Zhao Jiayi looked at Hao Ren and said. It can't be that simple, Hao Ren responded silently. Xie Yujia was right. If this incident had taken place at any other time, it would not have been a big problem, and they might get off with just a verbal warning. However, the fact that it happened right before the basketball match between East Ocean University and Jinghua University had made it complicated. Jinghua University was the runner-up for last year's National College Basketball League, and their basketball team's skill sets were comparable to those of East Ocean Universities. After all, they lost with a mere two points difference at last year's finals. This year, they called for a friendly exhibition match with East Ocean University before the official start of the season. 
It was obvious that it was an act of provocation. If East Ocean University lost this match, it would significantly impact the morale of the team and their confidence to do well in the regular season. As a result, both the basketball team and the school placed immense emphasis on winning this match. Yet, during such a pivotal moment, the top players on the school's basketball team had been injured in a fight. This has turned into a very sensitive matter. If the school was hoping to defend their champion title this year, they would have to take the basketball team's concerns into consideration. Having said that, even without the imminent match, the school would have ruled in the basketball team's favor to pacify the group anyway. Moreover, Hao Ren knew that the captain of the basketball team, who usually only took responsibility for training the team and rarely got involved in any school affairs, had taken matters into his own hands this time. One way or another, this dispute had to be resolved. Chapter 63. Gameplays, there were two periods of the elective, art appreciation, scheduled in the afternoon. However, with the recent incident, no one was in the mood to go to class. Zhao Jiayi was resting in bed. Sao Rongwa had buried himself in homework, Zhou Liren was sitting cross-legged and listening to his MP3, and Hao Ren was gathering materials for his tutoring session tonight. I'm treating you guys to dinner tonight. I've thought it through, in the worst case, I will just drop out of school. Screw their punishments or detentions. Zhao Jiayi announced as he abruptly jumped up from his bed. I, why would you want to throw your life away like that? Sao Rongwa turned his head and urged. The school always takes the side of those bastards anyway. What is the point of studying in a school like this? Zhao Jiayi shouted despairingly. Exactly. Taking off his headphones, Zhou Liren joined in angrily. The basketball team is the pride of the school, and we are nothing, is that it? Hao Ren was feeling unsettled, too. Actually, the conflicts between the members of the basketball team and the other students were mostly derived from the use of the basketball court, nothing else. It was people like Huang Zuji who grew so self-important because of their connections with the players that irked him the most. Examining the incident closely, it was indeed Zhao Jiayi's impulsiveness that had led to the fight. Even so, the fact that it was not the first time Zhao Jiayi had to deal with the members of the basketball team forcefully taking over the court should be taken into consideration as well. In addition, some of the basketball players there were the ones who had provoked them at the bar and grill last time. Zhao Jiayi naturally believed that it was personal, and they were trying to provoke him again. Therefore, his temper exploded at full force instantly. At this moment, Hao Ren suddenly thought of something. On Thursday night, the night he had Marxism philosophy was the same night in which his grandma collapsed due to having high blood pressure, he left school and did not make it to the field at 8 o'clock. In other words, he had stood Huang Zuji up. Could Huang Zuji be the one behind all this? After finding out that the members of the basketball team were injured badly, Hao Ren had gradually calmed himself down. But now, his anger rose once again. If it was Huang Zuji who instigated the basketball team to harass Zhao Jiayi, then there would be no need to try and reason. Let's go. Let's eat out today. We might get expelled tomorrow anyway. Zhao Jiayi demanded as he pounded at the 3 one by one. Zhao Jiayi was now in a terrible state of mind. He could see that the school would inevitably favor the basketball team when handling this incident, especially when he was the one who initiated the fight. The thought of no one occupying the berth below him made Hao Ren uneasy. Now that the match against Jinghua University was nearing, he had absolutely no clue what kind of punishment the school would be handing out. All in all, even though Zhao Jiayi initiated the incident, it was Hao Ren who injured those players. Therefore, Hao Ren felt that he had reasons to shoulder the blame together with Zhao Jiayi, even if he were to be expelled. Come on. It's on me. Zhao Jiayi continued calling out to them. Seeing Zhao Jiayi in such a bad mood, there was nothing Hao Ren and the others could do but to agree to go with him. The four of them went to the best eating joint in the nearby Hongji Square. Since Zhao Jiayi was feeling dejected, he immediately started downing glasses of liquor. Since they could not stop him, Zhou Liren and Sao Rongwa could only join him. On the other hand, before going out with Zhao Jiayi, Hao Ren had made a call to Zhao Yanzi's home to inform them that he would not be there for dinner that night. Sons of B asterisk TCHES. When I saw them walking towards our court, I could tell that they were coming for you, Ren. The more that Zhao Jiayi drank, the louder he got. Hao Ren was moved. At first, he thought that the fight was purely over the use of the court. 
Now he understood that Zhao Jiayi started the fight trying to stick up for him. Those bastards, they have their own gym and training facilities, yet they had to come practice outdoor. What for? Just because the basketball courts were close to the girls' dorms, and they wanted to have a female audience. With a black eye, Zhou Liren was drinking and complaining at the same time. Last time at the bar and grill, they couldn't lay hands on us because we had the numbers advantage. This time, they obviously recognized us since they didn't bother with the other unoccupied courts and came right at us instead. It was totally personal. Cao Ronghua said as he put down his drink forcefully, banging the table. Squeezing the glass in his hand, Hao Ren remained silent. Ho ho, isn't this the second year long distance race champion? Just as Cao Ronghua and the others were taking turns venting, a remark in a taunting tone came from the entrance of the restaurant. Hao Ren turned at the voice and saw Huang Zuji leading a group of male students, strutting into the restaurant. I waited for you at the field on Thursday, how come you didn't show up? Too scared? He asked as he approached Hao Ren. Glaring at him, Hao Ren paused slightly and then asked, are you behind what happened today? Ah, you mean your fight with the basketball team? Huang Zuji shrugged as if he genuinely was not involved and said, they did want to make a point on my behalf, but I'll tell you this. I don't need their help at all. So, you're saying you have nothing to do with anything that had happened today? Hao Ren further attempted to verify. Huang Zuji got very close to Hao Ren and arrogantly stared at him in the eye from just five centimeters away. He declared slowly, to deal with you, I don't need anyone's help. Okay, I'll let it go today then, Hao Ren said as he moved his intense gaze away. How boastful. Ha 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 ha. How dare a second year talk so big. The guys behind Huang Zuji yelled as they let out roaring laughter at Hao Ren's serious remark. Bang! Abruptly, the glass in Hao Ren's hand shattered. The golden-colored beer dripped along his arm and hand, onto the floor. At that moment, all of those who were taunting him just seconds ago had tightly shut their mouths. Huang Zuji was also slightly bewildered. If the rumor about Hao Ren taking on the basketball team on his own was true, then I might not be Hao Ren's match, he thought. Huang Zuji just assumed Hao Ren's no-show on Thursday was due to cold feet. Yet, judging from Hao Ren's actions today, Huang Zuji found Hao Ren to be more capable and mysterious than he had initially believed. Still, quickly adjusting himself, Huang Zuji calmly stated to Hao Ren, Your friends have guts. It takes a lot of courage to pick a fight with the basketball team. However, this thing between you and me, I will come to you about it myself. Whatever the basketball team did to you had nothing to do with me, but since they are my friends, I will help them work this out. Enjoy your meal with your friends, second year. This could well be your last meal. If everything goes right, the punishment should be handed down tomorrow. Straightening his body, Huang Zuji slightly waved his arm with his back to Hao Ren, and he lazily but confidently left his last words before walking towards the back of the restaurant. Thump! Hao Ren stood up so abruptly that his chair fell over. Yet, a strong, muscular arm had grabbed onto his shirt and stopped him from rushing to confront Huang Zuji. Hao Ren turned around and saw Zhao Jiayi shaking his head at him. Hao Ren understood that Zhao Jiayi did not want the incident to escalate any further. Zhao Jiayi knew that there was no way he would get away with it, so he hoped Hao Ren would not get involved again. Huang Zuji's father is the deputy mayor. If his dad says anything in the basketball team's favor, there is nothing left for us to do. Zhao Jiayi sat Hao Ren down with force and pointed out gloomily. Gloom had gradually taken over Hao Ren's face as well. He found himself extremely naive for oversimplifying the scale of the matter. After Huang Zuji and his group walked away, Cao Ronghua asked Hao Ren in a daze, How did you break the glass? With a bitter smile, Hao Ren replied, The restaurant owner gave me a glass that already had cracks in it. Really? Zhou Liren, who believed he was stronger than Hao Ren, skeptically held up the glass in his hand and started squeezing it with full force. Yet, nothing happened. Hao Ren did not want to explain himself any further. Glancing over at Huang Zuji who was ordering food and drinks with his friends in a perfectly calm and collected manner, Hao Ren felt a sense of loss. He thought there was no use in being brawny. Zhao Jiayi would surely be at a disadvantage when the school makes their decision. The fact that Huang Zuji looked so comfortably confident seemed to suggest that he might have been guaranteed a favorable outcome and already knew that his friends would not suffer any consequences. 
That was probably why he didn't seem to care about what happened and was eating out and having fun with his friends. Again, how Ren thought of the basketball team captain who went to see Lu Ching today. He understood that the basketball team had to hold their own ground and would try to look out for their members. Moreover, Lu Ching would try to protect me due to his special hidden identity. In the end, Zhao Jiayi would likely be the sole scapegoat. Looking at his good friend Zhao Jiayi who was sitting on the other side of the table and was trying to drown his worries in alcohol, Hao Ren vowed to make things right with the broken glass in his hand. However, his parents had not returned from overseas, which meant that he could not make use of any of their connections. Also, the incident was known to the entire school, and the school's management team must have been properly informed. Therefore, Lu Qing alone might not be able to turn things around. For Zhao Jiayi Sake, Hao Ren was willing to withstand embarrassment and shame. Obviously, the reason Huang Zuji could behave so recklessly at school was that his father was the deputy mayor. Yet, Hao Ren's nominal future father-in-law was actually the biggest shareholder of East Ocean University, and his company was the economic leader of the entire East Ocean city. What could that entail? Hao Ren decided he must make the school handle the incident fairly, or else it would be shameful for him, the son-in-law of such a prominent figure. Chapter 64. Grandma's suspicion when they finally returned to their dorm room, all four of them were feeling a little intoxicated. Still, Hao Ren was the soberest. After such stressful events, Hao Ren should have stayed in the dorm to care for Zhao Jiayi. However, at this time, he dearly missed his grandma who had recently been discharged from the hospital. Also, he would like to have Zhao Guang's advice on the matter. Hence, Hao Ren gathered up his materials and took the bus to Zhao Yanzi's home. When he arrived at Zhao Yanzi's, it was already 7 o'clock in the evening. Zhao Hongyu had just finished cleaning up after dinner and had joined Hao Ren's grandma for conversations while watching TV. As Hao Ren entered the house, he was surprised to see the healthy glow on his grandma's face. Ren, we were just talking about you. I thought you were not coming tonight. Seated cozily on the couch, grandma was pleasantly surprised to see Hao Ren. Something happened at the school, so I couldn't leave until later. How are you feeling, grandma? Hao Ren asked. Ha ha. Never better. Even my blood pressure has returned to optimal levels. Grandma's answer was loud and clear. Indeed, Hao Ren thought Grandma's face looked vigorous, nothing like a recovering patient. In fact, she was looking a few years younger than before. Standing next to Grandma, Zhao Hongyu smiled in silence. Hongyu took excellent care of me, after all. She's been making me chicken soup every day for the past two days, so my body has recovered quickly and grown even stronger. Grandma added as she looked to Zhao Hongyu appreciatively. Hao Ren suspected that Zhao Hongyu had been putting some elixir in the chicken soup. The more he looked at her smile, the more he believed it. By all means, it could also be that Grandma was in a great mood, so she was able to recover quickly. In any case, seeing that his grandma was in good health, Hao Ren finally felt relieved. He turned to Zhao Hongyu and asked, Where's Zi? She's working on her homework upstairs, go join her. I will chat with your grandma some more, Zhao Hongyu responded kindly. Okay, carrying his stuff, Hao Ren started climbing up the stairs. On his way, he turned to look at Zhao Hongyu and grandma who were in the living room. He found that they were getting along exceptionally well and seemed to have developed a relationship even closer than that of grandma and her own daughter-in-law. What an interesting world this is, he thought. Soon, he arrived at the door of Zhao Yanzi's room. Quietly pushing open the door, he found Zhao Yanzi sitting in front of her desk and burying herself in homework. Hearing the door, Zhao Yanzi turned around and immediately let out a humph at Hao Ren. What now? What did I do to piss you off this time? Hao Ren walked over and returned the few textbooks he had borrowed from her last time. My mom made a lot of your favorite dishes tonight. Yet, with just a phone call telling her that you were not coming to dinner, you made all her good intention and effort go to waste, pouting her lips. Zhao Yanzi replied grumpily. Oh? As he only learned that from Zhao Yanzi right now, Hao Ren felt surprised and touched. Something happened in school today so that I couldn't make it, Hao Ren explained as he sat down next to her and started pulling out materials from his bag. Zhao Yanzi ignored Hao Ren's remark as she continued to puff out her cheeks, looking like a pufferfish. This chapter was originally shared via N0V3L underscore by J. N.
Your midterm exams are this Friday, aren't they? Hao Ren asked. Yeah. Zhao Yanzi nodded her head lightly. She was wearing a ruffle layered printed top and a pair of mid length khaki pants, looking nifty and vivacious. Yet, the outfit also made her seem especially sweet. Her lovely petite body gave off a faint after shower fragrance, slightly stimulating Hao Ren's olfactory sensations. She was no doubt the daughter of a renowned designer as even her casually matched outfits were even flawlessly brilliant. Let's review for the midterms then, Hao Ren suggested as he spread out the materials. After having read the textbooks Zhao Yanzi lent him, Hao Ren now had a clear understanding of her learning progress and was able to pinpoint the areas that she should focus on. Therefore, he could now tutor Zhao Yanzi in a way that would better help her prepare for the midterm exams. Surprisingly, Zhao Yanzi did not try to argue but simply followed Hao Ren's instructions this time and began the review session at once. In the end, it turned out to be the most productive tutoring session Hao Ren had had with her thus far. Hao Ren felt that Zhao Yanzi was genuinely trying to learn. He could tell that she was taking the midterm exams seriously this time. After he finished arranging and refreshing the important concepts of each subject for her once, two hours had already passed. Hao Ren suddenly stopped lecturing and turned to her as he said, You should go to bed now. I'll go check on my grandma. Okay. Zhao Yanzi nodded while her head was still down, busily organizing the notes from today's lecture. Her unexpected compliance had caught Hao Ren off guard. For a second, he suspected whether if the Zhao Yanzi before him really was the real Zhao Yanzi. Quietly, he left the room and moved to the next room to visit his grandma. Are you done tutoring Z? Lying in bed, grandma was still awake as if she had been expecting Hao Ren. Yep. We didn't finish going through everything, but we will do that over the next few days. Hao Ren sat down on grandma's bed as he answered. Ren, I feel that your relationship with Z's family is not as simple as you have said. When I asked Hong Yu about it, she kept telling me that you are only Z's tutor. Grandma focused her attention on Hao Ren and said, Is there something you are hiding from me? Ah, uh, no, Hao Ren shook his head, I just became really close to her family. Alright. Anyway, I am greatly indebted to Hong Yu and her family for saving my life, so you must do your best to tutor Z. Grandma gently put her hand on Hao Ren's shoulder as she said. In the few days she had spent at Zhao Hong Yu's home, Grandma felt that the Zhao's were treating her as if she was a senior member of their own. The way they were so respectful and considerate towards her made her believe that the Zhao's was indeed a family of great virtues. For instance, Zi had been giving grandma greetings every morning and night. In the morning, Zi would come to wake grandma up for breakfast, and after Zi came home from school every night, she would check on grandma and see how she was doing. Grandma had grown very fond of Zi as she felt Zi was attentive and understanding. As a result, Grandma had decided that even after she recovered and returned to the cottage by the ocean, she would not cut ties with Zhao Hongyu and her family. Moreover, she was planning to introduce her son to the Zhao's. No matter how busy life could get, they would try to maintain a good relationship with the Zhao's, and she hoped that the friendship between the two families could last generations. On the other hand, Grandma thought it was a pity that Zi was a few years too young and did not seem to have any romantic feelings for Hao Ren. Otherwise, the two teenagers could make a great couple, slowly, as grandma's imagination was running wild, her old-fashioned idealism had also resurfaced again. She kept thinking that since it was impossible for Zhao Hongyu to be her daughter-in-law, it would still be great if the two families could be relatives by marriage. If that happened, the ties between the families would be more cemented and complete. Unfortunately, Zi is too young to be Ren's girlfriend, grandma thought disappointingly. Hao Ren certainly had no idea about grandma's crazily wild imaginations that suited her traditional ways of thinking. He focused on telling her about his school life in their on and off conversation, just the way he had when they lived by the ocean. Just like that, half an hour had gone by, and it was time for Hao Ren to leave for school. Although Hao Ren was ready to return to school, grandma was not willing to part with her darling grandson yet. Hong Yu said that you could stay here tonight. You can take my room or the studio in the attic. That's all right, Grandma. I should go back to school. It wouldn't be very convenient if I stayed out too often. Hao Ren tried to comfort her. Actually, he was still worried about Zhao Jiayi and wanted to go back to be with him. True. Staying out too often might negatively affect your schoolwork. You should be on your way then. Grandma had hoped Hao Ren could stay for the night, 
but she also did not want him to do poorly in school. Yep. You rest well, too, Grandma. I will come to see you again tomorrow. While browsing his grandmother's spotless room, Hao Ren got up from the bed and walked out. From the corridor on the second floor, Hao Ren could see that the light was still on in the study room next to the living room on the first floor. He assumed Zhao Guang had not gone to bed yet. After he climbed down the stairs, as expected, he found the door of the study room wide open, and Zhao Guang who had a big shirt draped over his shoulders was reading over some files. Hao Ren walked to the door and knocked. Zhao Guang looked up. When he saw Hao Ren, he nodded faintly and said, Come in. Uncle, I would like your opinion on something. As he entered the study room, Hao Ren looked up at the clock and saw that it was almost 10 o'clock. Hao Ren thought Zi's father was always serious in both speech and manner. Nonetheless, Hao Ren could tell that Zhao Guang did indeed have an enormous amount of work to take care of. He secretly hoped that Zhao Guang would not get annoyed when asked to be involved in such a small school affair. Yes. Zhao Guang put down the files in his hands and looked straight at Hao Ren. Well, here's what happened. A classmate of mine fought with the school's basketball team today. Hao Ren told Zhao Guang the entire incident, including its causes and potential effects. Sitting in his chair and facing Hao Ren, Zhao Guang listened quietly and collectedly, not giving away any thoughts he might have. Is that all? You participated in the fight as well? After Hao Ren finished talking, Zhao Guang finally opened his mouth. Hao Ren nodded in response. It was awkward for him to ask Zhao Guang to get involved and help him out as Zhao Guang was not his father after all. On top of that, Hao Ren had already troubled them once with grandma's incident, and grandma was now staying in their home. Hao Ren had always been thin-skinned and was now afraid that asking for Zhao Guang's help again would make him seem hopelessly shameless. You don't have to come to me for matters like these. Zhao Guang looked at Hao Ren and stated coldly. Hao Ren's heart sank. He felt that he had upset Zhao Guang, just as he had anticipated. Go talk to Lu Qing tomorrow, Zhao Guang added. Hao Ren's face was flaming red due to embarrassment. As he was ready to bid his goodbye, Zhao Guang spoke again. I will give the principal a call about this shortly. Your classmate's name is Zhao Jiayi, correct? A sliver of hope rose in Hao Ren. Gazing at Zhao Guang who was aloof looking but was always willing to help, Hao Ren expressed his gratitude heartfully. Yes, thank you, uncle. It's all right. According to your account of the incident, you guys were not at any serious fault. I also hope the school can handle these matters more impartially. At any rate, be careful in the future. Zhao Guang looked up at the clock and continued, You are staying here tonight, right? No, I should get back to school now, Hao Ren responded. I still have a lot of work to process here, is it okay for you to go back on your own? Zhao Guang asked. I will be fine. Thanks again, uncle. Hao Ren turned and gleefully walked out of the study room. When he went back to the second floor and tried to retrieve his teaching materials from Zhao Yanzi's room, he found that Zhao Yanzi had fallen asleep on her desk. Hao Ren tiptoed to the desk and quietly observed her face and hands that were turning red from being pressed against the desk. She definitely seems to be trying her best to study for these midterms, Hao Ren thought. He had never seen her work so seriously before. Watching her sleeping so sweetly, Hao Ren did not want to wake her up. However, he was also concerned that she might catch a cold or wake up with a sore back. Therefore, after a moment of consideration, Hao Ren bent down, placed one hand underneath her knees and the other on her back, gently lifting her up. Zhao Yanzi seemed to be in a deep sleep as Hao Ren's action did not wake her at all. Her eyes had remained closed, and her breathing stayed calm. Carrying Zhao Yanzi who was soft like a plushie, Hao Ren was immersed in her sweet scent. Promptly, he placed her carefully on her bed and tucked her in with the quilt. Then, he picked up his materials and tiptoed to the door again. Before he walked out and closed the door, he turned off the big lights and left a small one on. As the door closed, Zhao Yanzi who was deeply asleep, slowly opened her eyes as a blush of red instantly covered her face. That jerk, she whispered quietly in her heart. Chapter 65. Big news Zhao Guang's words were incredibly reassuring to Hao Ren. As the entrance of the dorm had not yet closed, he hurriedly took a taxi back to school. B1N Realm was the platform where this chapter was initially revealed on N0V3L, B1N. At this time, more than a dozen people had gathered in room 302. They were all male students from neighboring dorm rooms. 
Seated sparsely on the beds, chairs, and desks, they were trying to come up with a way to deal with this situation. How come you're so late? Yu Rong questioned Hao Ren as he saw Hao Ren walk in. I had some tutoring to do tonight, Hao Ren answered. Zhao Jiayi is about to get expelled, and you are still in the mood to go tutor someone? Yu Rong seemed a little irritated. Who said Zhao Jiayi is getting expelled? Hao Ren asked sincerely as he placed his tutoring materials on his desk and turned to Yu Rong. I heard from a few friends of mine who are a part of the student council. They said that the school is taking the incident very seriously and will be strict in handling it, Yu Rong explained. Yu Rong was the best source for information in the dorm building number 7, and no one would ever question his sources. You know what they mean by strictly handling. Ordinary students with no powerful connections will be the ones suffering the consequences, Yu Rong added. Exactly. There was a similar incident before. A student and the basketball team fought over the use of a court, and it wasn't even as bad as this one. Yet, that student got a disciplinary warning, Ji Yu Jiadong interrupted. I was in the fight, too. They'd better penalize me as well, Hao Ren said. You will be fine, Yu Rong stated. My friends in the student council told me that the nature of fight would be examined. The one who started the fight would be the most at fault. Your initial intention was to mediate the fight but accidentally got caught in the fight and had injured others, so it was not that bad. When both sides are at fault, the side who threw the first punch will receive harsher penalties. Besides, we all know the school has always been partial to the basketball team. His words made everyone's face somber. Zhao Jiayi was sitting by his bed, not knowing what to say. Zhao Jiayi was quite popular among the residents in dorm building number 7. He was frank and straightforward, an overall passionate and friendly person. Therefore, knowing that he could face severe consequences, everyone was upset and worried. If Zhao Jiayi were to be expelled from the school for something like this. Guys, guys, there's no use talking about this. Everyone, go back to your room and get some rest now. Hao Ren waved at the crowd as he asserted. That's right. Go, don't worry about me. Zhao Jiayi got up and started driving the crowd out as well. Knowing that they could not be of much help by staying and might only upset Zhao Jiayi even more, everyone began walking out of room 302. When the four were left in the room alone, silence had instantaneously taken over. One by one, they each went back to their own beds. After, Hao Ren said to Zhao Jiayi who was resting below him, Zhao Jiayi, don't worry, everything should be fine. Ha ha, Zhao Jiayi responded with bitter laughter. He seemed to think that there was no way of escaping his doom. Do your parents know about this yet? Zhou Liren was concerned. I didn't tell them. Zhao Jiayi responded. Or we can start a petition against the basketball team to reveal their detestable behaviors. Sao Ronghua who slept on the berth below Zhou Liren shouted out. Don't be naive. It is obvious that the school would do anything to protect the basketball team, fiddling with the coin in his hands, Zhao Jiayi said calmly. Aye, let's go to sleep. We will deal with this tomorrow. Zhao Jiayi turned off the light with a smack. With heavy hearts, no one spoke again that night. The next day, Zhao Jiayi went to class as usual with Hao Ren and the others. However, the more he casually joked and laughed with Zhou Liren and the others, the more his classmates could tell that he was laden with anxiety. After all, all he could do now was wait for the school's official statement. After they finished their morning classes, Hao Ren excused himself from having lunch with the others and stealthily got into the administrative building. He was heading to the sixth floor for Lu Qing, the vice principal. This time, he brought along Lu Qing's business card. This way, if Lu Qing was not in his office, he could reach him directly by phone. Knock, knock, just as Hao Ren started gently knocking on the door. Lu Qing's voice came through, please come in. Hao Ren opened the door and walked in. He saw Lu Qing seated at his desk, looking up some information. Hello, L, Principal, Hao Ren greeted. The moment he opened his mouth, he suddenly became unsure whether he should address him as Elder Lu or Principal Lu. Gongzi Hao, come in and have a seat, pointing at the chair across from his, Lu Qing said politely. Hao Ren closed the door and sat down across from him uneasily. You can just call me by my name, he said. This was his first interaction with Lu Qing as his vice principal. Moreover, it was taking place in the vice principal's office at the university. Hao Ren had never imagined he would one day be talking directly with any high-ranked personnel from the school management team. 
He he, all right. Lu Ching nodded with a smile. I'm here to talk to you about the fight that took place yesterday. Hao Ren went straight to the point. I believe you have heard that I also participated in the fight. It seems that the school is planning to deal with the student who initiated the dispute harshly. You see, that student is a good friend of mine. About this, Lu Ching stopped Hao Ren and said, it had already been discussed at the school affair meeting today. From the school's perspective, such incidents could influence the entire school's spirit and discipline. Hence, we must handle it seriously. Yes? Hao Ren's heart began to sink at Lu Ching's words. He wondered if Zhao Guang's phone call exerted any impact. How do you think this incident should be dealt with? Lu Ching suddenly turned his focus on Hao Ren. Hao Ren hesitated for half a second then stated, To me, I think the basketball team initiated the provocation, and Zhao Jiayi had no choice but to fight back. The basketball team was the most at fault. Not to mention, most of the students have been upset about the basketball team overtaking the outdoor basketball courts when they have their own training facility. Lu Qing looked to Hao Ren with his smiley eyes and interrupted, You don't have to give me your reasoning. Just tell me how you'd handle this. Zhao Jiayi was not the most at fault and was also injured by their joint attacks. At most, he needs some advice and disciplining from the guidance counselor. As for those on the basketball team, it should be in the rules that they are not allowed to occupy the outdoor basketball courts which are intended for the use of regular students. Also, they jointly assaulted a student, and they should at least receive disciplinary measures for their actions, Hao Ren proposed. Observing Hao Ren, Lu Qing was silent for a few seconds. Then abruptly, he nodded his head and said, Good, let's do as you said. Hao Ren looked at Lu Qing, shocked by his response. He only intended to raise some suggestions and hoped to clarify his attitude. He did not expect Lu Qing to make the decision based on what he had said. Actually, the principal did mean to be stricter about this. Lu Qing seemed to be able to read Hao Ren's thoughts. He leaned forward and asked, You asked Zi's father to make a phone call, didn't you? Hao Ren nodded lightly. The boss is very busy, try not to bother him with such small things in the future. I knew immediately that the boss had quietly exerted his influence when the principal clearly stated his stance to be partial to the regular students at today's meeting, Lu Qing said with a chuckle. Hao Ren tried to explain, I was just so worried. Ha ha, Lu Qing looked to Hao Ren in a kind and friendly way. You broke through the second level already? He asked. Yes, that was a few days ago. Good job, Lu Qing seemed gratified. I'd never imagined that Su Han would be willing to help anyone cultivate in person. She is the second best master I know of. Learning from her, you will progress rapidly for sure. Hao Ren supposed the number one master would be Zhao Yanzi's third uncle, Zhao Kuo. Nevertheless, he had had a taste of Zhao Kuo's violent temper and did not expect to receive any guidance or pointers from him. I still have classes in the afternoon. I should go now, Hao Ren said as he got up. It was making him uncomfortable to stay in the vice principal's office for too long. Go. Lu Qing waved at him casually. After getting out of the administrative building, he went for lunch in the cafeteria. He planned to meet up with Zhao Jiayi and the others in the afternoon and continue going to class. After forcing himself to smile and act normal for the whole morning, Zhao Jiayi had become enervated by the afternoon. He cushioned his arms with his books underneath and decided to take a nap. Breaking news breaking news. A few minutes before the class was about to start, Yu Rong rushed into the classroom, waving both of his arms in the air as he shouted, the notice of disciplinary measures is out. Oh? Everyone in the class including Xie Yujia looked up curiously and anxiously. Expectantly, Zhao Jiayi's head also immediately bounced up from the desk. The notice is posted in the display window on the first floor of the administrative building. The students on the basketball team who were involved in the fight. Four are receiving disciplinary measures, two are given verbal warnings, and they are all temporarily expelled from the basketball team. Moreover, they are to pay for Zhao Jiayi's medical expenses. The most important thing is, Zhao Jiayi is exempted, and so is Hao Ren. Yu Rong screamed exhilaratingly. Chapter 66. What happened? Also, the school specified that from now on, the players on basketball team would not be allowed to use the outdoor basketball courts without authorization. Or else, they will be harshly punished if any disputes over the use of the court are to happen again, Yu Rong added. The news from Yu Rong greatly astounded the entire class. 
At first, they all believed that the school's final decision would victimize Zhao Jiayi. Yet, he was not penalized in any way at all. On top of that, the four people on the basketball team who were injured now had to compensate Zhao Jiayi for his medical expenses. Does Zhao Jiayi have a powerful background or what? No wonder he was so collected in the morning, he must have relatives who are government officials, right? Is you wrong joking? How is it possible that the school would penalize the players on the basketball team? Instantly, a discussion broke out and began spreading to all corners of the classroom. Zhao Jiayi could not believe the news himself, either. He wondered if his ears had failed him. Unlike what his classmates were speculating, it was out of dignity that he tried to remain calm this morning. He had no last measure or influential background. Seeing that people doubted the accuracy of the news he brought, Yu Rong took out his phone. This is a photo that my friend took and sent to me. If you don't believe it, then go check the display window at the administrative building yourselves, he shouted. Let me see. Let me see. The male students yelled out eagerly. Yu Rong passed his phone to them. One by one, the guys were uttering an O oh, to show that they were now finally convinced. As for Xie Yujia, who was seated in the front, she turned around to observe the guys jumping and running in excitement. Biting her lips, her brows furrowed slightly. Indeed, she did try to help Zhao Jiayi by talking to the school management team. Still, she did not expect the school to favor Zhao Jiayi like this completely. Moreover, the school did not handle this in the way that would reconcile all parties involved as she had anticipated. Instead, they heavily penalized the basketball team. Now that the basketball match between East Ocean University and Jinghua University was about to start, she could not understand why the school would make such a decision at all. Out of the six members of the basketball team, four of them were now dismissed. She couldn't imagine how much it would impact her older brother's basketball team. Grasping the pen in her hand, Xie Yujia was very concerned. At this time, she was no longer worried about Zhao Jiayi and Hao Ren but how her brother would react to this situation. Shortly, their lecturer arrived in the classroom and stopped the chattering from growing any further. Yet, during the lecture, whispers could still be heard. Zhou Liren and Cao Ronghua who were seated in the back continued to talk among themselves excitedly. Especially Zhou Liren, whose face was bright red and was now lowering his voice to blurt out. One who survives a great disaster is destined to good fortune forever. Zhao Jiayi, you have to treat us to dinner. Fuck. I don't even know what is going on. The happiness came too soon and too abruptly. Zhao Jiayi was still a little confused, but he could not hide the blooming smile on his face. Also, Zhao Jiayi did not want to deliberately explain himself as he did not care if people thought he had a powerful background or not. Only Hao Ren knew what was going on. Yet, he did not want to claim credit for it. As long as his good friend Zhao Jiayi was fine, he was happy. After all, the arrogant bullies on the basketball team did deserve a lesson. Besides, Hao Ren began to imagine Huang Zuji's reaction to this news. That guy was extremely confident yesterday. After class, the crowd was cheering for Zhao Jiayi and asked him to treat everyone to milk tea. Since he was in such a merry mood, Zhao Jiayi agreed. So, in the end, everyone in the class received a drink for this celebratory occasion. At four in the afternoon, Zhao Jiayi further treated the guys to computer games. Hence, the large crowd gleefully headed towards the internet cafe at Hongji Square. Again, Hao Ren excused him and did not join the crowd. Instead, he quietly hurried to the academic building F. This time, he made sure he was not being followed before entering Su Han's office. The door to Su Han's office was not locked as if she was expecting him. When Hao Ren walked in, he saw that Su Han had her eyes tightly shut and was completely immersed in her own cultivation. Gently, he closed the door and sat down in the chair across from Su Han. He did not want to interrupt her, so he quietly began cultivating the spirit concentration scroll. A burst of faint energy rushed from his Dantian to his Wiyan acupoint and then Guo Wei acupoint. Afterward, it ascended to Mingmen acupoint, Yujun acupoint, Beiwei acupoint, and passed Donjong acupoint to Shenkei acupoint, then back to his Dantian. In this continuous loop, it seemed that his body was being nourished and had become incredibly at ease. In addition, Su Han's office was facing the lawn and the garden outside of the building. With its fresh air and serene environment, it was indeed the perfect location in the school for cultivation. 
This gentle and warm energy had filled up half of his body, and he could no longer absorb any more of it. Reluctantly, he opened his eyes. He saw that Su Han had also finished her cultivation and was calmly looking at him from the seat across. With her backdrop being the brown bead curtain, Su Han, who was in light-colored clothing, looked as if she was a beauty in a painting. Calmly, she lifted her slender hand and picked up the teapot on the table. With her fingers slightly curled, she started pouring the bright green-colored tea into two crystal-clear cups made of white jade. Please, she uttered. Hao Ren nodded his head and held up the teacup. As he took a small sip, he felt that its aroma had seeped through and taken root in his mouth. His entire body was becoming light and agile. Picking up the teacup with her white wrist elegantly, Su Han also took a sip. Silence had taken over the room as a light breeze came in through the window and made the bamboo curtain beside Su Han to flutter. I didn't come yesterday because of an incident that happened in the school, Hao Ren said as he decided to break the silence. Not my concern, Su Han coldly stated. Now that his words were met with rejection, Hao Ren could only stop talking again. Still, he thought hard to come up with another topic. The last time I went to the Greenstone Mountain with Z's family, I ran into a stone monument in the Taoist temple situated at the summit. However, I did not quite understand the writing on it. Well, see if you can recite it for me, Su Han replied. Hao Ren recalled for a moment and was able to recite the writing for her. Su Han listened carefully. When Hao Ren finished reciting, she explained, this monument was supposedly left behind by Taoist Master Zhang when he achieved ascension. It was allegedly his enlightenment about the heavenly Tao, so it does have a lot of history behind it. However, in the past few hundred years, no one was able to understand the writing fully. Therefore, even though it is widely known, it is not of much use. Not able to fully understand it, because of it, I almost had a breakthrough of the second level of the spirit concentration scroll, Hao Ren thought to himself secretly. Speaking of the Greenstone Mountain, there is a senior of the Dragon Tribe who resides there. The reason Zhao Guang took you to the Greenstone Mountain was probably to visit him, Su Han added. Suddenly, she raised her head and muttered to herself, it seems like he has started to get ready by drawing people over to his side. Now that Su Han looked mysterious and preoccupied, Hao Ren couldn't help but ask her, what does that mean? Su Han looked at him with her brow slightly furrowed, humph, do you think it is such a simple matter to be Zhao Guang's son-in-law? She said. After that, she waved her hand. All right, it's six now. Knowing that Zhao Hongyu didn't even want to get on the wrong side of Su Han, Hao Ren did not inquire any further and was about to get up and leave. Actually, right when Hao Ren was about to walk out of the office, Su Han stopped him and said, I'll teach you a set of techniques that would allow you to control your strength better, so you won't injure people again. Chapter 67. Scheming Woman, Criminal. Hao Ren stopped walking and turned around to look at her. Although Su Han was cold, it was worth it to cultivate here as long as he could learn something from her. This so-called heavenly master was also an inspector in the dragon tribe. She should have a decent amount of precious dharma treasures and cultivation techniques. Hao Ren was very clear about what he wanted. Not only for himself, but he also needed to keep a good relationship with Su Han for the sake of East Ocean Dragon Clan. Sure enough, Su Han waved at him and said, Come over, I'll teach you a technique. After Hao Ren walked to her, Su Han pointed at his forehead with her long slim finger and transferred the thoughts into his head. Hao Ren memorized the simple spell that had three sentences easily. How can I use it? Hao Ren asked. It must be used with an object, and here it is, as she said that, two silver bracelets magically appeared in her palm. She lightly smiled at Hao Ren and said, put it on. He warily stared at the bracelets in her smooth palm and didn't reach for them hastily. The necklace Su Han gave him last time was still stuck on his neck. If she were to put two anklets on him next time, then the five accessories could easily restrain him. All Su Han needed to do was control him with her thoughts if that happened. Su Han knew what was worrying Hao Ren, so she smiled again and said, Don't worry. You will be able to take these off. Her light smile was charming. It was as sweet as the glorious flowers of spring. However, it made Hao Ren more worried as he saw the temptation in her smile. Hurry up. The smile on Su Han's face disappeared as she flipped the silver bracelets onto Hao Ren's wrists. At the same time, Hao Ren felt like his arms got as heavy as two giant mountains. 
Not only did his arms feel like they were almost breaking off, but his legs and feet were also having trouble supporting his body as well. The spell I just taught you are for taking these bracelets off, but you may only take them off for two hours each day. Otherwise, the necklace on you will strangle your neck and make you wish you are dead, Su Han said calmly with her arms folded in front of her. Hao Ren was in severe pain as well as serious regret. Schemer, such a schemer, Hao Ren cursed at her 100 times in his mind. He blamed himself for being greedy and not leaving decisively. He did think that she was about to teach him some amazing cultivation technique. I heard about the fight. On the one hand, these Mount Tai bracelets can contain your physical force and stop you from hurting people by accident in the future. On the other hand, they can help you cultivate and allow you to control your body more precisely, Su Han continued. Well, then, thank you, Su Han, Hao Ren gritted his teeth. He tried not to show his negative emotions towards her. The heavy bracelets made it difficult for him to lift his hands up, let alone talking. On top of that, the bracelets can sense your emotional state and would get heavier when you are in a bad mood. But if you are in a cheerful frame of mind, they would weigh nearly nothing, Su Han calmly said to him as she stood beside him. Near nothing, how heavy is that? Hao Ren asked. They would probably be around 25 kilograms each given that you are in a good mood, Su Han mentioned lightly. 25 kilograms, Hao Ren almost collapsed. Hao Ren persuaded himself to believe in Su Han's good intentions, as he walked down from her office with difficulty. Each step was a huge task for him. Maybe it was due to the self-comfort, but the bracelets on his wrists became lighter and lighter as he went down the stairs. Before long, it wasn't that painful for him to wear them. However, his arms were still heavy as if they were carrying two bags of rice. Fortunately, he was already on the second level of the spirit concentration scroll which strengthened his physical body to a large degree. It helped him resist being dragged down to the ground. Su Han was trying to be nice to me, she is being considerate, Hao Ren tried his best to keep up a good mood by lying to himself. He walked to the school gate to take the bus to Zhao Yanzi's house. He arrived there on time as usual, and Zhao Hongyu was making dinner. However, it wasn't only her who was cooking in the kitchen. Grandma was helping out as well this time. They were chatting while they prepared the dishes as if they had been close friends for years. Hao Ren was glad to see Grandma and Zhao Hongyu getting along so well. His parents were busy with work, and they always needed to go on business trips abroad. Also, he could only visit Grandma on weekends due to his school, and Uncle Wang wasn't very good at taking care of others as he wasn't very talkative and spent lots of time with the plants. Therefore, Grandma was still technically living alone other than the fact that Uncle Wang cooked for her. It was a good thing for grandma to become good friends with Zhao Hongyu at her age. They could chat and cook together when she was living here, and they could call each other from time to time once she moved out. Having seen how well they got along, the bracelets on Hao Ren's wrists became even lighter. He pushed open the door and entered the kitchen as he said, I'm back, auntie, grandma. N0V3LTR0V served as the original host for this chapter's release on N0V3LB1N. He he, you are back. We left the door open knowing it was about time. Zhao Hongyu laughed softly. She then noticed the silver bracelets on his arm and asked, Are those little trinkets from Su Han again? Little trinkets? They are nothing good. Hao Ren secretly found them annoying. The bracelets got a lot heavier immediately when his mood changed, and Hao Ren almost fell over. He immediately started to recite the phrase, Su Han is a good person, she is only trying to help me. Who is this Su Han? Grandma asked out of curiosity when she heard a girl's name. Oh, she is a friend of mine, and she teaches at East Ocean University. She has been taking care of Ren at school, Zhao Hongyu explained to Grandma. Ren is destined to receive help from good people. Grandma chuckled as she looked at her grandson. Yes, she has been pretty good to him. She is not only helping him with his schoolwork but also giving him some of her homemade trinkets from time to time, Zhao Hongyu said. Hao Ren began to sweat at the sound of this. Other people would die for something from Su Han, yet he was too scared to get anything from her ever again. Grandma looked down at Hao Ren's bracelets and said, Yeah, these handcrafted items are really beautiful. What a clever and deft girl. This lady must be very beautiful as well. Zhao Hongyu laughed and nodded. Then, she said to Hao Ren, Zi has already come back, and she's doing her homework upstairs. Go ahead with your tutoring session. Um, okay. 
Hao Ren turned around and left the kitchen. What do you think about Z? Zhao Hongyu carried on chit-chatting with grandma as Hao Ren walked upstairs in heavy steps. Zhao Yanzi was doing her homework earnestly when Hao Ren walked into her room with some study materials. It seems she has been really well behaved recently. Hao Ren walked up behind her and coughed slightly. Zhao Yanzi looked back realizing it was Hao Ren. She didn't say anything, instead, she dragged her chair more to the right. Hao Ren grabbed a chair and sat down beside her. Today, I'm not going to tutor you like usual. We will just solve questions that confuse you before the exam. Ask me if you have any questions, he said. M. Zhao Yanzi pouted and pushed her homework to Hao Ren as she said. I circled the questions I don't know how to do. Okay, let me take a look. Hao Ren took over the notebook, picked up a pen and some paper, and carefully started the calculations. Meanwhile, Zhao Yanzi sat beside Hao Ren, staring at him doing the calculations. She also rolled her eyes and observed him secretly. He seems more handsome than usual, a hazy and beckoning feeling knocked on Zhao Yanzi's heart. Dressed in a white shirt, nothing special but is fairly neat. No scars on his hands, and he doesn't seem strong. Zhao Yanzi switched from observing Hao Ren's face to his body. All of a sudden, her eyes locked onto the silver bracelets on Hao Ren's wrists. Did Sister Su give you these bracelets? Zhao Yanzi asked. Yeah. Hao Ren turned around and looked at her. You know about these bracelets? He asked. Zhao Yanzi nodded and replied, They are Mount Tai bracelets, and only inspectors have them. They are the same as the handcuffs normal police use to restrain criminals. Criminals? Hao Ren felt quite sensitive about this word. M. The inspector would put these bracelets on the cultivators who made mistakes and broke rules. The purpose is to restrain the strength and the supernatural power so the criminals can't run away. But it seems that the bracelets given by Sister Sue are simply level 1 bracelets, which are only used to restrain strength. Moreover, whoever wears it could open it with a secret spell, Zhao Yanzi explained patiently. Hao Ren stared at the bracelets in shock. Then, he looked at Zhao Yanzi in surprise. He didn't know anything about the background of these bracelets, and he didn't expect Zhao Yanzi to get more and more gentle with him. Zhao Yanzi was wearing a set of orange pajamas since she was just staying in her own room. The orange pajamas matched with her youthful face, making her as refreshing as a glass of fresh orange juice. Seeing Hao Ren staring at her in surprise, Zhao Yanzi changed the look on her face and yelled, Don't give me that look. After all, these two bracelets are Dharma treasures. It is your honor that Sister Su gave them to you. Fine, fine, Hao Ren turned around to the desk, trying to refocus on the questions. Su Han must know about the fight I had on the basketball court. Putting them on me is probably some kind of punishment for me, Hao Ren wondered at the same time. Hao Ren and Zhao Yanzi were soon immersed in the questions and didn't even realize it was time for dinner. Zhao Hongyu went upstairs in person to tell them, and both of them left the desk and walked downstairs with Zhao Hongyu side by side. While walking downstairs, Zhao Hongyu looked back and saw Zhao Yanzi grabbing onto Hao Ren's sleeve while walking downstairs carefully, and this mother showed a glad smile immediately. Mom, what are you smiling about? Zhao Yanzi yelled. He he, nothing. Zhao Hongyu walked to the dining room. Zhao Guang and grandma had already sat beside the dinner table, and they were talking about something. They waved at Hao Ren and Zhao Yanzi when they saw them walking downstairs together. The five people started having dinner joyfully like a real family. During dinner, Zhao Guang unexpectedly brought up a topic. Ren, your grandma said that your parents would be back this Thursday. How about having dinner together this Thursday night so that we can get to know more about each other? He asked. Ha! Huh? Hao Ren froze for a second. He had expected that both families would meet each other in some way, but he didn't think it would be this quick and sudden. Yeah, Hong Yu and her family took such good care of me, and I really hope that your parents could invite them to dinner and meet them as soon as possible, Grandma followed. M. Hao Ren looked at Zhao Guang then at Zhao Hong Yu, feeling like something extraordinary would happen at the gathering. Zhao Yanzi stopped eating as well. She stared blankly at the people around the dinner table, waiting for the result. She definitely would have yelled and turned down the family meeting if it was before. However, she had to maintain her lady image in front of grandma. Z will have her midterm exams at school this Friday. So, it will be better for her just to focus on reviewing. We can wait until the weekend and then talk about the meeting, after thinking for a while, Hao Ren suggested. 
All right, if that's what it is. Grandma felt really puzzled just now. She was wondering why Hao Ren was so hesitant when it was time for him to show his appreciation to Zi's parents. Now, she knew it was all because he was concerned about Zhao Yanzi's midterm exams. Yeah, yeah. Zhao Yanzi nodded in agreement instantly as she didn't want to go to the next so-called parents' meeting stage so quickly. You had never taken exams so seriously before. You even went out during the final exams last time. How come you are so serious about it this time? We'll see what grades you get, Zhao Guang said to Zhao Yanzi. Hearing Zhao Guang's words, Zhao Yanzi pouted discontentedly. Zi has been work really hard on reviewing recently, Hao Ren interrupted. Hum. I don't need you to put in a good word for me. Zhao Yanzi suddenly got mad for no reason. Fine, fine, there is no rush. Then we will discuss this matter on the weekend, Grandma tried to mediate the dispute. After dinner, Zhao Yanzi decided that she didn't need Hao Ren's help reviewing. Therefore, Hao Ren had to go back to the university helplessly. It was really hard to guess what the girl was thinking about. It wouldn't work out either way if Hao Ren went along or against her. As a consequence, Hao Ren went back to the dorm earlier than before. Zhao Jiayi, who just got away from a tragedy, was playing cards with Zhou Liren and Cao Ranghua. Hao Ren put the materials away on his desk and was about to get on his bed to have some rest. However, Zhao Jiayi suddenly grabbed his wrist. What the hell, where did you get these bracelets? He asked. From some booth on the side of the road, just for fun, Hao Ren answered exhaustedly. Bracelets, are you a girl? Zhou Liren said immediately. Hao Ren didn't know what to say. He knew that if Zhou Liren ever found out that these bracelets were from Su Han, this man would be willing to wear them all over his body. But they are nice bracelets, Cao Ronghua got closer and took a better look at the two bracelets on Hao Ren's wrist as he commented. Seems like they match your necklace, Zhao Jiayi's eyes lit up, don't tell me they are from Su Han again? They do seem to match, Zhou Liren finally found out this secret and started screaming. Don't be so gossipy, pushing Zhou Liren's face away, Hao Ren jumped onto his bed to rest. However, the bed was bending so much that it almost broke. Be mild, be mild. Zhao Jiayi yelled. How can it be mild when you're wearing bracelets that weigh 50 kilograms? Hao Ren sighed in his mind as he picked up the book beside his pillow. The Wednesday was as ordinary as usual. What the students talked about most was the discipline announcement posted in the administrative building. However, this matter didn't have any influence on Hao Ren anymore. He had to tutor Zhao Yanzi at night, and her attitude wasn't reckless nor passionate. Hao Ren had no idea if he did something that offended her. Hence, in a flash, it was Thursday again. Ting! The signal light for text messages lit up on his cell phone. Hao Ren sleepily opened his phone during class and found out that the message was from Xie Yujia. Academician Hao and Academician Yu will be giving lectures on science at 8 o'clock tonight. Would you like to go with me? Chapter 68. The Arrival of Bigwigs, Ha! Huh? Why me? After thinking for a while, Hao Ren replied to her message. Shortly afterward, he got another message from Xie Yujia. I'm inviting you so that you can appreciate real scientists' elegant demeanor. Well, it's okay. I have enjoyed that quite often, Hao Ren sent back another message languidly. Based on his experience, Xie Yujia won't reply messages frequently. Moreover, it was during class time. A good student like her would never waste her note taking time on texting. However, beyond Hao Ren's expectations, Xie Yujia pursued hotly this time. She texted a message back immediately, Don't be so glib-tongued. You should be respectful towards the great scientists. Just because you don't have respect for them, I have to take you to experience it. On top of texting Hao Ren back, Xie Yujia, who was sitting in the front row, turned around and stared at Hao Ren from a distance. It was obvious that she was monitoring him. Who is Xie Yujia looking back at? She seems angry, Zhou Liren, who sat beside Hao Ren, asked him. M, I have no idea, Hao Ren answered while acting innocent. He looked down at his phone and found that another message had come in. A lot of people want to go to the lecture, but the admission is limited. I was only able to get two tickets through my connections at the student council. That's it. I have to focus on class now. Ah, uh, Hao Ren sighed slightly. This class president takes things too seriously. I was just saying casually last time, but she insists that I have to go with her, he thought as he rubbed his sore arms, laid them back on the desk, 
and went back to napping. However, the desk was making crunching noises due to the weight of the bracelets. It wasn't a good feeling carrying at least 50 kilograms around. The afternoon was filled with mostly easy courses like English, and Hao Ren didn't take the same classes as Xie Yujia. Ever since Su Han gave him the little gifts, Hao Ren had been too scared to go to her. The closer he got to Su Han, the more terrifying she seemed. Therefore, after 4 o'clock, Hao Ren killed some time in his dorm until 6 o'clock. Then, he went to the cafeteria for dinner with Zhao Jiayi and the other two guys, and they went to philosophy class next. The course was scheduled from 6 to 7.45. When the class ended, there was a flood of people trying to get out because the classroom was packed. Hao Ren and the other three guys usually sat in the last row. Thus, they were at the end of the crowd when class ended. Zhao Jiayi, let's go for some midnight snacks, it is on you since you survived the tragedy, Zhou Liren said as he tried to push forward in the crowd. Damn. You have been saying that from Tuesday to Thursday, and I have treated you so many times already. Zhao Jiayi punched Zhou Liren's back. Zhou Liren giggled as he turned around and said, Sao Rongwa, how about you treat us this time? The four of them walked out of the classroom while pushing each other around. All of a sudden, Xie Yujia, who was dressed in a royal blue skirt, appeared in front of them. Zhao Jiayi and the other guys froze for a second. Even Hao Ren was surprised as he didn't expect that Xie Yujia would be waiting for him here. The skirt Xie Yujia wore couldn't be considered as a fancy party gown, but it was still beautiful. Her pretty face and the gorgeous figure had made her temperament above others, and it looked like she was dressed up for a date. Hao Ren and the other three guys stood at the door blankly. Other guys who had just walked out were also looking back at this pretty girl and lingering on without any thought of leaving. Hao Ren, let's go. Xie Yujia smiled at Hao Ren. Okay, okay. Hao Ren nodded. He then turned around and said to Zhao Jiayi, I'm going to a lecture with the class president. Zhao Jiayi and the other two guys stared at him in shock. Hurry up, or we will be late. Xie Yujia pulled on Hao Ren's sleeve and rushed him. Hence, Hao Ren walked out of academic building D with Xie Yujia. He pushed Xie Yujia's bike away from the parking spot and hopped on. Xie Yujia then jumped on the back seat deftly and held onto Hao Ren's waist. The bike bumpily rode across campus in the dim light of the night. Zhao Jiayi and the others continued to stare at the scene as if they got fossilized together. After a while, Zhou Liren stretched his stiff neck and asked, Is Ren, really dating the class president? Meanwhile, on the road, Hao Ren asked while riding the bike, Class president, did you come to get me because you were afraid that I would skip it? Yeah. Who knows if you would go for midnight snacks with Zhao Jiayi and other guys and stand me up? Xie Yujia said brightly as she sat in the back and grabbed onto Hao Ren's waist tightly. Hao Ren laughed and paddled even faster. He felt like he was getting closer with the class president even though he barely had any chance to get to know her before. For Xie Yujia, she started noticing Hao Ren since the time he got picked up by the Mercedes. At first, she was concerned that there was something wrong with this guy in the class. Slowly, she found out that although Hao Ren wasn't special, he was different from the other unambitious guys. When he trained at night for the athletic games, it made him unique in Xie Yujia's eyes. They went to academic building E but found that the parking lot outside the building was already full of bikes, e-bikes, and many flashy cars. Xie Yujia parked her bike further away and then entered the glass hall with Hao Ren. Xie Yujia was worried that others might take her seats so she started walking at a faster pace and pulled on Hao Ren's arm to ensure that he kept up. The architectural design of the hall was based on the Roman Colosseum. It had a round structure, and the interior decorations were high-end and bright. Outside the marble hall, reporters from various media channels surrounded a couple of people with microphones and cameras held high in their hands. Xie Yujia was quite curious, so she slowed down and pulled Hao Ren to have a look together. Ha, ha. Mayor's son, I know you are very busy, but you are still coming for my lecture, a crisp and bright male voice said. Academician Hao, I'm your loyal fan. I have to come to your lecture no matter how busy I am, a man dressed in a plain shirt said. Hao Ren recognized him, he was the mayor of East Ocean City who was on the news all the time. The deputy mayor, who was in charge of the economic development and was also Huang Zuji's father, was standing beside the mayor. He had a smile on his face and didn't say anything out of the norm as he was in the company of his higher up. 
Academician Yu is getting younger and younger. After chatting with the tall and mighty Academician Hao, the mayor turned around to respectfully talk to the lady who was dressed in a plain suit and stood beside Academician Hao. You are flattering me, mayor. The lady with impressive appearance lowered her head and smiled. Academician Yu acquired another high valued scientific award from Europe. You are indeed an honor of the East Ocean City as well as the Chinese scientific community. The mayor laughed and continued talking. Accompanying the academicians and the mayor were a lot of university officials, college officials, and senior professors who were rarely seen. They were just smiling and staying quiet in front of the media. Those two are Academician Hao and Academician Yu. Did you see that? That is the temperament of world class scientists. Xie Yujia pointed secretly at the academician couples and moved closer to Hao Ren as she whispered with great respect. It is about time. Don't let the students wait too long. Let's go inside. Academician Hao, who could be described as handsome and highly esteemed, looked at his watch and suggested. All right, all right, all right. Numerous university officials agreed repeatedly. The mayor and deputy mayor started walking respectfully with Academician Hao and Academician Yu to the lecture hall. However, Academician Hao, who seemed conspicuous in the crowd because of his tall figure, took a look around and paused for a second when he saw Hao Ren and Xie Yujia before he walked into the lecture hall. Let's hurry up as well. Xie Yujia pulled on Hao Ren's arm in a hurry and almost dragged Hao Ren into the lecture hall. Chapter 69 The Superfan The lecture hall was packed with a large crowd of people. Although there were hundreds of seats in the biggest room in Academic Building E, they didn't seem to be enough. Worrying about losing their seats, Xie Yujia held on to Hao Ren and rushed to the seats she reserved. Finally, she found the seats according to the numbers on her tickets. She walked in while grabbing onto Hao Ren's hand and then sat down as she uttered a sigh of relief. When she sat down, she realized she had been holding onto Hao Ren's hand the entire time. Her face turned red instantly, and she let his hand go hastily. Her palm was a little slippery and a little wet. She was so nervous. Hao Ren took his hand back awkwardly and wiped his slightly wet hand on his clothes. He felt embarrassed to ask the class president to release his hand while she was grabbing onto it, so he had to let her do it. This chapter made its debut appearance via N0V3LB1N. With the appearance of Hao Zhonghua on the podium, the noisy and excited lecture hall went silent immediately. Ah, I forgot to get some water, Xie Yujia said suddenly. I'll go get it. Hao Ren stood up and replied. Forget it. Xie Yujia grabbed his arm and stopped him hastily. The lecture is going to start soon. Hao Ren looked back at her, and Xie Yujia blushed and took her hand back immediately. I must be too excited today. Otherwise why do I keep touching him so much? Xie Yujia thought to herself secretly while her face was still red. Okay. Hao Ren sat back down without noticing the look on Xie Yujia's face. The lecture hall was divided into three areas specifically for today's lectures. The two front rows were for the officials of the city and university, the senior professors, and the most authoritative scientists in the East Ocean area. Many master and doctoral students in related majors from various famous universities in East Ocean City were attracted to the lecture by the fame of the couple, and many of them were also the favorite students of the professors who sat in the front. The university had arranged six to seven rows in the middle based on the number of these students. The area furthest back was left for the undergraduates of East Ocean University. However, as Xie Yujia said, there was only a limited amount of tickets available. She tried hard and only got two tickets through the student council. Other students who didn't get seats had to stand throughout the whole lecture. The seats Xie Yujia reserved were in a pretty good spot. They were in the front row of the third area which enabled them to see Hao Zhonghua and his wife on the podium clearly. The entire lecture hall was fully packed. Even the hallways were full of students. Many of them were standing on tiptoes worrying they wouldn't be able to see the appearance of the two famous scientists. This lecture was a unique and grand occasion in the university. On such a lively day like today, it is our great honor to have a world-famous couple in the science community, Academician Hao Zhonghua, and Academician Yu Yang give us a lecture on their scientific research. Academician Hao Zhonghua and Academician Yu Yang are from Chinese Academy of Sciences and Chinese Academy of Engineering respectively. They have come here to give this lecture as soon as they landed in China from their trip to Europe. It is indeed an honor for our university, 
Academician Hao Zhonghua had just won the most prestigious award in the biomedical scientific community abroad, Gardner Award, and Academician Yu Yang. Her recent climate research had won the Graf Award, which is also known as the Nobel Prize in Ecology in the science community. The principal of the university was prologuing with the most genuine expressions and enthusiasm. Xie Yujia, who sat beside Hao Ren, was holding her head up and in a passionate mood as if it was her, instead of Hao Zhonghua and Yu Yang, who had won the awards. The look on her face switched from excitement to discontent when she turned around and saw how calm Hao Ren was. She knocked Hao Ren with her arm and whispered, Did you hear that? How incredible are they? They just won two international prizes. Just some prizes, what's so special about them? Hao Ren said calmly. You. Xie Yujia pouted. She stopped bothering him and continued looking forward with her neck stretched. She had done lots of research on scientific news and found out that the Gardner Award was also known as the Mini Nobel Prize, as a quarter of the Gardner Award recipients had won the Nobel Prize later. Therefore, this award was also called the Pre Nobel Prize. As soon as the principal finished his speech, roaring applauses resonated in the hall. The applauses were very enthusiastic and prolonged. It wasn't because the principal's speech was excellent. Instead, the arrival of the two world famous scientists after winning the awards indeed drove up the students' excitement. After the principal walked down from the podium, Hao Zhonghua, who was a stalwart figure and had an imposing appearance, walked up to the podium. Xie Yujia's eyes radiated instantly. She was a crazy fan of Hao Zhonghua. Hao Zhonghua held the microphone, cleared his throat, and smiled. The principal overpraised me. As a matter of fact, we still have a long way ahead of us on the road of science. The development of science in China relied on contributions from generations, which can't be simply measured by trophies and awards. The main purpose of me and my wife's trip to Europe wasn't accepting the awards. Instead, it was connecting with professionals and scientists from abroad. East Ocean University is the first place we have come to give this lecture. We have some spare time as we had just come back, and I graduated from East Ocean University, so I have deep feelings for it. His voice was plump and charming. Xie Yujia was listening carefully with her neck turned to the side. The passion she had wasn't inferior to those fans of celebrities from middle school. How Zhonghua is so attractive. He is so clever and charming, if my future husband could ever be like that. Behind Hao Ren, there were a few girls making comments in a slightly trembling voice. M, is he that good looking? Hao Ren was speechless. He turned around to look at Xie Yujia. Her eyes were shining, her hands were laying under her jaw, her mouth was slightly open, and her expression showed how engaged she was. On the podium, as soon as he finished his polite greeting, Hao Zhonghua started talking about his most recent scientific research, which was what he won the award for. The professors and master and doctoral students in the front were listening carefully as if it was a traditional lecture, and they took notes diligently. Some were so immersed in the lecture that they nodded along and then lowered their heads to take notes as if they figured something out. East Ocean University's undergraduates in the third area were listening carefully and quietly without making any noise even though they couldn't completely comprehend what Hao Zhonghua was talking about. However, Hao Zhonghua's lecture didn't dive in deep. Even undergraduates who weren't majoring in biology could still get some of the points. It was just the details that puzzled them. The primary purpose of holding a scientific lecture at East Ocean University was to form a gathering effect. On the one hand, it was to introduce the undergraduates to an intense scientific research environment and to allow them to experience a higher level of academic knowledge. On the other hand, it was to draw the attention of the media and scientific community and to promote the school's image. Hao Zhonghua spoke eloquently during the lecture. Once a while, he would use gestures to enhance the effects. Many scientists with gray hair had shown their admiration because of his clear statements and logical thinking. One hour passed by like a flowing river. When Hao Zhonghua finished his lecture, all the people in the hall were still enjoying the charm of science and longing for more, didn't matter if they were the officials of the city or the university, professors or students. Swoosh, 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 warm applauses resounded through the lecture hall like tides as soon as the crowd realized the lecture was over. The applauses lasted at least five minutes. Hao Ren also joined the crowd and applauded. Xie Yujia probably thought Hao Ren was finally influenced as she touched Hao Ren with her arm proudly and said, See, that's the power of science. 
Afterward, she mused, he is indeed a great scientist. He can explain the most advanced concepts in such an understandable way, and his communication skills are also incredible. Hao Ren looked at her helplessly. He figured that Xie Yujia had idolized Hao Zhonghua to some degree as she was so close to having stars spinning in a circle in her eyes. Chapter 70 Too excited when Hao Zhonghua finished his lecture, it was his wife Yu Yang's turn. Dressed in a plain suit, Yu Yang had a determined temperament. Her sharp eyes and clear tone reminded people of the portrait of Madame Curie in the hallway. Her lecture was about her research on one of the most impoverished areas in Africa, Lesotho Kingdom. This country had the highest altitude in the world. This three-year research made her the recipient of one of the most valued awards in the scientific community, the Graf Award. Moreover, in this research, she brought up an effective cultivation project for cereal crop based on the local ecological environment and state of the nation and its civilians in the hope of solving the most severe famine problems. As a result, it had drawn in enormous attention from all over the world. Similarly, nobody made a sound during the entire lecture. The professors were listening carefully with knitted eyebrows while the students were also paying full attention. Yu Yang's lecture started from the local environment to the local politic climate, then from the living space of the residents to the influence of ecology on the industry. Next, she mentioned how the unproductive land could be altered through science. She gave a lively description of the three-year and five-year plans for the country as well as for its poverty and future developments. She also expressed how convinced she was that this troubled land would be revived. The origin of this chapter's debut can be traced to N0, V3LB1N. That is so great, sitting beside Hao Ren, Xie Yuji amused. Hao Ren was no longer spacing out like earlier as he was listening earnestly. The one-hour lecture soon finished, and the stormy applauses also lasted over five minutes. Yu Yang slightly bowed to the audience in the hall then walked down from the podium. The principal showed up on the podium again, making his conclusion. At this moment, Xie Yujia took two books out of her purse. She said to Hao Ren in a worried voice, Rush to the front with me later. I want to get their autographs. What? Hao Ren looked at her, dazed. Don't worry about anything, just rush to the front with me in a bit. Xie Yujia put a book in Hao Ren's hand and said. At the same time, the principal standing on the podium said, In order to allow everyone to meet with Academician Hao and Academician Yu, both academicians have agreed that students with their books can ask them for autographs after the lecture. However, in consideration of the big crowd here today, each student can only have one book signed. Meanwhile, I hope all the students can keep order and maintain an excellent image of the university. Hao Zhonghua and Yu Yang left the lecture hall under the security of a group of guards. The mayor and deputy mayor tightly followed them, chatting and smiling. Swoosh, 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 although the principal had asked the students to keep order, nothing could slow down the passion of the fans. All of them flooded out of the door like a free-flowing water. Xie Yujia also dragged Hao Ren and ran out wildly. No one could tell how a skinny girl like her could have so much power. Although Xie Yujia and Hao Ren were sitting at the front of the third area, about a hundred people were lining up ahead of them when they rushed outside. The master and doctoral students at the front were all well prepared as everyone had a science book written by the academicians. Their seats closer to the front also allowed them to leave the hall earlier than others. Xie Yujia waited at the back of the line, and her pretty face had turned red. She was still dragging Hao Ren's arm, and it even had five finger marks on it. Standing beside Xie Yujia, Hao Ren felt quite helpless. The class president who is usually serious and poker-faced, I didn't know there are times that she would be this cute, staring at her pink cheeks and shining eyes that radiated, Hao Ren thought. Hao Zhonghua and Yu Yang sat behind a long desk, smiling at every student that came up and asked for autographs. The officials of the city didn't leave probably out of respect. Instead, they stood beside the desk and looked at the couple signing autographs with smiles on their faces. The scene of Hao Zhonghua and Yu Yang sitting down signing autographs while the officials of the city stood beside them modestly was great for the news and their images. Instantly, all the camera flashes got turned on, and various cameras were aimed at the officials and the academicians. They didn't only record the enthusiasm of the students but also the great respect the government officials had for the scientists. It was an honor for the officials to come to the lecture given by both academicians in person. 
However, their cheerful and supportive presence during the autograph signing portion had definitely promoted Hao Zhonghua and Yu Yang's status as well. Those two scientists were well known worldwide, and even the officials of the city treated them with great respect. If anyone ever offended the two respectable scientists, that person would probably be in trouble. With the world famous scientists' contribution to East Ocean City, the development of technology as well as the high tech and environmental protection industries in East Ocean City had soared incredibly. The fast paced growth also dramatically improved the image of the city which was something that could never be bought with tens of billions or even hundreds of billions of yuan. The lineup for autographs was moving slowly. Xie Yujia stood on her tiptoes as if it drove her crazy that she wasn't able to talk to her idols while they were so close to her. Finally, after waiting in line for half an hour, they were getting closer to the long desk. It was eventually Hao Ren and Xie Yujia's turn to get their books signed when a few doctoral students ahead finished talking to the academicians unwillingly. Xie Yujia rushed forward with a book in her arms, but she got irritated when she saw Hao Ren moving slowly behind. She called to him, Hao Ren, hurry up. Her tone wasn't too kind since she was undoubtedly impatient because she waited for so long. Also, Hao Ren was indeed moving too slow when it was their turn to get her idol's autographs. Hao Ren paced himself, held out the book, and went up to Xie Yujia awkwardly. With the long desk in between, Xie Yujia was facing Hao Zhonghua while Hao Ren was facing Yu Yang. Academician Hao, I am your loyal reader. I bought all the books you published. It is such a pity that only one book can be signed. It wasn't easy for Xie Yujia to have the chance to be so close to her idol, and she couldn't help but speak quickly. Ha, ha, all right. Hao Zhonghua took over the book from Xie Yujia, opened it to the title page, picked up his pen, and signed his name smoothly. Meanwhile, Yu Yang looked up at Hao Ren who was silently standing on the other side of the desk. She also opened the book to the title page and signed her name. Academician Yu, I am also your fan. I have read all of your books as well. Xie Yujia said to Yu Yang contentedly after getting the autograph from Hao Zhonghua. Ha, huh, really? Yu Yang observed Xie Yujia from top to bottom as she gave an elegant smile to Xie Yujia. Xie Yujia was staring at them in excitement but had no idea what to say. As she was wondering if it was time to leave, Hao Zhonghua asked unexpectedly, Is this your boyfriend? Ah? Xie Yujia paused for a second. Afterward, maybe due to being too nervous, she blurted out, Not yet. Hearing the answer from Xie Yujia, Hao Ren was slightly surprised, and his body shivered a little. Ha, ha. Hao Zhonghua laughed as he looked at Xie Yujia's pretty and passionate face without saying anything. Excuse me, please walk forward if you have gotten the autographs, the student who was in charge of maintaining order said to Xie Yujia and Hao Ren. Xie Yujia then realized that she couldn't continue to stay there. She smiled at Hao Zhonghua and Yu Yang brightly and dragged Hao Ren, who was still blanking out, out of the autograph signing area. Give it to me. Seeing Hao Ren holding Yu Yang's book, Xie Yujia pulled the book with Yu Yang's autograph on it into her arms, worrying that Hao Ren might accidentally damage it. Then, she put it cautiously into her purse together with the book signed by Hao Zhonghua. You are so silly. It is such a rare chance to see great scientists like them, and yet you didn't even say a word, Xie Yujia complained to Hao Ren. Then, she looked down at her purse and smiled contentedly. She was cheered up, and she said to Hao Ren, All right. But you did do a good job today for getting me a book with their autograph. I'll treat you to midnight snacks. Chapter 71. You got it? Her excitement proved that she was actually in a good mood. However, what Hao Ren was concerned about at the moment was that somebody might call him. He wasn't too interested in midnight snacks, so he refused politely. Today's lectures are fantastic. Class president, I appreciate the ticket you gave me. Regarding midnight snacks, that's fine. Good. Now you admit that the lectures were excellent. How about you treat me to midnight snacks then? Her face was still pink. She was still immersed in the excitement. M. Hao Ren hesitated. What? You don't want to? I showed you the wonder of science, but you don't even want to thank me? Xie Yujia squinted her eyes. It's not like that. I am just worried that if we don't go back now, the dorm gates will be locked, Hao Ren explained. The university knows many students are going to the lectures so that the dorm gates will close at 11 o'clock tonight instead, Xie Yujia said. Seeing Xie Yujia in the mood, 
Hao Ren had to agree. Okay, I'll get you midnight snacks. Let's go to Hongji Square. After all, Xie Yujia had treated him twice already. Hao Ren decided to treat her tonight so that he could return the favor. Okay, Xie Yujia got her bike, and Hao Ren rode the bike and took her to Hongji Square outside the west gate of the university. In the balmy night, Hao Ren was riding smoothly on the quiet road on campus with Xie Yujia on the back seat. The night breeze softly blew through the leaves, and everything was so quiet and peaceful. It reminded Hao Ren of the last time when he walked side by side with Xie Yujia for midnight snacks outside the university. University life would be such a failure if you don't date during the four years, having Xie Yujia in the backseat. The quote that had been mused by numerous senior students suddenly came across Hao Ren's mind. He looked back at the round hall in Academic Building E, which was still dazzlingly bright. It was also at this moment when he noticed Xie Yujia who was sitting in the back while staring quietly at the artificial lake in front of them with a content smile on her face. Long eyelashes, star-shining eyes, pretty features, flowy hair, and smooth figure. The class president is a beautiful girl, the thought crossed his mind. He pretended to look at academic building E unintentionally, so he looked back and kept writing. Hongji Square was as busy as usual when they arrived. The dorm would only be locked at 11 o'clock, Therefore, the energetic students weren't willing to go back that early. Are you hungry, class president? I'll buy you some Sanwang chicken, while parking the bike, Hao Ren said to Xie Yujia. Although Hao Ren didn't invite girls out for food often, he still knew that he couldn't send her off by just buying her a bowl of cheap hot spicy dip. Sure, Dexan restaurant, Xie Yujia rubbed her tummy and replied. She indicated that she was indeed hungry. Hao Ren smiled and walked across the square to Dexan restaurant with Xie Yujia. Ren. All of a sudden, a familiar voice sounded from the rear corner behind him. Hao Ren turned around and saw Zhou Liren sitting at an outdoor barbecue booth, and Zhao Jiayi's palm had already covered his mouth. N0V3LTR0VE served as the original host for this chapter's release on N0V3LB1N. You guys are eating here too. Seeing the three other guys from Hao Ren's dorm, Xie Yujia was quite surprised. Since they met, Hao Ren had no choice but to walk over there with Xie Yujia. Why are you guys here? Hao Ren asked them. We got bored at the dorm, so we came out for some food, Zhao Jiayi answered while scratching his head. Zhou Liren kept his eyes averted. He was probably wondering why Zhao Jiayi didn't allow him to yell just now. Okay, then we'll eat together, Xie Yujia said frankly. She turned to Hao Ren and suggested, then let's not go to Dexan restaurant. We can have some barbecue instead. Hao Ren didn't know how to answer, but Zhao Jiayi suddenly stood up, leaving a dozen skewers of barbecued meat on his plate. No, no, you guys go ahead. We are done now, and we are ready to go back. Ah, really? Staring at the leftover skewers on the plate, Xie Yujia said doubtingly. For real, for real. We are planning to bring the rest to the dorm. Grabbing the skewers on the plate quickly with one hand, Zhao Jiayi twisted Zhou Liren's ear with the other and said, Let's go now. A. Zhou Liren yelled and made several glances at Hao Ren. It took him too long to realize why he shouldn't have called Hao Ren's name. Sao Ronghua followed, picking up the unfinished half bottle of beer. You can't drink beer in the dorm, Xie Yujia reminded him. Sao Ronghua put down the beer unwillingly, wiped his hand, and got the bill from the owner. Afterward, the three of them left like thieves. I, looking at their backs, Xie Yujia sighed helplessly. Then, let's go to Dexan restaurant. Staring at Xie Yujia, Hao Ren asked in a quizzical tone. He was found with Xie Yujia by Zhao Jiayi and the other guys. He didn't know what they would think about it and how Zhou Liren, the big mouth, would spread it when he went back. Fine, let's go. Xie Yujia nodded without avoiding anything. Dexan restaurant was quite busy when they walked in. They sat down at a table by the wall, and Hao Ren ordered a half plate of Sanwang chicken, two bowls of chicken and duck blood soup, two bowls of chicken kanji, and a small plate of duck gizzard. Those were regular midnight snacks. Has Zhao Jiayi recovered from the injury? Xie Yujia asked after sitting down. Yes, he is fine now. He has tough skin, so he recovered fast. He was acting lively just now, Hao Ren said with a smile. The punishment from the university was bizarre. 
I thought he would at least get a verbal warning, Xie Yujia said. Zhao Jiayi had the same thought. Therefore, he felt so refreshed when he learned about the results. He is now in a better condition than he was before the fight, Hao Ren said in his mind. It's good that you weren't involved this time, Xie Yujia continued. Hao Ren smirked. What Xie Yujia didn't expect was that Hao Ren had put lots of effort into getting that result. Otherwise, just like she said, no matter how much partiality the university showed, as the party that started the fight, Zhao Jiayi would get a verbal warning at least. Speaking of which, you are great at fighting, after thinking for a while, Xie Yujia said. Seeing Hao Ren keeping smirking, she continued, I didn't know you could be that tough and mighty. Hao Ren guessed that she was about to use the word, violent, but she switched to the positive word, mighty, instead. You are the same, class president. You used to be so gentle and serious about everything, but during lectures, you were so excited as if you were a teenager girl, Hao Ren said. Ha, huh, was I? Sitting straight, Xie Yujia looked at Hao Ren with her shining eyes. Your face is still pink, Hao Ren smiled and said. Xie Yujia didn't believe his words, so she put her hands on her cheeks to check. After that, her face blushed for real. She thought for a bit and tried to explain, but it only made it worse. Fine, I made a scene today. But Academician Hao and Academician Yu are my most admired scientists. It makes sense that I got too excited when I met them in person, she concluded. Yeah, it makes sense, Hao Ren nodded helplessly. Xie Yujia was slightly unhappy about Hao Ren's insincerity, but she didn't want to haggle over it. She continued asking her questions, do you have any problems with Huang Zuji? Why did you ask that all of a sudden? Hao Ren raised his head. M. I heard that the fight occurred this time because you and Huang Zuji didn't get along well, Xie Yujia said seriously. I don't like him, and he doesn't like me, that's it, picking up a piece of Sanwang chicken with his chopsticks, Hao Ren said casually. M. How about I be the arbitrator, and you guys can resolve this matter? Xie Yujia said after thinking for a few seconds. Don't bother, class president. You don't have to get involved in this. Have some chicken. Hao Ren pushed the plate of Sanwang chicken towards Xie Yujia. Xie Yujia nodded, but she was still worried about Hao Ren. However, it seemed like Hao Ren didn't care about it, so Xie Yujia thought he probably had some people to rely on. What happened to Huang Zuji didn't really concern her. It was her brother, the captain of the basketball team, that made her worry. She wasn't sure if her brother would let go of Hao Ren because of the enormous loss the basketball team suffered. The way the university dealt with the incident was strangely harsh on the basketball team, and nothing happened to Hao Ren and Zhao Jiayi, which seemed unfair to the basketball team. She believed her brother would be resentful about it. As they continued to eat, they talked about all kinds of things that were happening in class. The topic went back to the lectures today as time went by. Hao Ren felt the enormous admiration Xie Yujia had for Hao Zhonghua while he thought about the hidden secrets deep in his heart. Both of them didn't even notice that there were fewer and fewer customers in the restaurant. Ah, it's already 11.30. Looking up at the clock on the restaurant's wall, Xie Yujia screamed unexpectedly. Chapter 72 the good girl Hao Ren turned around to look at the time. Then, he realized there were only a few people left in the restaurant. Sir, Bill please, he took out his wallet and said in a hurry. The waiter collected the money, and Hao Ren and Xie Yujia hastily walked out of Dexon restaurant and realized that the outdoor area of the square was already empty. What now? Xie Yujia looked a little worried as she held the purse in her hand. She had never spent a night outside of her home or dorm. It was the first time for her to have missed the curfew time of the dorm. It's all right. Maybe the dorm manager is not asleep yet. Hao Ren carried her on the back seat and biked into the dormitory area as he comforted her. They went to the entrance of the female dorm building number three in the south region and found the light in the administrative office by the dorm gate was off. That meant the manager had already gone to sleep. On top of that, all the lights in the dorm building were off as well, which showed that the curfew had begun. Xie Yujia jumped off the bike in a hurry and called towards the window of the administrative office, ma'am, ma'am. Nothing happened. It seemed like the manager had fallen soundly asleep. Hao Ren knew that the manager of their male dorm building number 7 always slept late, and he should be able to wake her up even if she went to bed. That meant he could still go back to his dorm building. However, since Xie Yujia couldn't get in now, 
how could he leave her outside all by herself? Xie Yujia couldn't wake the manager up after several shouts. Then, she turned back to Hao Ren and said in worry, What now? The confident class president looked helpless at that moment. Hao Ren, who had spent nights outside with Zhao Jiayi quite often finally found an opportunity to apply his experience. We can, spend a night at the internet cafe? Is it, safe there? Xie Yujia hesitated while frowning. The origin of this chapter's debut can be traced to N. Zero. Vel, B, J, N. The environment and air quality were terrible in the internet cafe, and she didn't play many games. It wouldn't be appropriate to take her to that kind of place. How Ren thought about it and probed, or, the hotel's one outside of the school. Ah? Xie Yujia looked at him, startled. She hesitated and asked, Have you stayed there before? Um, not really. But I heard it doesn't cost much. About 120 yuan per night. As long as we have our IDs, maybe student cards work too. He lowered his voice since he didn't want Xie Yujia to think that he was experienced. Is that kind of place safe? Xie Yujia asked the same question after thinking about it for a bit. Yes, it should be safe. Hao Ren didn't sound so sure about his answer. All kinds of people stayed in the hotels close to the school, and he had heard of incidents happening there. It wouldn't put him at ease to go back to his dorm and leave Xie Yujia at the hotel by herself. Then, I can stay with you, if you are worried. Hao Ren coughed twice pretentiously and asked quietly. That's not appropriate, she hesitated for a bit before rejecting it. Since his ideas didn't work out, Hao Ren suggested, or we can call up Ma Lina and ask her to knock on the manager's door so that she can open the gate for you? I didn't bring my cell phone. That is the problem, Xie Yujia said helplessly. She came out just for the guest lecturers, so she didn't bother to bring her cell phone. Who would have known that this could happen? I don't have their numbers, and neither would Zhao Jiayi and the guys, Hao Ren said. Since students could arrange their schedules and courses, the class was pretty loose. The girls would always stick together, so that meant there wasn't a lot of communication between the girls and the guys. There are still a couple of hours left before dawn, and we need to find somewhere to stay. Xie Yujia gave up after having knocked on the window of the administrative office for a while. Fortunately, Hao Ren was here with her, so she wasn't too desperate. At this time, Hao Ren suddenly thought of something and said, We can go to a KTV and spend the night there. A room from midnight to 6 a.m. will only cost 80 yuan. Yes, that's good. Xie Yujia finally agreed to his suggestion. It was cold at night, and they couldn't get into the dorms. After the decision was made, Hao Ren took her back to Hongji Square on her bike. He thought about the suggestions he just mentioned to her while biking and realized that the one he looked forward to was to spend the night at a hotel room with her. Damn it, damn it. What was I thinking? Hao Ren blamed himself for having that thought. On the other hand, Xie Yujia behind him didn't think that much. She was only touched by Hao Ren's good intention in keeping her company so late at night. She knew that the guys usually returned to their dorms late and the manager there was used to them coming back after closing time. Therefore, she was clear that Hao Ren could still go back to his dorm if he wanted to. It is all my fault. If I hadn't gotten too into talking and didn't forget about the time, Hao Ren could still go back to his dorm instead of wandering around with me so late at night. Xie Yujia self-criticized in the back seat as she bit her lip. They went to Golden Ages Karaoke which was located on the second floor of a building on Hongji Square. They asked for a small room for the night. Seeing only the two of them there at midnight, the male waiter who led them to the room kept staring at them with a suspicious look. The room is only for singing, not for other things, he reminded them after they had arrived in the room. Other things, Xie Yujia suddenly understood the implied meaning before she was about to ask, her face blushed. I mean, the waiter added after seeing her flush, you can sing in here, but you cannot sleep. As the rules go, at least one of you needs to stay awake. Oh, I see, Xie Yujia murmured. Her blush became more apparent when she noticed Hao Ren looking at her in a weird way. She hurried into the room and sat down in a corner. The waiter explained a few more things to Hao Ren, turned on the equipment, and left the room. Xie Yujia sat awkwardly on the couch as she looked around the room, still blushing. Don't worry. They have strict rules here. Hao Ren randomly grabbed a microphone and put it beside him. I came here with Zhao Jiayi and the guys before. But guys like us are at the internet cafe a lot more than here. I know. I came with Ma Lina and some other girls before as well. 
At least it is safer than both the internet cafe and the hotel, Xie Yujia nodded. Hao Ren knew that Xie Yujia was tired as he noticed the redness in her eyes. He said, You can go to sleep, class president. I'll stay up. Xie Yujia pouted her little mouth, How could I let you? It's okay. I always stay up with the guys, and I'm used to it. Hao Ren pushed her down, Don't worry, I won't fall asleep. It's not a problem for me to guard you. Xie Yujia bit her thin lips and stared at him in embarrassment. She wanted to say something but didn't know where to start. Hao Ren took off his jacket and put it over her. You might feel a bit chilly after you fall asleep. Anyways, get some sleep. I'll listen to some music and sing a few songs. It will keep me awake. He stood up and clicked on some popular songs. Then, he sat back beside Xie Yujia. Hao Ren is indeed a good person. Xie Yujia sighed as she looked at him with her eyes semi-closed, lying on the couch. Hao Ren picked up the microphone as he listened to the familiar music. He turned on the voiceover and randomly hummed along. He was a little embarrassed to sing in front of the class president. Xie Yujia was secretly looking at him through her squinted eyes as she pretended to be asleep. Chapter 73 Oh crap, more than a dozen songs later, Xie Yujia's eyelids became heavier as she listened to the familiar melodies. She felt like Hao Ren's humming sounded like a lullaby and fell asleep unconsciously. When she opened her eyes again, she saw Hao Ren snoozing with both of his hands on the sofa. She sat up, and her shoes made a squeaking noise on the sofa. Hao Ren heard the sound and woke up immediately. The microphone in his hand fell to the floor. You really didn't sleep last night. Xie Yujia rubbed her eyes, saw the black circles around Hao Ren's eyes, and asked guiltily. That waiter was patrolling by the door all night. I couldn't sleep even if I wanted to. Hao Ren stretched his arm and laughed. How was your sleep? It was all right. I had a few dreams. Xie Yujia replied as she returned the jacket to Hao Ren and checked her own clothes. She wasn't concerned about Hao Ren doing anything while she was asleep as she trusted him. Instead, she was scared that her clothes might slide and reveal parts of her body that shouldn't be exposed. She calmed down when she saw that her clothes were tidy. What time is it? She asked. It's almost six. The time for the room is almost up too, Hao Ren replied. Um, Xie Yujia nodded. Thank you so much for yesterday. It's nothing. These types of things happen sometimes. Hao Ren stood up and said, Let's go find a place for food. You don't want to sleep for a bit? Xie Yujia looked at him in confusion. Hao Ren shook his head. It's fine, it's not even six yet. You should sleep for a bit. There's no use going back to the dorm since it's not opened yet. I'll be on the watch for you this time, Xie Yujia said. She saw Hao Ren's tired face and suddenly realized that this was the first time she stayed overnight alone with a guy. No need, it'll be six in half an hour, Hao Ren still shook his head. He couldn't sleep alone and have a girl keep vigil for him. Let's sing then, Xie Yujia changed her expression and said. Ha! Huh? Hao Ren was a bit surprised. There's still half an hour. We'll be wasting it anyways and might as well use this time to sing. Xie Yujia walked up to the karaoke machine and chose a few songs. The first song, Blessings on the Street Corner, came out on the screen. After half a night of sleep, Xie Yujia was already energetic. She picked up the microphone without being shy, found the key of the melody, and started singing. In many autumns and winters, I was almost about to be cured. Hao Ren listened to Xie Yujia's voice and didn't know that the class president sang so well. I could only pretend that I couldn't hear from other people about how he was doing. After the first song, Xie Yujia continued to sing the second song. Her voice was melodious and pleasant, and the smile on her face seemed to create a sense of happiness. Hao Ren sat on the sofa and looked at Xie Yujia quietly. Unexpectedly, the studious class president was also a pro at karaoke. Afterward, I finally learned how to love. It was a pity that you'd left long ago disappearing into the crowd, afterward. Is she singing these songs for me? Hao Ren suddenly thought. After singing six songs continuously, Xie Yujia abruptly took out another microphone and handed it to Hao Ren. Come and join me, she said. Ah? No, I can't. Hao Ren waved his hands quickly. Let's sing together. There is only the two of us. What are you afraid of? Xie Yujia put the microphone in Hao Ren's hands enthusiastically. The old song, Hiroshima Mon Amour, sounded. Hao Ren had to hold the microphone and sing awkwardly. 
Not sure if his potential had reached new heights or what had happened, but Hao Ren, who didn't sleep for the whole night, sang the song perfectly with a husky voice. Not bad. Let's do another newer song. Rooftop, Xie Yujia swayed her hands and said happily. Hao Ren tried to refuse but sang the song perfectly and expressed the gloominess in the song well. Geez. You are so good at singing. Stop pretending you are bad already. Xie Yujia winked at Hao Ren. Hao Ren found it weird as well. How did he voice become so full and broad? Was it because he cultivated the spirit concentration scroll? After they finished singing another duet of, You are a song in my heart, and were about to pick another song, the waiter pushed open the door and came in suddenly. Excuse me, sir, the time of your room is up, he said. Hao Ren and Xie Yujia felt like they didn't sing enough, but they still had classes that day, so it was impossible to continue singing. They looked at each other, smiled, and put down the microphones. Then, they grabbed their stuff and checked out at the front desk. Xie Yujia wanted to pay when they were checking out, but Hao Ren stopped her. Even though he was accompanying Xie Yujia, how could he make a girl pay for him? After they walked out of the KTV, Xie Yujia insisted on treating Hao Ren to breakfast, and Hao Ren could only accept. They headed to Dexan restaurant and ate two nutritious breakfast meals. Then, Hao Ren rode the bicycle and took Xie Yujia back to school through the west entrance. They were headed to the dorm area in the south. The morning at school was as silent as a park. The air was refreshing, and the environment was beautiful. Xie Yujia sat in the back seat of the bicycle, and both of her hands held onto Hao Ren's shirt as her body swayed in the direction of the wind. She thought for a while and placed her head on Hao Ren's back. It's cold in the morning. Do you want my jacket? Hao Ren asked as he rode the bicycle. It's fine, Xie Yujia felt the warmth on Hao Ren's back through his shirt and whispered. I'm quite happy today, she suddenly said after being silent for a while. What's that? Hao Ren didn't hear her as he was concentrating on riding the bicycle. Singing was enjoyable today, and so was last night, Xie Yujia raised her voice and said. The chilly morning breeze blew into her hair and face and sent her words into space. Oh, I am glad you enjoyed it. Hao Ren was busy riding the bicycle and answered casually. This idiot, Xie Yujia thought in her mind. One, two, one, two. Suddenly, organized shouts came from somewhere nearby. Hao Ren. Change route and go around. Xie Yujia, who was sitting in the back, suddenly tugged on Hao Ren's shirt and hurried him. Ha! Huh, what? Facing the wind and riding the bicycle, Hao Ren once again didn't hear her well. At the same time, the captain of the basketball team, Xie Wanjun, who was wearing a dry-fit sports t-shirt and leading the whole sweaty basketball team ran towards them. It was Hao Ren's first time seeing the face of the captain of the basketball team, so he couldn't help but slow down. The two-meter-tall giant captain was leading the jog at a moderate speed and turned his head at the same time to look at Hao Ren, who was riding the bike, and Xie Yujia, who sat in the back seat. Xie Yujia felt conflicted as she looked at her older brother. It was six o'clock in the morning. Other than the basketball team, who were doing their morning run, not a lot of students would be awake at this time. Hao Ren and Xie Yujia came from the west entrance of the school. What did the west entrance mean? Restaurants and small hotels could be seen any around Hongji Square. Would it be going out to eat and just coming back at this time? Xie Yujia lowered her head and didn't know what to do. Her older brother, Xie Wanjun, merely led the six to seven basketball players, yelled, and ran past their bicycle emotionlessly. Xie Yujia knew her older brother well enough, and his poker face was often his scariest expression. While Xie Yujia was nervous about this, Hao Ren turned his head and looked at the basketball team that moved like a tall wall. He noticed that those six basketball players who got kicked out were not in the morning training. This captain of the basketball team, Xie Wanjun, lost six team members because of the school's punishment. He probably hates me, but it seems like he doesn't know me yet. Hao Ren rode to the south entrance and thought. Xie Yujia, who was sitting in the back seat, could only think of one phrase in her mind, oh crap. Chapter 74. Assistance from outside. Hao Ren rode the bicycle and returned to the southern dorm. He dropped off Xie Yujia at the female dorm building number 3 and then walked back to male dorm building number 7. The dorm gate had just opened at this time, and Hao Ren sneaked into the dorm when the manager wasn't paying attention. He went up to the third floor, entered the dorm room, 
and saw Zhao Jiayi and the two other guys still sleeping. There were a bunch of tiny wooden sticks from the meat skewers and a few empty beer bottles on the floor. These guys, Hao Ren walked in quietly, grabbed his towel and toothbrush, and was about to wash up. However, his arm bumped into a cup and made some noises which woke up Zhao Jiayi, who was asleep in one of the lower berths. You're back, Ren, Zhao Jiayi yelled. Uh, yeah, Hao Ren could only admit. Hearing their conversation, Zhou Liren and Cao Rongwa woke up as well. They looked at Hao Ren, who was holding the towel and toothbrush sneakily, and asked immediately, What did you do last night? I, uh, Hao Ren held his toothbrush and gestured as he stuttered, he couldn't say anything. Zhou Liren, who was initially sleepy, suddenly got energetic. Don't tell me you and the class president progressed so fast? He asked. Cut the CRP. The dorm gate was already locked when I came back yesterday, so I went to the internet cafe for the whole night. Hao Ren thought about it and said. The primary upload of this chapter happened on N0V3L, B1N. Xie Yujia went as well? Cao Ronghua asked. She, I don't know. After we ate yesterday, she went back herself. I strolled around for a bit, and it was already too late to come back. Hee <laughs> hee. Don't hide it if there's progress. Zhou Liren sat up in the upper berth and made a funny face at Hao Ren. Get lost. Hao Ren waved at him and took his toiletries with him as he walked out of the bedroom. Cao Ronghua, who slept on the lower berth under Zhou Liren didn't believe Zhou Liren's speculations. The great beauty, the class president, hooked up with Hao Ren this fast, he thought. However, many things that happened recently made him believe that Hao Ren had many miraculous characteristics. Hao Ren's peach blossom fortune is too good. Zhao Jiayi sighed and said emotionally as he saw Hao Ren rushing out. The three of them also got up, got prepared, and went to class with Hao Ren. When they walked by the cafeteria, they bumped into Xie Yujia, who rode past them on her bicycle. Xie Yujia would normally greet her classmates, but she rode her bicycle and passed them in a hurry. Zhou Liren hit Hao Ren deliberately as he looked at Xie Yujia's thin yet hourglass figure. Don't talk nonsense when we get to class, Hao Ren warned him. I know, Zhou Liren smiled even more nastily. The four of them stepped into the classroom and found that many people were discussing the scientific lectures that took place yesterday. Hao Ren looked at Xie Yujia's direction and saw that she was talking to the girls in the class as if nothing had changed. Why didn't you come back yesterday, Ren? I wanted to play cards with your dorm. Huang Jianfeng saw Hao Ren walking in and yelled loudly. Hearing the shouting, the girls sitting in the front turned their heads. He went to listen to the lecture with the class president yesterday. Why could he come back and play cards with you? A few guys who knew what had happened said. Stop talking, stop talking, Hao Ren who was sitting in the back row tried to quiet them down. The class soon began. Hao Ren, who thought everything would be over by now, discovered that the whispers started to spread around the classroom. In a moment, Zhou Liren received a message turned around to bump Hao Ren's arm, and asked in surprise, Hey! You actually spent the night with the class president? I was only joking with you. Where did this information come from? Hao Ren asked him. The girls in the front row. They said that Xie Yujia didn't return to the dorm last night. Besides, she wasn't there when the dorm manager came for room inspection, and her name is now written on the non-returned list on the small chalkboard outside dorm building number 3. Then, he stared at Hao Ren in shock and asked, Did you actually, do that with her last night? No way. Hao Ren knocked Zhou Liren's forehead. He looked at Xie Yujia, who was sitting in the front row organizing her notes. It seemed like she wasn't bothered by the surrounding discussions. Suddenly, he felt that he should have dealt with last night's situation in a better way. Girls saw reputation as a significant matter, especially girls like Xie Yujia. Go listen to the scientific lectures together go eat together, and don't return together, anyone would misunderstand, he thought. Yu Rong was still discussing this matter, and Hao Ren suddenly turned his head and said, stop, if anyone still talks about this, I won't be friends with him anymore. Seeing the good-tempered Hao Ren suddenly getting mad, Yu Rong and others stopped talking right away and looked at him in confusion. Ever since the incident of Hao Ren beating up half of the basketball team, the guys from his class and in dorm building number 7 had more respect for him. Even though some of the guys in the class liked Xie Yujia and were jealous of Hao Ren, who dared to gossip under the powerful force of Hao Ren. 
Besides, Hao Ren's buddy Zhao Jiayi wasn't an easy guy to deal with either. Not only did he have many friends at the school, but he also got the members of the basketball team to pay for his medical expenses after the injuries, that made the other students think that he had a powerful background. Hao Ren heard that all the conversation stopped, and he readjusted his focus and looked at Xie Yujia in the front row. He noticed that her ears were red, and it seemed like she was affected by the conversations around her after all. It's better if I keep some distance from her for a period of time, Hao Ren thought. Buzz. 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 Hao Ren's cell phone on the desk vibrated a little. He picked up his cell phone and saw a text message from an unknown number. He opened up the message and saw a few words. What is China's capital for coal production? Who is this? Hao Ren didn't react well since he was in a bad mood. Normally, he would delete this type of boring text messages right away. But he replied on purpose this time, China's coals are black. Buzz. 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 A few seconds, he received another text message. I'll choke you to death. Tell me now what are the coals? Sensing the tone of the message, Hao Ren instantly knew who sent it. The kids nowadays are so high tech. Zhao Yanzi is already cheating using text messages? He thought. Hao Ren replied, Fu Shun. Do the rest yourself. I won't answer you anymore. Buzz. 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 In a short time, he received another message. How many basins are there in Xinjiang? This little brat, Hao Ren didn't want to reply, but he thought of the anger he would have to endure later and gave in. He sent a message back, Tarim Basin and Zungarian Basin. I am not answering anymore. There should be another one. Another text message was sent back. Hao Ren thought for a few seconds and replied, Kaidam Basin, I'm not replying to your texts. Buzz. 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 A few minutes later, his cell phone vibrated again. Is there an end to this? Hao Ren took out his cell phone, and it was Zhao Yanzi's message again. So stupid. Kaidam Basin is from Qinghai. I almost did it wrong. You blame me for a question you couldn't do. You deserve to do it wrong. Go take your exam, Hao Ren replied. What exam? I just finished. I'm eating lunch now, Zhao Yanzi replied again immediately. It's the first time Hao Ren texted Zhao Yanzi in class. He suddenly felt like she was kind of cute despite her rudeness. How many more exams do you have? Hao Ren thought about it and sent a text message to express his concern. Well, this little girl was his fiance, after all. On top of that, Zhao Yanzi's parents had helped Hao Ren so many times before. He couldn't really ignore her. There are two more exams in the afternoon. Physics and chemistry. I'll be relying on you. A happy message was sent to his cell phone. I was wondering why she was suddenly so nice to me. It turns out that she wants me to help her cheat. Hao Ren finally realized the reason and replied, Help yourself, and you'll be well fed and well clothed. Zhao Yanzi didn't reply to this message, she was probably mad. Hao Ren didn't want to argue with her, so he put down his cell phone and looked out the window, it was raining outside. Two exams mean that she'll finish school around 2 o'clock. I don't have class at that time, so I guess I'll pick her up from school. Chapter 75. The Gathering of the Riches, Ren, you really got a girlfriend? Sao Rongwa asked when he saw Hao Ren texting continuously. No, it's just a friend, Hao Ren put away his cell phone as he said. Zhao Jiayi, on the other hand, looked over at Xie Yujia who was in the front row. He noticed that she was keeping notes carefully and her phone screen never lit up on her desk. He knew that it wasn't her who Hao Ren had been texting. If it isn't her, maybe Hao Ren is talking to another girl. He didn't come back last night, so it wasn't Xie Yujia whom he spent the night with. The four of us always hang around at school, and we know who Hao Ren talks to, who else could Hao Ren get in touch with? Zhao Jiayi was a bit confused as he noticed a secretive smile on the edge of Hao Ren's lips when he checked his message. He knew it must have been a girl. Or, Zhao Jiayi did not think of Hao Ren's tutoring job at night. Instead, his thoughts headed in a completely different direction, Su Han. Would Hao Ren be that bold? People have been gossiping about him chasing after Su Han, but they were only gossips. No one would actually believe that Su Han would become Hao Ren's girlfriend. Ding, 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 the bell cut off Zhao Jiayi's thoughts. Come on, let's go eat, Zhou Liren shouted. It was raining outside, and none of them brought an umbrella. But, guys don't need umbrellas, was a catchphrase they used. Therefore, the four of them lined up nicely and ran towards the cafeteria. 
Yixin Cafeteria, which was between Academic Building E and Administrative Building F, was a great cafeteria with delicious dishes at a cheap price. Because of these factors, it was always packed during lunchtime. The lineup would take forever for the latecomers. When the four of them sprang into the cafeteria, the lineup was already long. Hey! Zhou Liren nudged Hao Ren and pointed at the door of the cafeteria with his chin. Xie Yujia was swinging the rainwater off her body as she walked in the cafeteria. Half of her body was soaked. She probably didn't bring an umbrella with her today because she didn't expect there to be rain. The white shirt became a little transparent after being soaked in the rain, and her skin could partly be seen through her shirt. Class President. Hao Ren waved at her. Xie Yujia looked at Hao Ren and nodded. She walked over as she squeezed the water out of her hair. So sneaky, Zhou Liren said lightly. He thought Hao Ren called her here because he wanted to see her body under the wet transparent shirt from a closer distance. However, Hao Ren immediately took his dark colored jacket off and put it around Xie Yujia after she had walked over. Xie Yujia was stunned when the jacket landed on her. She was suddenly touched by the move again. Having seen all that, Zhao Jiayi thought to himself, Ren has his tricks with girls. Your shirt is wet, and everyone can see through it, Hao Ren explained. Xie Yujia nodded in appreciation. She thought since she already got wet, it would make sense to go back to change and grab the umbrella after lunch. Who knew? After taking off the jacket, Hao Ren was only left with a thin white tank top. His almost naked body, as well as the wetness, made him seem weird amongst the crowd. The good thing was that the weather wasn't too cold. Although it was raining, the temperature wasn't low. Even though it was a little inappropriate for Hao Ren to stand in the cafeteria like this, he wouldn't catch a cold. Class president, you can stand in front of me, Zhao Jiayi said to her affably as he secretly admired Hao Ren's brilliant tricks. It's okay. I shouldn't cut the line. I'm here with Malina, so I'll just go get in line with her over there, she said as she walked towards Malina who was not far from them. She suddenly turned back after a few steps. Thank you, Hao Ren. I'll return your jacket on Monday, she said. Hao Ren waved generously. It's okay. You can take it. It's just a bit dirty because I haven't washed it for a few days, he replied. Xie Yujia laughed as she stiffed the jacket a little. Then, she walked over to Ma Lina. Atta boy. You've got some moves. Zhou Liren punched on Hao Ren's shoulder when he saw her walking away. What moves? She was soaked. Shouldn't I have lent her a jacket? Hao Ren murmured. You are interested in Xie Yujia, right? Zhou Liren looked excited. Stop it. You have made it embarrassing enough yesterday, Hao Ren glimpsed at him. She must be interested in you. Judging from my experience, Zhao Jiayi joined their conversation abruptly. What experience? Aren't you single too? Hao Ren said. Zhao Jiayi wasn't happy about it. He patted his chest and said, who says I'm not experienced, while I was in middle school. Sao Ronghua, Hao Ren, and Zhou Liren immediately covered up their ears and started shaking their heads. Listening to Zhao Jiayi's brilliant history was worse than watching a boring drama show. Hao Ren got changed after lunch, and they headed to the mechanical drawing class in the afternoon. The four of them chose the same class, but Xie Yujia didn't enroll in this course. Therefore, she wouldn't run into them and certainly wouldn't be able to return Hao Ren's jacket. Their school week finished as the two-hour class came to an end. The Internet Café was their Friday afternoon's must-go-to place, however, instead of joining them, Hao Ren said he needed to go home that weekend. Joe Liren and the guys knew about his grandma's incident, and they thought he was in a hurry to go see his grandma. Therefore, they didn't insist. Hao Ren said goodbye to them and stuffed two umbrellas in his bag. Then, he took a bus to Ling Zhao Middle School, where Zhao Yanzi was. It was almost 2 o'clock, and it was only about 10 minutes from the end of their last midterm exam. The street outside was crowded with cars such as Audi, BMW, Mercedes, and Bentley, it was like a mini automobile exhibition. Ling Zhao Middle School was the best middle school in East Ocean City. Ling Zhao Private School had both a middle school and a high school department. Midschoolers can directly enter the high school department after graduation, so this school not only had the smartest students in East Ocean City but also welcomed the children of the most wealthy and influential people in the city. Hao Ren was the only one who came here to pick a student up with just an umbrella in his hand. Pleasant music sounded from the school. Then, the parents who were waiting got out of their cars and searched for their kids. 
In fact, even if it was only a typical Friday afternoon instead of the midterm season, this place would still be filled with cars. Since this was a semi boarding school, most students could only go home on the weekends. A large group of energetic mid schoolers rushed towards the school gate in their blue uniforms. They were moving forward akin to the waves of the ocean. The parents called out their children's names, and the kids boarded the cars. Hao Ren also moved forward to look for Zhao Yanzi. Why are you here, uncle? Hao Ren didn't find her in the waves, however, she appeared in front of him just like last time. Um, I'm here to pick you up. Hao Ren tossed her the umbrella in his hand and said. Since when was it your turn to pick up Z? A cruel voice said beside them. Hao Ren turned around and saw third uncle staring at him while standing beside a black Mercedes. His big eyes and bushy eyebrows stood out from the crowd. Chapter 76. I'm not keeping you company, humph. Hao Ren didn't expect to see her third uncle there. He was stupefied for a moment and ignored him. Hey, boy, I'm talking to you. Zhao Kuo shouted impatiently when he didn't get a response from Hao Ren. Having ignored him again, Hao Ren turned to Zhao Yanzi and said, Now that your third uncle is here, just forget about it. He put one of the umbrellas back in his bag. Then, he looked up at the sprinkling rain, opened up his other umbrella, and walked away. What, what temper, Zhao Yanzi pouted as she stared at his back. She ran over and dragged on his arm after a few seconds. Why throw a tantrum like a kid? You can come back with us now that third uncle is here to pick me up, she asked. I am not getting into your third uncle's car. Hao Ren lightly threw away her hands. What are you saying, kid? Zhao Kuo heard it with his acute hearing and shouted from afar. Stubborn. Grumpy. Zhao Yanzi stomped her right foot and decided to leave Hao Ren alone. She jogged back to her third uncle at the school gate. She was a little moved when she saw him waiting at the school gate with an umbrella even though she didn't like this, uncle. Forget about him and let's go. Zhao Kuo sensed Zhao Yanzi's bad mood. After he opened the door to let her in, he started the black Mercedes. Hao Ren quietly walked along the street with his umbrella. He ignored the million yuan cars that were passing by him because all he cared about was his grandma. It was a random idea to pick Zhao Yanzi up from school. He didn't do it because it would make her happy. If anything, he was doing it as a reward for her hard work lately. As the black Mercedes passed by, Zhao Yanzi looked back at Hao Ren who was walking by himself. She felt bad for him all of a sudden. Third uncle, let it go. Let's take him with us, Zhao Yanzi said. I'm not taking him, who does he think he is? Zhao Kuo said with pride. The car left Hao Ren behind while they were talking. Zhao Yanzi turned back again to look at Hao Ren who was strolling in the rain, and she said to her third uncle all of a sudden, third uncle, stop the car. Why? Did you forget something? Hearing Zhao Yanzi shout, Zhao Kuo immediately parked the car along the roadside. You go ahead, third uncle. Take my backpack with you. Zhao Yanzi opened the car door and jumped out. Z, it's raining. Zhao Kuo insisted. It's fine. She ran back over a puddle as the water reflected the shape of her slim pale legs. Hao Ren was walking with his head down under the umbrella when the small body entered his view. He looked up and saw Zhao Yanzi standing in front of him, breathing heavily. Give me the umbrella, she reached out her hand. Ha! Hao Ren didn't realize what she meant. Give me the umbrella, she repeated in a louder voice. Hao Ren looked at her as he took the other umbrella out of his bag, confused. Zhao Yanzi quickly snatched it from Hao Ren, opened it up, and walked ahead in big steps. Hao Ren sped up to catch up with her. What are you doing? You are walking with me when there is a car waiting for you? Hao Ren asked her. Who wants to keep you company? Can't I just enjoy the rain? Zhao Yanzi hopped over a small puddle and pouted. Z. Third uncle backed up the Mercedes towards them and rolled down the window. It's okay, third uncle. You can go back first. Zhao Yanzi waved at him. He looked at her in confusion as he noticed the impatience in her tone. He felt wronged and wondered if he had done anything incorrectly. It is indeed more and more difficult to see through this little girl. She was so mad at this boy that she wanted him dead. But now, this chapter's initial release occurred on the N0V3LB1N site. He sighed as he watched them walk forward side by side. Then, he stepped on the gas paddle and headed home. The drizzling rain fell down generously from the sky. 
The air hadn't been this fresh for quite a while, and the cool and refreshing wind made them feel very comfortable. Zhao Yanzi's shoes and socks got wet, yet she still insisted on walking instead of taking the bus or hailing a taxi. How did the exams go? Asked Hao Ren. Just so-so, she answered. Then she added, you didn't help me cheat. You certainly have only yourself to rely on in the exam. How can you cheat? Hao Ren said with a strong sense of righteousness. Peeved, don't tell me you have never cheated, Zhao Yanzi said with disdain. Hao Ren examined his past and realized that he wasn't really that righteous during his middle school exams either. However, he quibbled for himself in silence, we only used some cheat sheets, and the most serious offense would be peeking at other people's papers. No one was bold enough to ask for answers with a cell phone. When will you get your results? Hao Ren asked. So annoying, you aren't my parents. Zhao Yanzi rolled her eyes at him. Hao Ren quibbled secretly. I'm your tutor, and, I'm your future husband. Seeing how defensive she was, he kept quiet as they continued walking. She didn't answer any of his questions. You and that class president, what has been going on with you two lately? Zhao Yanzi suddenly asked after taking a few more steps. Why are you asking? Hao Ren was interested. Just curious. She pouted her mouth and sped up a little. Hao Ren thought to himself as he hurried up and caught up with her. Could she be thinking that Xie Yujia is my girlfriend at school? Didn't think she could get jealous too, Hao Ren thought as he looked at her pretty little face. They sped up and slowed down from time to time until they arrived at Zhao Yanzi's house. Zhao Kuo's black Mercedes was parked outside. Zhao Yanzi took out her key and opened the door, and she immediately heard the quarrel between her dad and her third uncle from the living room. What? Brother, you are inviting those jerks from West Ocean. Zhao Kuo's loud voice came into Hao Ren's ears. Quiet, we have guests here, Zhao Guang shushed him, we need to invite them whether you like it or not. They used to be on good terms with us after all. If we don't invite them to Z's 15th birthday party, it would be like coming to an open rupture publicly. Brother. Zhao Kuo stopped himself when he noticed that Hao Ren and Zhao Yanzi had returned. Dad, third uncle, I'm back, Zhao Yanzi walked inside and put the umbrella in a corner. Uncle, Hao Ren followed in and greeted. He didn't want to look rude in front of Zhao Guang although he wasn't a big fan of Zhao Kuo. Where is my grandma? Hao Ren asked. He he, she is cooking dinner with Hong Yu in the kitchen. Zhao Guang laughed. Then, he turned to Zhao Kuo with a straight face and said, You, come with me to the study room. Zhao Kuo's face turned red as he looked down. He then followed Zhao Guang, who was taller and more well-built, into the study room. Chapter 77. They showed up. Hao Ren walked into the kitchen and said hello to Zhao Hongyu and his grandma who were busy cooking. Zhao Yanzi followed suit and greeted her mom grandma. Since dinner wasn't ready yet, Zhao Hongyu asked Hao Ren and Zhao Yanzi to go up and play before the dinner was served. Thus, they went upstairs and entered Zhao Yanzi's room. Zhao Yanzi was no longer feeling any resistance against Hao Ren entering her room but it still was her territory, and Hao Ren must obey her rules while he was in there. I'll play games, and you read, upon entering the room, Zhao Yanzi immediately assigned tasks. From the bookshelf, Hao Ren picked up the novel he was halfway through reading. He asked with deliberate casualness, your birthday is coming up? It's next month, Zhao Yanzi answered. She turned on the computer before changing into the pink slippers she usually wore in her room. What's the West Ocean your third uncle just mentioned? Hao Ren continued to ask. He knew very little about the dragon tribe. Sometimes he felt like they were no different from ordinary people, and sometimes every movement and every word of theirs was a mystery. The West Ocean is also a dragon clan, just like our East Ocean dragon clan but with different areas under control. They suck at running businesses on the land, and they are stupid and arrogant, Zhao Yanzi's tone revealed her resentment toward the West Ocean. And there are South Ocean and North Ocean too? Hao Ren speculated. Yeah, but we have little contact with them, we would only meet at the annual conference, Zhao Yanzi said while waiting for the computer to start. Annual conference? Yeah, it is a regular meeting for river, steam, lake, ocean dragon clans. Except for the annual conference, there are biannual dragon tribe meetings. This stuff is more complicated than you can imagine. However, it's not my business, and my dad takes care of it, she said. The game flashed on the computer screen, and Zhao Yanzi jumped onto her chair and grabbed the mouse. 
she was no longer in the mood to chat with Hao Ren. On the other hand, Hao Ren didn't want to ask any more questions. He knew he must get used to it gradually since things, just like Zhao Yanzi said, were more complicated than he had imagined. From Zhao Yanzi's short answers, Hao Ren knew Zhao Guang was running the East Ocean Dragon Clan and thus had a lot on his plate. No wonder he was busy all day long, and his younger brother Zhao Kuo exceeded him in cultivation levels. As Zhao Guang's wife, Zhao Hongyu was also a busy woman. Only Zhao Yanzi, cherished by all, was the stress-free and happiest one. Even though this was the case, she would have to shoulder her share of the burden and obligations when she grew up. Sitting in the reclining chair and looking at Zhao Yanzi who was busy playing the online game, Hao Ren mused to himself. After thinking for a while, he picked up a novel to kill time. The clock ticked away, and the dinner was soon ready. Z. Ren. Come down for dinner. Zhao Hongyu called to them at the foot of the stairs. Coming. Zhao Yanzi and Hao Ren answered and got up at the same time before running out of the room together. Where is third uncle? Coming downstairs, Zhao Yanzi asked when Zhao Kuo was not in her sight. He had to go back to finish some business, Zhao Hongyu said with a helpless expression on her face. He must have quarreled with dad, Zhao Yanzi pointed out the truth before sitting down. It doesn't matter. I will go visit him later, she said. Your third uncle is short-tempered and stubborn. He needs time to think things over, Zhao Hongyu took off the apron and said. Then, she turned to Hao Ren and his grandma and added, Auntie, Ren, let's eat. Well, grandma sat down and wrung her hands. I've stayed here for so long, and I'm sorry for the trouble I have caused you, she said. No trouble at all. Auntie, you have helped me a lot, Zhao Hongyu said warmly. Grandma smiled and turned to Hao Ren as she said, Ren, I've decided with your father that tomorrow, our two families will have lunch together and get to know each other. Tomorrow, Hao Ren nodded, having expected that such a day would come. So, this dinner is the last meal I will have in Zi's home, Grandma added with slight melancholy. During her stay, she and Zhao Hongyu had become friends, she liked Zhao Yanzi a lot, and although Zhao Guang rarely spoke, he showed sincere respect towards her. Those were the reasons why grandma felt reluctant to leave their home. After all, her son and daughter-in-law, who had always been busy with their work, had never given her such warmth. Auntie, don't say that. You can come over any time you want. If you want, you can stay here forever, Zhao Hongyu said immediately. Hee hee, it's impossible. I can't trouble you anymore. Let's eat, grandma said. Seeing the sorrow and reluctance on grandma's face, Hao Ren wished that she could continue to live here. However, just like what grandma said, they couldn't trouble Zhao Hongyu's family anymore. Besides, his dad and mom had returned from abroad, and there was absolutely no reason for his grandma to live in someone else's home. Ren, you can stay here for the night and don't need to go back to school, Zhao Guang said abruptly. Okay, Hao Ren said immediately, wanting to spend more time with his grandma. It was drizzling outside, and the atmosphere in the dining room was a little melancholy. It was the second time that Hao Ren stayed the night in Zhao Yanzi's home. He slept on the beddings on the floor in his grandma's room, and they chatted well into the night. Grandma was full of praises for Zhao Yanzi's family, and it was clear to Hao Ren that she had formed a deep bond with them during her short stay there. The next day was Saturday, and it was a sunny day. Zhao Hongyu had packed for grandma while still trying to change her mind about leaving. Grandma wanted to stay with them, but she also felt uncomfortable staying any longer. To show her gratitude, she had asked her son to book a reservation at the Starlight Restaurant, the best in East Ocean City. The lunch was scheduled for 11 a.m. according to the plan. Hao Ren's parents should drive to Zhao Yanzi's home to pick up grandma's bags before going to the restaurant together for lunch. However, Hao Ren's parents didn't show up at 11 a.m. Grandma, who had been restless all morning, couldn't wait anymore and called her son. Soon, she was informed that they were delayed and would arrive soon. Therefore, they sat in the living room and waited. Half an hour passed, and Hao Ren's parents still didn't show up. Grandma who had been trying to appear calm became agitated. Auntie, take it easy. The traffic must have delayed them, Zhao Hongyu comforted her. Hao Ren was getting impatient too. Zhao Yanzi's family put off everything and waited for his parents, but they just wouldn't show up. Another half hour passed. As grandma was about to call again, a white Ford arrived at the door. 
Hao Ren's father in a silver suit and his mother in a long black dress came out of the car and hurried over hand in hand. They matched each other perfectly, no matter in looks or temperaments. If Xie Yujia was here, she would have been stunned because the couple was no other than Hao Zhonghua and Yu Yang who gave the science lectures at East Ocean University a couple of days prior. Seeing Hao Zhonghua and Yu Yang coming to her side, Grandma didn't show any joy on her face. Instead, an unusually stern expression appeared. She pointed at the floor and said as her body shook slightly, Extend your hand. Chapter 78 Important virtues hearing Grandma's stern voice. Zhao Hongyu and her family were all surprised as well. Mom, please calm down, hurriedly, Hao Zhonghua took two steps forward and explained, I had to handle some urgent business in the office, and that's why I'm a bit late. Scientific research is your priority, and this old woman is none of your concern at all, right? Grandma's face fell as she asked. Hearing that Grandma's tone turned a little bit softer, Hao Zhonghua took two more steps forward and replied as he wanted to help her walk to the car, I. Extend your hand. Grandma raised her voice abruptly. The dignified Hao Zhonghua shivered at his mother's scolding and glanced at Zhao Hongyu's family in embarrassment. Auntie, seeing the situation turning ugly, Zhao Hongyu walked to Grandma and tried to calm her down. Hongyu, stay out of this. Today, I must have my say. Grandma raised her hand and stopped Zhao Hongyu. Seeing the awkward situation between the mother and the son, Yu Yang finally broke the silence and said, Mom, please calm down. Your high blood pressure. And you? Grandma who was usually amiable was beside herself today. Have you ever taken care of Ren since he was born? I took care of him all by myself. Have you ever worried about the duties in this household? I took care of them all by myself. Work. Work is everything in your lives, she shouted. Scolded by Grandma, the decorous Yu Yang backed off a little and remained silent. Give me your hand. Grandma yelled at Hao Zhonghua for the third time. Seeing his mother shaking in rage, Hao Zhonghua was afraid that she would have another stroke due to high blood pressure, and he had no choice but to lower his head in embarrassment and extend his palm. Grandma looked around and saw a folding fan on the coffee table, and she picked it up instantly. The folding fan had a frame made of fine rosewood, and it was smooth and hard. As the old saying goes, amongst all the virtues, filial piety comes first. With all your trips overseas, it seems like you have forgotten our ancestors' teachings and disciplines. Grandma held Hao Zhonghua's hand in one hand and hit the palm with the folding fan. Feeling the sharp pain, Hao Zhonghua had the urge to withdraw his hand, but he dared not to in front of his angry mother. A red welt appeared immediately on his palm. Where were you when I passed out due to high blood pressure? Where were you when I was discharged from the hospital? Where were you when I was ready to go home? If it weren't for Zhao Hongyu's family, I would have been dead. Snap. Another hard lash landed on Hao Zhonghua's palm. Yu Yang felt sorry for her husband but was afraid to stop grandma. She said in a low voice, Mom, please don't say that. Every word I have said is true. Hongyu's family saved my life, and they took care of me. How about you? Zhonghua is my son, and you are my daughter-in-law. But where were you when I was in danger? And you treat my saviors with such attitude. I may be illiterate, but I know the virtues and how to act in good faith. Snap. The third hard lash landed on Hao Zhonghua's palm. Hao Zhonghua's palm had quickly turned red, and this well-known scientist stood obediently before his mother with a red and sweaty face. We agreed on 11 o'clock, then you must come at 11 a.m. Being late is not respecting others' time. Hong Yu's family are my saviors, and you made them wait at home. You are ungrateful for their kindness and have acted in bad faith. Snap. 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 The fan landed on Hao Zhonghua's palm repeatedly each time grandma opened her mouth. You are ungrateful, unfilial, and unfaithful. I don't want such a son like you. Grandma got even angrier with each lash. She was now panting, but the beatings got even more forceful. Hao Zhonghua bowed before his mother and bore the pain with a frown. He kept his head lowered the whole time. When he was a boy, Grandma would scold him this way whenever he messed around or got lazy with his studies. In the last 20 years since he grew up and earned his reputation, he had not been punished like this. Now in front of outsiders, he experienced his mother's fury again. He felt not only the burning pain but also shame, guilt, and some gratitude as well. I taught you everything about filial piety, faith, honesty, and honor. Have you forgotten them all? 
Snap. 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 Another series of lashes landed on his palm, and Hao Zhonghua gritted his teeth, endured his mother's rage, and didn't withdraw his hand that was regarded as the deftest and valuable hand in science as his hands could split cell membranes with the assistance of a microscope and a pair of tweezers. Don't think you are above everyone with several prizes and the support of the mayor. There is something higher than us. How can you call yourself a man when you treat the saviors this way? Out of breath, grandma couldn't stand any longer, and she had to sit down on the sofa behind her. Mom, it is my fault. Hao Zhonghua moved forward and held his mother's hand in his and said with sincerity. I'm wrong, too. Yu Yang took two steps forward and said with her head lowered. It's never too late if you can correct your mistakes. Don't forget our ancestors' teachings while you are abroad, grandma said in a loud voice. Auntie, don't work yourself up. You must take care since you were just discharged from the hospital. Zhao Hongyu took the opportunity to appease her. Grandma, please don't be so angry. Zhao Yanzi also walked over to comfort Grandma. Hao Ren moved to his grandma's side and gently patted her back, helping her calm down. Hao Zhonghua and Yu Yang were now standing beside Grandma in silence. A couple of days before, they were confident and passionate scientists giving lectures in the auditorium. But now, they had tears in their eyes as they faced grandma like kids who misacted. Faith and virtue. They are the foundation of our race. Even though you are building a big career, you will amount to nothing if you have forgotten the most basic principles of being a human. Grandma raised her head and added. Mom, we know we are wrong, Hao Zhonghua and Yu Yang said together. Okay then. Now go get my bags. Grandma gave them a hard look. Hurriedly. Hao Zhonghua and Yu Yang began to move grandma's bags into their car. Hao Ren saw the red tomato-like palm of his dad that was shivering uncontrollably, and he knew grandmother was dead serious this time. I apologize for what happened today. After several deep breaths, grandma returned to her amiable self and said to Zhao Hongyu and Zhao Guang. It's all right, Zhao Guang said with a smile. After publicly scolding her son, Hao Ren's grandma apologized to her hosts hoping that they would not hold any grudges against Hao Ren's parents for being late. Mom, the bags are all in the car. Shall we go to lunch now? Hao Zhonghua re-entered the house and said. His expression returned to normal and didn't look as embarrassed as a few minutes before. Um hem, grandma stood up and walked toward the door. After several days of rest in Zhao Hongyu's home, grandma was much stronger, and her complexion looked much healthier. She was old, but her head was clear. She knew Zhao Hongyu must have put many valuable ingredients in the chicken soup that she made been making for her. Also, she noted how much Zhao Hongyu liked Hao Ren. Seeing Zhao Yanzi and Hao Ren together, she found his grandson's calm manner quite matching with Zi's cuteness. Now that she had told everyone that Zhao Hongyu's family was her savior and showed them her authority as the big boss of the Hao family, everything else would go smoothly. She was willing to wait a few years as long as Zhao Yanzi and Hao Ren had feelings for each other. She didn't mind Zhao Yanzi's age since when she was young, she had even seen girls marrying as young as 12 or 13. Hao Ren was oblivious to his grandma's plan underneath her outburst, and he walked his grandma out of the door and into his father's Ford. Zhao Guang drove out his black Chevrolet, and the two cars drove toward the Starlight restaurant one after another. Today, are we just have lunch, or do we want to let Ren's parents know about the arrangement? Sitting in the passenger seat, Zhao Hongyu asked Zhao Guang. Auntie has just expressed to us that she has the final say in the family. Since this is the case, we can make it known, Zhao Guang said calmly. Sitting in the back seat, Zhao Yanzi heard her parents' discussion, and she bit her lip but didn't interrupt. I don't want to marry that silly uncle, looking at the clouds through the car window, she mused to herself. Chapter 79. Who is your girlfriend? In contrast to the discussion between Zhao Guang and Zhao Hongyu, the four members of Hao Zhonghua's family were silent in the white ford. Sitting in the back seat, grandma was still angry. After all, it was unacceptable for Hao Zhonghua and Yu Yang to be one hour late on such an important day. Afraid to anger her again, Hao Zhonghua and Yu Yang dared not to start a conversation. Like Zhao Yanzi who was in the black Chevrolet, Hao Ren looked out at the white clouds and got lost in his own thoughts. Two cars arrived at the Starlight restaurant situated in the center of the city, and the two families greeted each other again and were ushered by a waiter into their reserved compartment. 
They sat down, and Hao Zhonghua handed the pre-selected menu to the waiter. I'm grateful for your family's excellent care of my mom. Today, my wife and I want to express our gratitude. After handing the menu to the waiter, Hao Zhonghua began talking to Zhao Guang. They didn't have time for introductions due to grandma's anger, and they needed to introduce themselves to each other now. I'm Ren's father, Hao Zhonghua, and this is Ren's mother, Yu Yang. Hao Zhonghua stood up and continued. Nice to meet you. Zhao Guang nodded and stood up as well. I'm Zi's father, Zhao Guang. This is Zi's mother, Zhao Hongyu. And this is my daughter, Zhao Yanzi. Under Ren's good tutoring, Zi's performance in school has improved greatly, he said. Zhao Yanzi pouted and thought, my midterm scores have not been published yet. What hypocrites the adults are. Mr. and Mrs. Hao are both well-known scientists who are well-respected by everyone. We didn't know that you were Ren's parents, and it's a great honor to meet you, Zhao Hongyu added. I'm just doing some research, and I'm still far from being a big scientist, Hao Zhonghua's face reddened a little and said hurriedly as he thought of the scolding he received from his mother in Zhao Guang's home. What do Mr. and Mrs. Zhao do? Yu Yang asked warmly. He he, I run a small business, and my wife runs a small design studio, Zhao Guang answered. That is nice, Hao Zhonghua answered courteously. He knew Zhao Guang was humble. Judging from the interior decorations of Zhao Guang's home, he knew Zhao Guang's business wasn't small. However, he didn't realize that Zhao Guang's company was, in fact, the famous Mingri group whose businesses covered multiple industries. It was also one of the most prominent machinery manufacturing groups in the country. Although Zhao Hongyu's design studio had only about a dozen employees and was just a mini company, it had an excellent reputation in the designer circle and was ranked among the top six interior design studios in the country. Your daughter is beautiful. Is she in middle school? Yu Yang looked at Zhao Yanzi across the table and smiled. Yes, she is in the eighth grade. She is not a diligent student, and that's why we asked Ren to tutor her, Zhao Hongyu answered with a smile. He he. I hope our Ren didn't cause you too much trouble, Yu Yang continued. Not at all. Ren is smart and considerate. I like him very much, and so does my husband. He will make an excellent son-in-law, Zhao Hongyu said. Yu Yang didn't realize Zhao Hongyu was serious about the topic. She chuckled and said that Ren still had a long way to go. I'm sure Ren will follow your steps and become a great scientist, won't he? Zhao Hongyu asked. No, no. Yu Yang waved her hand immediately and replied, Zhang Hua and I are both in the science field and know it is too demanding of a career. That's why we have never pushed him in this direction. We hope he could live an ordinary life. Zhao Hongyu nodded and was satisfied with this answer. She had been worried that Hao Ren would put all his time and energy into his work like his parents and neglect Zi. Your Zi looks so pretty and smart. She will one day do great things, Yu Yang complimented. He he, with her present academic performance, we don't expect too much of her. We just hope that she will be like an ordinary girl and could find a good husband who loves her. She's just in the eighth grade, isn't it too early to think about that? No, not too early, the mothers were warming up to the topic while they waited for their dishes. In the eyes of the public, Yu Yang was a mysterious female scientist. But on the inside, she was just an ordinary mother who loved to talk about her kid. She and her husband were both famous scientists, but they didn't have high expectations for their son. Their lives looked dignified and high above the crowd, but it was very hard. They hoped Hao Ren's life would be simpler and more comfortable. Otherwise, with their abilities, they would have sent Hao Ren to the best elementary, middle, and high schools in the country and then to the best domestic or even international university. Meanwhile, Hao Ren had always been low-key, never using his parents' names for his convenience. He worked hard, climbed the academic ladder all by himself, and finally entered the nationally well-known East Ocean University. Of course, it was not a secret that Hao Zhonghua and Yu Yang had a son named Hao Ren. A few officials in the municipal government knew about it, but they were familiar with these two scientists' temperaments and wouldn't do anything to please them. While Yu Yang and Zhao Hongyu warmed up to each other, Zhao Guang and Hao Zhonghua, like typical fathers, talked about their work on the other side of the table. Since neither of them knew about the other's area of profession, their talk sounded superficial and tentative. As to Hao Ren and Zhao Yanzi, they just looked at each other from across the table. While the parents began to get familiar and the topics got broader and more profound, 
they still couldn't contribute and just observed the direction of their conversation cautiously. When the dishes began to be served, Hao Ren and Zhao Yanzi busied themselves with eating, which was another excuse not to join in on their parents' conversations. You are very busy, and you don't stay in the country often, do you? Seeing Zhao Guang and Hao Zhonghua still not being so close with each other, Zhao Hongyu initiated another topic directed at Hao Zhonghua. Oh, we occasionally go abroad to do research, but we stay in the country most of the time. However, Yu Yang and I spend most of our time in the labs and research institutes and have neglected Ren. Fortunately, he is a good boy and is very independent, Hao Zhonghua answered. You don't have much time to take care of auntie, right? Zhao Hongyu asked tentatively. We hired Uncle Wang to take care of my mother. We usually squeeze some time to stay with her when we're in the country. The incident made us realize that there were some problems with our previous arrangement. Yu Yang and I discussed it, and we are considering hiring another person whose sole responsibility will be to take care of my mother, Hao Zhonghua said. I can still move around. I don't need a hired help to take care of me. Grandma, who had been silent, suddenly spoke. I have a suggestion. Since auntie got along with us well and you are very busy, she can live in our home, and we can take care of each other, Zhao Hongyu said. No, it's not appropriate. Hao Zhonghua immediately shook his head and replied, We have troubled you for so long, and we can't put more burden on you. So, I'm just a burden, grandma threw out a comment. Mom, that's not what I meant, hurriedly, Hao Zhonghua turned to grandma and explained. Before you came back from abroad and after you came back to East Ocean City, you have just called me twice. Doesn't it mean that I'm a burden to you? Grandma said. Since Zhonghua and I returned from abroad, we had to make time to give lectures at East Ocean University, and then the supervisors arranged for us to be interviewed by all kinds of media. We were so busy that we didn't even have much time to sleep, Yu Yang tried to explain. I will be left with a hired help. It seems that I'm really a burden. Ignoring Yu Yang's explanation, Grandma continued her complaint. In fact, Hao Zhonghua cared a lot about his mother, however, each time he called her, she would complain over the phone for more than one hour, making his tight schedule even tighter. As time went on, Hao Zhonghua called his mother less often. Facing Grandma's continuous complaints, a thought occurred to Yu Yang, Mom's greatest hope is for Ren to find a girlfriend. She turned to Hao Ren and asked, Ren, the girl who came to the lectures with you is your girlfriend, isn't she? Chapter 80. A granddaughter-in-law. Zhao Yanzi, who had been eating a steak absent-mindedly, suddenly became alert. Zhao Guang and Zhao Hongyu, who had been talking and laughing with Hao Ren's parents also became serious. Sensing the change in the atmosphere, Hao Ren explained in a hurry, Mom, she is our class president. Class president? Yu Yang didn't believe him, I saw you holding her hand. No, I didn't, mom, stop it. Hao Ren was anxious and tried to explain, she, she just dragged me in there to find seats. Hao Ren's face was turning red from the anxiety, but Yu Yang, who was oblivious to the situation, thought Hao Ren was shy. She laughed, hee hee, don't hide it from mom. I won't object to it, and your grandma will be happy for you as well. Besides, that girl is very pretty and warm-hearted. You father thinks well of the girl, too. Biting her lips, Zhao Yanzi's expression had been changing while her parents' expression turned from astonished to unreadable. Ren, is she really your girlfriend? Grandma asked. No, she isn't. She is really just the class president. We only went to the lectures together. Hao Ren explained while sweat began to form on his forehead. Although there was nothing yet between Zhao Yanzi and himself, he was at least her fiancé in name. Besides, there was nothing between him and Xie Yujia. He wouldn't take the blame for things he didn't do. However, his explanation only convinced his parents that something was going on. Seeing his mother's interest, Hao Zhonghua warmed up to this topic and added, Ren, although I only had a glimpse of her, I think she is a good girl. She was good to you, I won't object if you go out with her. If she is not your girlfriend yet, you can pursue her since she looks like a fine and considerate girl. I'm sure your grandma will like her as well. He had angered his mother with his lateness, and now he wanted to cheer her up with her favorite topic. However, they didn't know they were making the matter worse in the eyes of the potential in-laws sitting across the table. Due to Zhao Yanzi's young age, they had never thought of pairing Hao Ren and Zhao Yanzi together. Seeing Hao Ren's recent good mood, Grandma thought that he had a girlfriend. Now with her guess confirmed by Hao Zhonghua and Yu Yang, 
her face lit up. Ren, don't hide it from us. Find some time and bring the girl back to visit me, she said cheerfully. After all, making Zhao Yanzi her granddaughter-in-law was just her wishful thinking, and she would be happy if Hao Ren had indeed got a girlfriend. Zhao Yanzi couldn't listen to it anymore. With a snort, she stood up abruptly and left their compartment. Z. Zhao Hongyu called after her, but Zhao Yanzi didn't look back. Frustrated, Hao Ren hurriedly stood up and followed her out of the compartment. Seeing Hao Ren following her, Zhao Yanzi quickened her steps and ran toward the stairs. However, how could she outrun Hao Ren? Hao Ren rushed up and grabbed her wrist. The class president is not my girlfriend, Hao Ren told her in earnest. Zhao Yanzi snorted and shrugged away from his hand. You don't have to give me an explanation, she yelled. Hao Ren looked at her and asked, Are you angry? I have nothing to be angry about since I don't like you. I don't care who your girlfriend is, Zhao Yanzi said stiffly. Okay, I will explain it to you anyway. That day, the class president wanted to go to the lecture. Since no one wanted to go with her, she asked me. Later during the book signing event, since one student could only get one signature, she dragged me there to get one extra signed book for her. Hao Ren explained in earnest, but Zhao Yanzi put her hands on her ears, refusing to listen to him. This silly girl, Hao Ren took her right hand away from her ear and said, You must listen to me. No, 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 Zhao Yanzi kept shaking her head. Helpless, Hao Ren grabbed her hand and began to drag her back to their compartment. Let me go. I won't go back. Zhao Yanzi hit Hao Ren's arm with her left hand. Determined, Hao Ren bent over abruptly and carried her in his arms before walking back to their compartment. You jerk. Zhao Yanzi cursed at him while hitting Hao Ren's shoulders and chest with both of her fists and kicking around above his arm with her feet. However, her feeble struggle was nothing to Hao Ren who was now on the second level of the spirit concentration scroll. Don't kick, or your skirt will slide up, with Zhao Yanzi in his arms, Hao Ren warned her. You, jerk, she turned her head abruptly and bit Hao Ren's arm. Ouch! Hao Ren yelled but didn't put her down. Are you a dog? He asked. Fortunately, he had reached the second level of the spirit concentration scroll, and his arm muscles were as hard as rocks. That was why Zhao Yanzi's teeth didn't injure him. I'm a dragon. Zhao Yanzi retorted indignantly. Hao Ren put the red-faced Zhao Yanzi down at the door of their compartment. She turned around and tried to escape, but Hao Ren caught her by the shoulders and turned her around. He took her hand before pushing the door open and walking in. What happened? Hao Zhonghua asked in bafflement. Something came up, and Zi had to run out to deal with it, Hao Ren said. With doubt on his face, Hao Zhonghua asked again, then, the matter is taken care of? Yes, it's done. Hao Ren nodded. He grabbed onto Zhao Yanzi's hand a little tighter and tried to prevent her from running out again. Come back to your seats, Hao Zhonghua said. Looking at Zhao Yanzi's red face, Zhao Hongyu didn't know what had happened. But seeing Hao Ren rushing out in concern and returning hand in hand with Zi, she thought it was a good sign. You two sit together, she said as she looked at them. Zhao Yanzi didn't want to sit next to Hao Ren, but she couldn't get her hand free from his grip. Besides, she didn't want to appear willful and poor-mannered in front of Grandma and Hao Ren's parents. That girl really is not your girlfriend. Yu Yang resumed the topic after seeing Hao Ren returning while holding Zi's hand, she found it weird. Mom, just believe me when I say she's not my girlfriend. Hao Ren said helplessly. The words were for his mom and Zhao Hongyu. Well, I thought you had finally got yourself a girlfriend. After hearing Hao Ren's answer, Grandma was a little disappointed. In the old times, a man could have three to four wives. However, our Ren doesn't even have one, Grandma lamented. Hao Ren began to sweat at his grandma's ancient thoughts. Auntie, what do you think of our Z? Seeing Zhao Yanzi and Hao Ren wrestling under the table, Zhao Hongyu asked. Smart, lively, cute, I like her a lot, Grandma answered. What do Mr. and Mrs. Hao think? Zhao Hongyu turned the question to Hao Zhonghua and Yu Yang. Our impressions of her are excellent. She's pretty and clever, Yu Yang said, and Hao Zhonghua, who was sitting next to her, nodded in agreement. Sensing the direction of the conversation, Zhao Yanzi and Hao Ren stopped their attacks and defenses under the table simultaneously and turned their eyes to the elders at the table. After observing and pondering for a few seconds, 
Zhao Hongyu asked Grandma, Auntie, do you want Z to become your granddaughter-in-law? Chapter 81. The Dragon Palace. The entire room was quiet after Zhao Hongyu's remark. It was easier for Zhao Yanzi because she had already seen it coming. Hao Ren, on the other hand, was astonished. He had figured that this matter would be brought up, but it was still surprising for Zhao Hongyu to bring it up directly like this. He thought this first meeting would be a simple meetup and the marriage proposal would have to wait until after a few meetings between the parents. Hao Zhonghua and Yu Yang stared at Zhao Hongyu in surprise. They thought they must have heard her wrong. Grandma's right hand was just about to reach for a dish, and it stopped midway as her expression was half surprised and half cheerful. However, Zhao Guang's settled expression was telling them that they did not hear anything wrong. You are saying, Grandma's lips trembled at the sudden good news, Z can be my granddaughter-in-law? Yeah, Zhao Hongyu nodded. Grandma turned back and looked at Hao Ren and Zhao Yanzi, who were sitting together in embarrassment. She then turned to Zhao Hongyu and agreed promptly, that's great. Hao Zhonghua and Yu Yang looked at each other, confused. They had no idea what was going on. Even though they had the fastest brains and the most rigorous logic, it was still beyond their anticipation to receive a daughter-in-law as soon as they got back from abroad. They didn't even have time to deal with many important issues yet. This arrangement is settled then. Zhao Hongyu happily clapped her hands and breathed out deeply in relief. She seemed to be very pleased with this answer. Hao Zhonghua and Yu Yang had no chance to talk at all in the last half a minute as grandma who was the final boss already made the decision. Hao Ren and Zhao Yanzi looked at each other awkwardly, they didn't expect things to go like this. Hao Ren's parents turned to Zhao Yanzi to actually take a good look at her. Although this little girl gave them a pretty good first impression, it was still too soon to upgrade her from the daughter of their mom's saviors to their own daughter-in-law. Fortunately, they have been through many critical events and had the temperament to deal with emergencies. No one knew what embarrassment they would have caused if they didn't have such good self-restraint. What, is this all about? Hao Zhonghua eventually asked after a few seconds. I like Ren very much, and Auntie adores Z. So, we want to assign them a baby marriage one foot today, Zhao Hongyu said softly. What are the kids' opinions then? Even the top scientist Hao Zhonghua was confused by the situation. I don't agree, mom. Zhao Yanzi stood up immediately at the chance to talk. How about Ren? Hao Zhonghua asked. He valued Hao Ren's opinion more. I, Hao Ren hesitated. After he looked at Zhao Hongyu's expecting stare, he paused for a moment and said, I have no problem with it. It won't be a big deal since Zhao Yanzi had already said no I shouldn't disappoint Zhao Hongyu and Zhao Guang since they have been so nice to me, Hao Ren thought to himself. He had never seen himself liking a shrewish little girl like this. His otaku nature would make him more likely fall for cuter and sweeter girls. Z's objection is not a real objection. So, you won't have an issue if Z is okay with it, Zhao Guang said. His words gave out a strong sense of stateliness, and Zhao Yanzi shut her mouth even though she wanted to say something. We certainly won't interfere if they both agree to it, Hao Zhonghua answered after some consideration. He had examined Zhao Yanzi closely and didn't find any shortcomings. Plus, he was aware of how much grandma liked her. He decided to go along with their plan as he had no clue what their intentions were. So, that's a yes, Zhao Guang said. It's a yes, but Z is only, Hao Zhonghua was confused. As long as you are okay with it, we can discuss the rest of it later, Zhao Guang said. Hao Zhonghua looked at his wife for her opinion and Yu Yang looked at Zhao Yanzi's pretty doll face from across the table and nodded to her husband. She was indeed a great scientist, her logical thinking calmed her down immediately. Other moms would have panicked in such a situation. It all depends on the kids. Yu Yang and I won't interfere if they wish to develop their relationship in the future, Hao Zhonghua stated his opinion up front. Having said that, he still felt a bit weird since Zhao Guang's daughter was only in middle school. There was no need to be in such a rush even if they really liked Hao Ren. That's a relief, Zhao Hongyu smiled and raised her glass of Sprite. Cheers. Zhao Yanzi, who was still standing, realized that her opinion had been completely ignored by her parents as if it didn't matter at all. However, she didn't want to throw a tantrum in front of grandma. It was killing her to swallow it back. Z, grandma adores you so much. Grandma took her little hand and said cheerfully. Zhao Yanzi felt wronged, 
but she couldn't cry out a single tear. Her right to speak was absolutely taken away by her parents as they sold her out, without even giving her a chance to fight back. This is hegemonism. I need to fight back, fight back, she thought. However, her passion was immediately suppressed as soon as she noticed Zhao Guang's razor-sharp stare. Ah, but her dad had the final say in the family and was the Dragon King. Hao Ren's family was very democratic, and he could make his own decisions. On the other hand, even though Zhao Yanzi was the princess, she could only act tough outside of her family. Cheers, Yu Yang raised her glass and said to Zhao Hongyu. She thought her son was too nerdy to ever find a girlfriend but a daughter-in-law has presented herself now. She found herself liking Zhao Yanzi for some unknown reason. Maybe it was because she had always liked girls but never gave birth to one, or maybe Zhao Hongyu's straightforward and warm personality left a good impression on her mind. As long as grandma was happy about it, Zhao Yanzi's young age shouldn't be a problem for this baby marriage, since they could wait. Zhao Yanzi's family seemed like a really nice family after all. The agreement had been tentatively reached with their toast. Hao Zonghua suddenly remembered his red pocket, so he took it out and put it into Zhao Yanzi's hand. Uncle forgot to bring gifts for this first meeting. Take this little red pocket as a gift. Even though he called it a little red pocket, there was actually 8,000 yuan inside as a thank you gesture for the good care Zhao Hongyu's family provided grandma. The two families naturally became closer due to their special bond. No way, there is no way I am marrying him, Zhao Yanzi mumbled secretively while holding a tantrum inside. The lunch brought the two families together. Hao Ren's family wanted to express their gratitude whereas Zhao Yanzi's family intended to get a commitment. Although Hao Zhonghua and Yu Yang agreed to the baby marriage verbally, they did not take it very seriously. To them, it was like a silly joke which could be either serious or not. It would be good if Zhao Yanzi were to become their daughter-in-law in the future but it would be okay too if it didn't work out in the long run. After Hao Zhonghua paid the bill after lunch, the two families went through the hallways to the lobby. Come over at 7 o'clock in the morning tomorrow, and I'll take you to the Dragon Palace, Zhao Guang walked over to Hao Ren and whispered into his ears. Chapter 82. She really liked Z Dragon Palace? Hao Ren was a bit surprised. Zhao Guang nodded with a smile. After he and Zhao Hongyu have met Hao Ren's parents, the remaining doubts were gone, and it was time to bring Hao Ren to deal with more complicated things. This group of people said goodbye to each other outside of the restaurant. Even though Zhao Hongyu mentioned having Zhao Yanzi as grandma's granddaughter-in-law and it was quite a shocker, the atmosphere during lunch was still very harmonious and pleasant. Because of grandma, the two families already trusted each other, and both thought that the other family was a great family. Yu Yang patted Zhao Yanzi's head to say goodbye to her. Even though this little girl was her daughter-in-law in name, Yu Yang wasn't in a hurry to invite her over. It was only her first time meeting Zhao Yanzi, and there would be other chances in the future to get to know her better. Hao Ren helped grandma to get in the car while Hao Zhonghua went to the driver's seat, and Zhao Yanzi's family also got into their vehicle. They waved at each other and went separate ways. On the way back, grandma sat in the back seat and she was happier than someone who had won 1 million yuan when she thought of the cute Z becoming her granddaughter-in-law. The car headed to their house near the sea. On the way back, Hao Zhonghua's cell phone rang about five to six times, and those calls were all about work. In the end, he turned off the phone so that no one could reach him. To make grandma happy, he took the whole day off from work to spend it with his family. He finally woke up from the punishment today. Even though his science career was booming, he couldn't neglect his family either. On the other hand, Yu Yang turned off her cell phone to avoid any disturbances as well. After they arrive at the house, Hao Zhonghua parked the car in the garage and brought the whole family inside. This house had two floors and was bigger than Zhao Yanzi's family's two-story home. The living room was located on the main floor, and the entire wall that was facing the sea was made from glass. This was a true oceanfront cottage. The bedrooms were located on the second floor, and the dining room was located in a small wooden house that was connected to the second floor by a little bridge. Uncle Wang, who usually cooked for grandma, lived on the first floor of the small house. There was a big garden on this property, and Uncle Wang also took care of all the flowers and grass. If grandma wasn't too lonely staying here, this type of house would be very comfortable to live in. Mom, I'm not going to the laboratory today. 
I'll spend some time with you. Hao Zhonghua held grandma's hand and said respectfully. I know you are busy with work. I am your mom, and it's fine if you don't place too much time and energy on me. However, you can't neglect my savior, Z's family, in the future, understood? Grandma said. Yes, it was my fault today. Hao Zhonghua admitted his mistake sincerely and explained on behalf of Yu Yang as well. In fact, Yu Yang arrived at my laboratory very early this morning. I wanted to finish the job I had on hand and thus dragged her down with me. It is fine, you don't have to explain. I'll be happy if you guys come home more often. Even when you're busy with work, you still need to take care of your bodies. You two should go take a nap now that you are home, Grandma patted Hao Zhonghua's arm and said. After all, he was still her son. She hit him pretty hard earlier, and she felt sorry for him. That's nothing, we will walk around with you outside. Go for a walk. I'm going to take a nap. I'm a bit tired today. Grandma walked into her room and closed the door. Thus, Hao Zhonghua and Yu Yang had to return to their room for some rest. Indeed, they had been busy and were still jet-lagged when they came back home. Hao Ren also went back to his room, locked the door, and opened the window. He started cultivating the spirit concentration scroll. In this period of time, he had been wearing two Mount Tai bracelets, which meant that he was carrying more than 50 kilograms on a daily basis. Therefore, he had to cultivate the spirit concentration scroll and use the nature essence inside his body all the time. Other than sleeping at night, he couldn't slack off at all. Because of this, he had gotten better at cultivating the spirit concentration scroll. Even though he didn't go to Su Han's office in the past two days, he had been cultivating on the way to school, in class, and when he was eating. It might be because this place was close to the sea and there were a lot of water elements in the air. Hao Ren felt like he progressed further on the second level of the spirit concentration scroll. The nature essence that originally filled half of his body seemed to have increased in volume. Especially the nine critical acupoints in the top, middle, and lower parts of his body, they absorbed more nature essence and responded to the dragon core in his Dantian one. When he realized this, he had already cultivated until night. Hao Zhonghua came to get Hao Ren for dinner. When his son opened the door, he suddenly felt like this kid not only seemed energetic but also had a unique temperament. He has gone through so many changes. I've been out of the country for a month or so, and he has become better looking. No wonder girls have started to like this kiddo, Hao Zhonghua thought. After dinner, Hao Zhonghua asked his son to go out for a walk along the beach. The sea breeze was slightly salty, but it felt comfortable when it blew on their bodies. The tides at night made some soft crashing noises, and it was ear-pleasing. This was a great place to talk as they walked on the soft sand. It's been a while. You've become buffer than before, and you look more like a grown-up, Hao Zhonghua said as he walked beside Hao Ren and looked at him under the moonlight. I'm not trying to tell you what to do, Dad, but you got to take care of Grandma more, Hao Ren stepped on the sand as he told his dad. It's not like I don't care, but your grandma likes to complain a lot. Ah, Hao Zhonghua sighed, be honest with me. Was the girl we saw at the university your girlfriend? No, she's my class president, Hao Ren answered. That girl seems great, Hao Zhonghua whispered. Hao Ren stopped this topic and asked. Why did you guys just agree casually to the arrangement today? Zhao Yanzi's family seems very good after we interacted with them today. Besides, we were trying to make your grandma happy when we said that at lunch. You know how your grandma is. Once she is certain of something, we must do it her way. Since she likes the little girl, your mom and I had to obey her wishes so she wouldn't get angry, Hao Zhonghua said. It wasn't your intention. Hao Ren asked again. You can't say that either, Hao Zhonghua looked at the surging tide and replied, This little Z is really beautiful and cute. If she's my daughter-in-law, that's pretty good too. However, you never know what will happen in the future. He thought for a few seconds and asked, Do you still remember Little Carrot? Little Carrot? Hao Ren seemed a bit confused. Haha, you forgot already? It's the girl who always came to our home when you were young. Her dad was my classmate at the university. We were pretty close at the time, and their family always came to our place. We called her Little Carrot because she was tiny and skinny. She used to follow you around all the time, don't you remember? Hao Ren thought for a while. In his vague memory, there was a little girl who had a runny nose, wore a light yellow dress, and had a red flower in her hair. She was a little girl who followed him all the time and always called him, little older brother too. Yeah, I remember a little, Hao Ren nodded and asked, 
where's their family right now? Her dad was one of the groups of people who went overseas in my generation. Because the means of communication wasn't developed at the time, we gradually lost contact with each other. That little carrot probably went to the States with her dad. How Zhang Hua looked at the sky and said in exclamation. Why mention that all of a sudden? How Ren asked. Oh, it was because the two families were close at the time, and we also joked about the baby marriage since you guys got along well. As kids grow up, these types of arrangements don't count, Hao Zhang Hua said in disappointment. When Z grows up, if she ends up liking you, your mom and I won't oppose you guys being together. However, Hao Zhang Hua's tone changed, if Z doesn't like you, or if she finds herself a boyfriend in the future, forget about this and don't force it. Understand? Yeah. Hao Ren nodded as he used the tip of his toe and drew a deep sand pit. Zhao Yanzi's family is very well educated and considerate. Even if we can't be in-laws, it's still good to be friends with them in the long run, Hao Zhonghua said. Dragon Palace, Hao Ren looked at the endless sea under the moonlight and suddenly thought of what would happen tomorrow. Chapter 83. Just a broken temple. Hao Ren woke up early the next day. He opened up the window, faced the ocean, and cultivated the spirit concentration scroll for another two hours. The fog in the morning formed some spiral-shaped water elements, and they entered the acupoints in Hao Ren's body without his awareness. The water elements went through more than a hundred of acupoints in his body, and they traveled along and stored themselves in the Dantian to irrigate the dragon core. The second level of the spirit concentration scroll was the realm of guiding the energy inside the body. Even though it couldn't be compared to the third level, it was still great progress for Hao Ren who just started cultivating. After cultivating, Hao Ren's body had become more and more refined. Even though there wasn't the growth of muscle in his body, his strength increased by many folds. Hao Ren stopped his cultivation process when he heard something outside. He opened the door and walked out. You're up so early. Hao Zhang Hua, who was in the hallway, asked when he saw his son walking out. Are you still working today, Dad? Hao Ren asked. Yeah, I still have many things to finish from yesterday. You look great. Must have had a good sleep from last night? Hao Zhang Hua asked. Hao Ren nodded with a smile. In fact, the additional benefit of the spirit concentration scroll was to restore one's stamina quickly, and it worked better than sleeping. Both father and son went downstairs, and Hao Zhang Hua made something simple to eat. Dad, can you drive me to the city on your way? Hao Ren said as he ate. Today's Sunday. You don't have classes, right? Hao Zhang Hua was a bit confused. I'm going to Z place. Uncle Zhao is taking me somewhere today, Hao Ren replied. Oh, okay. Hao Zhang Hua ate the bread and didn't ask anything else. Hao Zhang Hua was very similar to Hao Ren. Even if they were close to someone, they didn't know how to express their feelings well. Hao Zhang Hua was also busy with his research. Therefore, Yu Yang was the one who took the initiative and went after Hao Zhonghua. Hao Ren saw that his dad was absent-minded and knew that he was already thinking about work beforehand. After eating breakfast, Hao Ren left a note on the table and went to the city in his dad's car. Hao Zhonghua's biology laboratory was located in the city. When they were living in East Ocean City, he usually drove to work as well. Yu Yang's Climate Research Institute was by the ocean and wasn't far from their oceanfront property. It was only little over a 10-minute walk. Hao Ren felt his dad worked hard as Hao Zhonghua was even working on the Sunday. While Hao Zhonghua drove, he glanced at Hao Ren and suddenly asked, Why do you wear bracelets like a girl? What bracelet? They're just small wristbands, Hao Ren explained. Did little Z give you those? Hao Zhonghua asked. Hao Ren shook his head. Hao Zhonghua was just trying to get a conversation going and didn't care about the bracelets that much. It was pretty common for young guys to wear wristbands. However, he wouldn't have thought that those two small bracelets, which looked cheap, would be something unimaginable. He thought for a while and said, I might have to leave in two days. Where are you going? Hao Ren asked immediately. Connecticut, United States. There's an academic conference at Yale University. I also have a few friends in the biology circle there, and I have to visit them, Hao Zhonghua said. For how long? Hao Ren kept asking. Hmm, for about two weeks, Hao Zhonghua answered. Hao Ren was silent and felt unhappy about it. His dad just came back for a few days and already planned on leaving again. No wonder grandma always complained. But your mom won't go this time, 
She'll stay and take care of grandma in East Ocean City, Hao Zhonghua said. Seeing his son not answering back, Hao Zhonghua knew that Hao Ren was unhappy. Take care of yourself and come back more often on the weekend to accompany your grandma, he said. Hao Ren still didn't say anything. He thought his dad could stay longer this time, but who knew that he had to travel again after having a meal with Zhao Yanzi's family. The car stopped at the door of Zhao Yanzi's house, and Zhao Guang came out to welcome them when he heard the noise. Hao Zhonghua opened the door and quickly got out to greet Zhao Guang. Would you mind if I bring Ren along to somewhere? Zhao Guang, who looked dignified in appearance, said with a loud voice. Ha ha, of course not. I've been busy with work lately. When I am free, I'll also bring Zi out with my family. Hao Zhonghua, who also had a strong figure and good temperament, responded loudly. Good, 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 Zhao Guang and Hao Zhonghua greeted and chatted with each other more. Then, Hao Zhonghua had to go to work and left. Zhao Guang led Hao Ren inside the house. Hao Ren felt nervous when he thought of going to the so-called Dragon Palace. Are you awake, Zi? Zhao Guang asked in a loud voice as he entered the house. Aiya, I still want to sleep. Zhao Yanzi whined with a lazy voice from her bedroom upstairs. Zhao Guang led Hao Ren upstairs and opened her bedroom door. Zhao Yanzi was covered up in a blanket with two thin legs hanging outside the bed. Her hair was messy, and her pajamas were also crumpled. She looked like a little bird that was still not awake. She opened her eyes semi-consciously and saw Hao Ren also standing at the door. She instantly screamed and shrunk into her blanket as she yelled, Dad, why did you bring him up here? Do you want to go to the Dragon Palace? Zhao Guang stood at the door and asked. No, 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 Zhao Yanzi yelled from under the blanket. Zhao Guang sighed helplessly and yelled at the bedroom next door. You stay home and take care of Zi, Hong Yu. I'll bring Hao Ren to the Dragon Palace. Okay, Zhao Hong Yu's voice came from next door. Their tones were so calm as if Zhao Guang was taking Hao Ren to another house of theirs to fetch something, and that destroyed the excitement and mystery Hao Ren felt. Forget about Zi. She still wants to sleep. Let's go ourselves. She had been preparing for her exams this week and is pretty tired. I'll let her rest over the weekend, Zhao Guang said as he brought Hao Ren out of Zhao Yanzi's bedroom. Okay, Hao Ren nodded. He knew Zhao Yanzi's temper and never argued with her. Seeing Zhao Guang's calm expression, Hao Ren thought to himself again, maybe my expectation is too high. Is the real dragon palace like a broken temple or memorial temple? And is that the reason why they didn't stay in the sea and came on land to do business? Do those treasures, precious materials, and rare monsters not exist? Hao Ren was nervous, disappointed, and yet excited at the same time. Zhao Guang ignored Hao Ren's uneasiness, drove out his black Chevrolet, and took Hao Ren towards the beach. As they traveled, Hao Ren found that the route they were on got them closer and closer to his home near the ocean. Gradually, he could see his family's home near the beach. A, the Dragon Palace is actually near my house, we've been neighbors for so many years and didn't even know, Hao Ren thought to himself. Suddenly, Zhao Guang turned into another area. This place wasn't far from the lively Golden Seacoast Resort, and there were many reefs and rocks near the area. The wind and waves were huge, so it was rare for people to go there. Zhao Guang parked the car and led Hao Ren towards the biggest reef in the area. The shape of the reef looked like an upright shell and there was a deep indentation in the middle. Half of a person could almost hide in there. Use the spirit concentration scroll and hold this in your mouth. Zhao Guang put a pearl-like bead in Hao Ren's palm. Hao Ren followed the instructions and felt like his whole body was covered in a layer of cold air. Zhao Guang pushed on Hao Ren's back, and Hao Ren flew towards the reef. He closed his eyes instinctively. When he opened his eyes again, he was at the bottom of the ocean. The seawater surrounded him but couldn't get closer than a meter. The bead in his mouth became colder and drew the energy in his body bit by bit. I must have the legendary, water-repellent bead, in my mouth. It could be counted as a dharma treasure, Hao Ren speculated secretly. Don't overthink. Follow me, Zhao Guang transmitted his voice to Hao Ren in the water and led the way. The spirit concentration scroll wasn't only the dragon tribe's fundamental cultivation technique but also the verification code through the reef passage. If one didn't cultivate spirit concentration scroll, he or she can't get through. 
No wonder Su Han was very nervous when she sensed my energy. This fundamental cultivation technique is a key to their secrets and needs to be strictly controlled, Hao Ren thought while he followed Zhao Guang. The seawater yielded automatically when Hao Ren moved around. With water repellent bead in his mouth, he followed Zhao Guang closely and wasn't affected by the waves. Hao Ren didn't know how long they had been walking, but he suddenly saw a golden object in front of them. Follow me and don't take any wrong steps. Zhao Guang suddenly said to Hao Ren again and transmitted his voiceover. Zhao Guang explained further probably because he was worried. There are many dangerous and complex array formations here. You would turn into ashes if you take a wrong step. Hearing those words, Hao Ren suddenly focused and ceased his original intention of looking around. I am the son-in-law of the Dragon King. Wouldn't it be a huge joke if I died at the entrance of the Dragon Palace, he thought. Two steps left. One step forward, one step right, two steps across, Zhao Guang's calm voice was clearly transmitted to Hao Ren. Hao Ren didn't dare to be careless. He followed the steps Zhao Guang told him and followed him steadily. This way of walking was similar to the playground game of hopscotch, but the pressure on Hao Ren was insane. Who would think that such dangerous array formations were hidden under the tranquil and serene seawater? Four steps forward, then turn right, Zhao Guang shouted. Hao Ren looked at his steps closely as he walked four steps forward quickly and then turned right immediately. We're here, Hao Ren felt relieved at Zhao Guang's words. A short walk of ten minutes made him sweat through his entire clothes. He rubbed his neck, raised his head, and looked up at the golden, luxurious, and grand East Ocean Dragon Palace. Chapter 84. Long Live Fuma Hao Ren. The golden structure was even more majestic than the forbidden city in Beijing. One couldn't even see the end of it. The red defense walls that were more than 10 meters tall stretched sideways with bright golden encaustic tiles on top. The defense walls were so long that their endings were nowhere in Hao Ren's sight. Thousands of golden armored soldiers were patrolling along the defense wall, and they looked like little gold dots from afar. More than 80 elders in purple robes awaited politely on the sides of the entrance and over twenty well-built generals in heavy black armors bowed with hands folded in front of them on the defense wall. Welcome back, Dragon King. They shouted out together with hundreds of soldiers who were standing behind them as Zhao Guang stepped forward. The sound was so loud that it created a huge wave in the ocean. Zhao Guang waved casually and walked the city with Hao Ren, and the elders followed them in. The generals bowed again and continued with their patrolling duties along the defense wall, followed by their soldiers. Hao Ren noticed that there were sections of different palaces beyond the defense wall. There were generals and soldiers in different uniforms patrolling around each section. Bomb, bomb, bomb. A hump-backed short elderly man in a gray robe jogged over. Forgive me, Dragon King, for not welcoming you at the gate. I had no idea that you were coming he kneeled and said as soon as he got in front of them. Zhao Guang pointed casually at where this old man was kneeling, and the old man was got up with the assistance from Zhao Guang's energy. Zhao Guang asked as he kept walking, Premier Sha, anything new lately? Premier Sha walked right beside Zhao Guang and said, Dragon King, the Dragon Palace has been in peace for the past month. Everything is under the governing of the elders. Get to the point, Zhao Guang said. Of course, Premier Sha nodded. I have passed the important issues on to Elder Sun and Elder Lu for you to read over. As for the trivial things, the elders here in the palace and I took care of them. I stored the 36 ripe thousand-year crimson fruits sent from the South Ocean into the Ice Palace. We delivered six pearls of the highest grade as a gift to North Ocean's sixth princess's wedding. Since West Ocean's Qing Dragon King's nephews is having some trouble with cultivation, they borrowed the green grade technique seven hearts and spirit scroll, from us. After discussing with several elders, we decided to lend it to them for one month. They will probably return it with some gifts by then. Zhao Guang listened to Premier Sha's report and hummed from time to time. Premier Sha, on the other hand, talked timidly as he didn't want to say anything wrong. Hao Ren noticed that the elders behind them didn't make any noise out of respect, and they even walked quietly in order to not make any sound. Hao Ren truly experienced the power of the king for the first time. Zhuang Guang seemed like such an easy-going person with his quiet and calm personality. Who would have thought that he was the leader of the East Ocean Dragon Clan that had control over 30 million ocean creatures in the East Ocean region? 
Any decision of his would be able to turn the ocean around. Is Elder Zhao's altar almost ready? Zhao Guang asked abruptly. We have finished 78 working procedures, and the altar can generate 6 large array formations and 32 small array formations. It should be done in about another 10 days. Third Lord One is extremely powerful, and no one in the human realm can defeat him. He can certainly go through the heavenly tribulation successfully next month and level up into a heavenly dragon, Premier Shah said. Hao Ren, who was walking beside Zhao Guang, figured that they were talking about Zhao Yanzi's third uncle, Zhao Kuo. Although he knew that Zhao Kuo was powerful, he never had a clear idea of how powerful the man was. This, undefeatable in the human realm, remark demonstrated how terrifying his strength must be. Zhao Guang suddenly turned around once they entered a palace and said, Elders, please head back to get some rest. That, Premier Sha pointed at Hao Ren secretly as if he was trying to say something. Oh, Zhao Guang came to his sense and pointed at Hao Ren as he explained, This is Zi's future husband, Fuma Hao Ren. Long live Fuma Hao Ren. More than 80 elders bowed as they greeted Hao Ren. Hao Ren felt extremely flattered by this greeting. There is no water in the Dragon Palace due to the protection of the array formations. Why are you still holding the water repellent bead in your mouth? Zhao Guang noticed Hao Ren's stuffed mouth. After hearing this, Hao Ren spat the bead out. He was astonished at everything on the way as he followed Zhao Guang through almost half of the Dragon Palace. On top of that, Premier Sha's reports amazed him as well. He still needed more time to recover from all the surprises. Premier Sha took out a silk handkerchief and wrapped Hao Ren's water repellent bead up before handing it back to him. Hao Ren caught his apple polishing motive but still thanked him. You can show Ren around, Premier Sha. It's his first time here, and he's not familiar with the place yet. Explain to him patiently if he has any questions, Zhao Guang said. As you wish, Dragon King. Premier Sha bowed with his hands folded in front. Then, he glimpsed at Hao Ren and backed out of the palace. Zhao Guang stayed in the palace to deal with matters that weren't reported to him on land. Just like what Premier Sha said, important issues would be delivered to Zhao Guang by Elder Lu and Elder Sun, and the trivial things, which didn't need to be reported, were kept inside the Dragon Palace for the elders and himself to work on. However, those that were neither important nor trivial were left behind for Zhao Guang's return. Hao Ren and Premier Sha had walked out of Zhao Guang's main palace. Seeing Premier Sha's hunched back, Hao Ren suspected that his original form was a shrimp. However, Hao Ren held back asking that because he didn't want to hurt this elderly's self-esteem. Fuma. Let me show you around since this is your first time at the Dragon Palace, Premier Sha said to Hao Ren as he humbly stood half a meter behind Hao Ren. Thank you, Premier Sha. Hao Ren bowed to him with hands folded in the front just like how they did it. Premier Sha was glad that this Fuma whom he had heard of but never met, was so easy to get along with. Even his hunched back straightened a little. He led Hao Ren to the back and said in a loud voice, This way, Fuma. Right in front of you is the Hundred Flower Palace. There are precious fruits of over hundreds even thousands of years here, and they are all great for creating elixirs. I can show you around, but please make sure you don't touch anything because some of them are deadly toxic. I would be in huge trouble if anything were to happen to you. Up ahead is the mystic creature palace. We keep some bizarre creatures in there. The gods treasure all lives, so we, the dragon palace, don't take their lives. Due to the lack of nature essence in this realm, there isn't enough living space for them on the land. Therefore, we establish this place for them to live in. Premier Shah got more and more excited before they even reached their destination. Hao Ren listened to the amazing stories as he followed Premier Shah. He suddenly thought to himself, would there be an imperial harem in such a majestic palace for Zhao Guang? Premier Sha suddenly turned back to look at Hao Ren. Um, just pure curiosity. Hao Ren found an excuse for his weird thoughts and hastily caught up with Premier Sha. Chapter 85. Countless treasures instead of a yard full of flowers as Hao Ren had expected. The Hundred Flower Palace was a large hill. Premier Sha followed Hao Ren anxiously afraid that he would touch something he shouldn't. Keeping Premier Shah's warning in mind, Hao Ren just looked around and was careful not to touch anything without permission. The palace was enormous, and it was impossible for him to see everything there in a short time. Premier Shah gave him a small tour before leading him out. When they were on their way out of the Hundred Flower Palace, 
Premier Sha plucked two small red fruits and handed them to Hao Ren. These are, Hao Ren asked. These are the most common fruits in the Hundred Flower Palace, Premier Sha said with an ingratiating smile. They aren't special except for the good taste. You may eat them for fun. There was no reason for Premier Sha to trick him, so Hao Ren put the two cherry sized fruits into his mouth. Chewing tentatively, he found that they were coreless, and he swallowed them right away. A super cool sensation spread from his stomach outward to the acupoints all over his body. It felt like all his acupoints were purged and refreshed. A surging strength instantly filled Hao Ren's body, and even the Mount Tai bracelets on his wrists felt much lighter. These fruits really don't have anything special to them. Hao Ren asked suspiciously when they walked out of the Hundred Flower Palace. Premier Shah nodded and confirmed, they are just sweet fruits. Their power is very weak. One fruit would only give you five years of cultivation progress of a mortal martial art master. He spoke casually, but Hao Ren was stunned. One of these common roadside fruits in the Hundred Flower Palace was equivalent to five years of cultivation of a martial arts master. What about the rare herbs? Hao Ren thought. Premier Shah didn't give him much time to digest this information. He continued excitedly, next to the Hundred Flower Palace is the Mystic Creature Palace. There live many ancient beasts that are extinct in the mortal world. However, we don't have any unique creatures such as Kirin or Phoenix there. Listening to Premier Shah's introduction, Hao Ren felt like he was in a wildlife preserve where different animals had their own territories and followed the natural food chain. Premier Shah didn't dare to venture too deep in there with Hao Ren. After he pointed out several beautiful animals for Hao Ren to look at, he led him out of there quickly. Next, they went to the profound cultivation palace which had more guards than the previous two palaces. This palace was an exquisite seven-level pagoda with each level in a color of the rainbow, from the red bottom level to the purple top level with orange, yellow, green, indigo, and blue in between. Soldiers in gold armors were patrolling the outer fences around each level. With Premier Shah as his guide, no one questioned Hao Ren when he entered the pagoda-shaped profound cultivation palace. The guards were informed of Hao Ren's identity, and they all greeted him deferentially. Embarrassed by their formal greetings, Hao Ren followed Premier Shah into the palace in a hurry. Sparsely decorated, the palace had bookshelves built around the circular walls. In each of the compartments on the bookshelves, there were radiant books which were protected by array formations. In the rare occasion that outsiders sneaked into the palace, they couldn't take the cultivation techniques with them if they couldn't break the array formations. Seeing the confusion on Hao Ren's face, Premier Shah explained, Fuma, the strength of our dragons is divided into the levels of Qian, Kun, Xuan, Dui, Zhen, Zhen, Li, and Khan. After breaking through the basic spirit concentration scroll and entering Khan level, one can cultivate more advanced techniques. The grade of the techniques is divided into the grades of red, orange, yellow, green, indigo, blue, and purple. The cultivation techniques are respectively placed on the seven levels of the profound cultivation palace. The widest first level is for the most common red grade techniques. He led Hao Ren to the second level and said, the second level is for the orange grade techniques. Hao Ren followed him up the levels one by one. The higher the level, the array formations for the protection of the books were more complicated and more powerful, undoubtedly with stronger defense and offense abilities. Of course, the higher the level, the smaller the area got, and the fewer the books. When they got up to the fourth level, Premier Shah stopped. Fuma, we have to stop here. I only have the authority to the first four levels. It means that the green grade techniques are the best techniques I have access to. Without Dragon King's permission, we can't go up any further, he said. Hao Ren didn't want to cause trouble for Premier Shah, so he nodded and cast a glance at the fourth level before going downstairs. After all, he was on the second level of the spirit concentration scroll and had a long way from Khan level. These cultivation techniques were useless to him anyway. Seeing the Fuma was so reasonable, Premier Shah felt a growing fondness for him. When he was walking down the stairs, Hao Ren suddenly wondered what kind of cultivation technique Su Han, who had reached Qian level, was using. Premier Shah, in theory, I can reach Qian level with the most basic red-grade techniques as long as I work hard, right? Hao Ren asked when they were out of the profound cultivation palace. In theory, Premier Shah froze for a moment before answering, I suppose so, 
but no one has ever reached Qian level by practicing only red grade techniques. The better the techniques, the greater the power they contain, and faster the cultivation will be. Looking back at the towering seven level pagoda, Hao Ren was amazed at the large collection of techniques the East Ocean Dragon Clan had gotten in the past thousands of years. An ordinary sect would be proud to have three to four cultivation techniques, but this dragon palace had a collection of hundreds of them. No wonder smaller dragon clans had to come here to borrow cultivation techniques. Premier Shah then took Hao Ren to the Godly Treasure Palace which had three levels, and each level was crammed with all kinds of Dharma treasures. The shining Dharma treasures were protected by their respective array formations. The Dharma treasures were roughly divided into three grades, upper grade, intermediate grade, and lower grade. This grading system was much simpler compared to the cultivation techniques. According to Premier Shah, the best Dharma treasure for a cultivator was the one most fitting for him or her. Since the East Ocean Dragon Clan only collected the good ones, Premier Shah offered, Fuma, if you like something, you can pick one. Access to the Dharma treasures is not strictly off limits as with the cultivation techniques. The East Ocean Dragon Clan has the best forge master who could make any Dharma treasures as long as you could provide the materials. Premier Shah stood taller with pride when he said that. Hao Ren was tempted since it was the only palace he had seen by now that was not off limits. He spotted a pretty heart shaped silver pendant. Won't it reflect badly on me if I give Zhao Yanzi this Dharma treasure as her birthday gift? It is technically from her home, Hao Ren thought. Noticing Hao Ren's interest in the pendant, Premier Shah took a step forward and suggested, This is a small scale spatial Dharma treasure which could store objects smaller than 2 meters tall. However, I don't think the shape will look good on you. Is it difficult to make? Hao Ren asked. It's a simple Dharma treasure that has little combat power. It gives you the convenience of carrying things around. This item here would be a better choice for you. Premier Shah explained patiently as he pointed at another Dharma treasure. Shall I give this to Su Han as a gift? Hao Ren hesitated and thought, she has done me many favors and tutored me with my cultivation. I will just tell her that this is a gift from the Dragon King. He made the decision and took two steps forward to pick up the pendant. Bing! A white flash of light bounced Hao Ren's hands away. Mount Tai Bracelets. Premier Shah was startled. You are wearing Inspector's Mountain Tai Bracelets? You can't take this pendant then since Mount Tai Bracelets rejects all Dharma treasures. Is the water repellent bead a Dharma treasure? Hao Ren asked. It's a bead with a special power. However, it is not good enough to be a Dharma treasure. Only those that could be controlled by Dharma spells are Dharma treasures. The pendant which caught your eyes needs a Dharma spell to open the small storage space inside, Premier Shah explained. Got it. Hao Ren replied. Su Han, Su Han, I meant to be nice and wanted to give you a gift. Well, I'd better work hard to reach Khan level as soon as possible so I could get rid of the chains on my wrists, he thought. Rubbing his sore wrists, Hao Ren had to give up on the Dharma treasure and walked out of the godly treasure palace. Hurriedly, Premier Shah followed him out and asked, Fuma, where do you want to go next? Shall I take you to the godly elixir palace for a tour? Let's go to the ice palace you just mentioned. Is it off limits? Not wanting to dampen Premier Shah's spirit, Hao Ren asked after some consideration. No, it is not. However, it's quite cold in there. You must activate your cultivation technique to keep warm, Premier Shah said. Okay, Hao Ren nodded and followed Premier Shah in another direction. On the way, Premier Shah said, Fuma, call me Hao Ren. I'm uncomfortable being called Fuma, Hao Ren interrupted him. I don't dare to cross the line. Then I, Premier Shah thought for a moment and asked, We'll call you Gongzi Hao, can I? All right. Hao Ren was exasperated. Anyway, it was better than being called Fuma. Gongzi Hao, Premier Shah said cautiously. Seeing Hao Ren was not displeased with it, he continued carefully. I heard that the mortal world is now full of houses built with stones, and they are hundreds of meters tall. Is that true? Hao Ren was puzzled for a moment before it dawned on him that Premier Shah was referring to the skyscrapers. He chuckled and replied, Yeah, people all live in the stone buildings now. And I heard that the mortals don't use carriages and horses anymore. Instead, they use iron and steel boxes which can move by themselves. Is that true? After some consideration, Premier Shah asked again cautiously. This time, Hao Ren couldn't help but laugh. Right, people are swallowed in there, 
and they are spat out when they reach their destination. Premier Shah raised his head and thought hard for a second. That must be some kinds of demon beast that have weak stomachs, he murmured. How Ren choked up with laughter. On a second thought, Premier Shah handled businesses all day long in the Dragon Palace and got all of his news from Elder Lu and Elder Sun it was a pitiful life. If Uncle Zhao, I mean the Dragon King, agrees, I will take you to the mortal world for a tour, Hao Ren said sympathetically. No, no, I have my duties here, Premier Shah waved his hand, but he was grateful to the young Fuma for the offer. After touring the Ice Palace, Fuma will go back. He is kind and amiable, very unusual, Premier Shah lamented silently and felt a bit reluctant about Hao Ren leaving. Chapter 86. Release. On the way to the Ice Palace with Premier Shah, Hao Ren thought for a while before asking, Premier Shah, was Zi very rebellious when she was little? Hearing the topic turning to Zhao Yanzi, Premier Shah answered respectfully, Little princess rarely comes to the Dragon Palace, and I don't see her often. Really? Hao Ren found it strange. Didn't Zi grow up in the Dragon Palace? He asked. Little princess was born on land and was under the guidance of Elder Sun and Elder Lu. I don't have the honor to see her often. So Zi grew up in the mortal world. She is only 15, and I guess Zhao Guang kept her on the land because he doesn't want her to be uninformed about the era like Premier Sha. At this thought, Hao Ren asked again, did Su Han grow up in the Dragon Palace? Fuma, Gongzi Hao, do you mean Su Han, the inspector? Premier Sha nodded and said, an elder of East Ocean adopted her, and this elder taught her cultivation techniques and nurtured her. She left the Dragon Palace when she was 15 years old. He added, Su Han has a rare metal water body type and is a cultivation genius that was rarely seen even in the past 1000 years. Her cultivation progress was so fast that she became a Kun level cultivator when she was only 15. After leaving the East Ocean Dragon Palace, she joined the system of inspectors and is now in charge of the East Ocean area. She doesn't come to the Dragon Palace often, does she? Hao Ren asked. Technically speaking, she is not a member of the East Ocean Dragon Clan, but she has the right to patrol the area as an inspector. However, due to her special relationship with the East Ocean Dagon Clan, she rarely interferes with our business and comes back occasionally to visit her master, Premier Shah answered. Metal water body type, I wonder what body type one have, Hao Ren asked. Gongzi Hao, you have a mortal body which is supposed to be a chaotic five-element body type, However, you have been cultivating the spirit concentration scroll for a while, and little princess's dragon core is inside your body. It should gradually turn into a smooth water body type, Premier Shah explained to him patiently. Compared with Su Han, is my body type inferior? Hao Ren continued to ask. He he, you are a mortal and thus have been born with a poor body type. However, you can't rush your cultivation, Premier Shah comforted him. This chapter's initial release occurred on the N0V3LB1N site. Hao Ren agreed silently. Su Han was born with a rare body type, and she has been cultivating very hard, which was why she had reached her current realm. As for me, I don't expect to be unrivaled. As long as I can save myself and protect the people close to me, I'm content, he thought. While they walked, their conversation centered on cultivation. Although Premier Shah's ideas about the mortal world were hundreds of years behind reality, he was a great cultivator. His patient explanations answered several questions Hao Ren had with the cultivation of the spirit concentration scroll. Fuma has quite a different personality compared to the little princess. He is smart, curious, calm, and not ashamed to ask questions, Premier Shah thought to himself while he answered Hao Ren's questions. They finally came to the Ice Palace. In fact, after the long walk and talking with Premier Shah, Hao Ren had lost interest in the Ice Palace. However, he didn't want to disappoint Premier Shah, so he followed the latter inside. The Ice Palace was also known as the Ice Warehouse which was a world of ice and snow. It was quiet and cold inside. While Hao Ren walked around in there, he wondered if some of the Dragon King's past concubines were locked in the Ice Palace one. Premier Shah, how come there are no maids here? Hao Ren asked. The maids used to serve the Dragon King, Dragon Queen, and the Princess. Since they all live on land now, we don't need maids here. The only females here are the families of the elders who live in the Dragon Palace, Premier Shah explained. Windless. The Ice Palace was a bitterly cold place of snow. 
How Ren circulated nature essence in his body according to the spirit concentration scroll to keep warm while he looked at the many natural treasures stored in huge ice blocks that were 2 to 3 meters high. Since he knew nothing about the natural treasures, he felt like a curious tourist. As he was walking in the ice palace, he spotted a set of beautiful ancient female clothes stored in one ice block. He was about to pass it when he sensed something unusual about it. He paused and looked again. This is, mustering his courage, how Ren asked Premier Shaw. She is an immortal maid sent from the above realm. It said that she came down to the mortal world without permission and was discovered by an inspector. She was sent to the Ice Palace in the East Ocean Dragon Palace for a 200-year imprisonment as a punishment, Premier Shaw said. While they were talking, a rustling sound came from behind the ice block near them. Who is it? Alarmed. How Ren, who had an excellent hearing, yelled immediately. A sad and timid looking girl appeared from behind a huge ice block. She kneeled in front of Premier Shaw and said, Greetings to Premier Shaw. She looked delicate and charming and was wearing a thin blue dress in this cold, snowy place. She is the younger sister of the immortal maid imprisoned in the ice block. She came to take care of her older sister, Premier Shaw whispered in How Ren's ear. How Ren looked at her and then at the girl in the ice block and found that they looked identical. More than 200 years? How Ren caught the keywords and asked, Does it mean that the punishment is over? I suppose so. But since we haven't received any new messages about it from the above realm, she is still imprisoned here. They were just two ordinary maids in the above realm. I guess no one recalls the 200 year punishment anymore. How Ren thought, There is another realm above the Dragon Palace? That is interesting. Since she has finished her time, why don't you release her? How Ren suggested. Since Fuma suggested it, I will send a message to the above realm in a couple of days. If they have no further instructions, I will release them, Premier Shah said. Hearing Premier Shah's words, the eyes of the girl, who was standing nearby, lit up. How Ren turned his head and glanced at her. He didn't know what to say, so he turned to the gate of the cold palace and suggested, well, I should head back now. I'll walk you to the Dragon King, Premier Shah followed him closely. He didn't care about the two immortal maids, but he would do it as a favor for Hao Ren. Is the above realm you mentioned the heavenly realm? Hao Ren asked Premier Shah as they walked out of the ice palace. The above realm refers to the cultivators living above the clouds. They are all powerful, but we dragon tribe have the numbers advantage. Overall, we are equal in terms of status. In the ancient times, there were heavenly immortals and earthly immortals. But now, all the earthly immortals had advanced into heavenly immortals and thus left all the earthly business to the dragon tribe, Premier Shah said. Hao Ren nodded and didn't follow that up with anything. When they returned to the main palace, Zhao Guang had finished his backlog of work and was having tea. Let's head back. Seeing Hao Ren returning with Premier Shah, Zhao Guang stood up and said. Chapter 87 Feudal struggles. I will walk your majesty and Fuma out. Premier Shah bowed and extended his hand outward. Go back and tell the elders not to come out to see us off, Zhao Guang said lightly. As you wish, your highness. But I must complete my duty, Premier Shah said while walking them out. He didn't stop until they were at the main gate of the Dragon Palace. I'll stop here. I wish your majesty and Fuma a safe journey. Hao Ren turned to face Premier Shah and replied, Premier Shah. Thank you for giving me the tour today. Goodbye. Goodbye? Premier Shah froze for a moment before he realized that the Fuma was saying farewell to him. He was so grateful for Hao Ren's simple farewell that he stared at Hao Ren and was at a loss for words. Follow me. Zhao Guang walked into the protection array formation and said, three to the left, one forward, six to the right. He started to give Hao Ren instructions again. Hurriedly, Hao Ren took out the water repellent bead and put it in his mouth. He followed Zhao Guang closely and cautiously. Standing at the gate of the palace, Premier Sha looked at the back of Hao Ren with tears in his eyes. What a virtuous, considerate, and kind Fuma. I wonder when I will see him again, he thought. In the vast ocean, Zhao Guang strolled forward while Hao Ren followed him anxiously as if he was in an English listening test for the college entrance examination. He was afraid of mishearing Zhao Guang's instructions and misstepping due to his nervousness. They continued to walk for more than 10 minutes before they were out of the array formation. Although Hao Ren had the water repellent bead in his mouth, his clothes were soaked, not by seawater but by his sweat. 
After they went back on land, Hao Ren spat out the bead and felt a bitter taste in his mouth. By now, the sky had turned dark, and the only illumination was the moonlight reflecting on the surface of the sea. Hao Ren took out his cell phone and saw it was already 10 o'clock. Although the legend said, one day in the Dragon Palace equals one year on land, it wasn't the case here. However, the time had indeed passed quickly. Zhao Guang went over to start his car, and Hao Ren cleaned the bead and said to him, Uncle, here's the bead you loaned me. You can keep it. Zhao Guang started the car and said, Get in the car. It's already late. You can stay the night at our home and go directly to school tomorrow. Considering that grandma and his parents had probably all gone to bed, Hao Ren nodded and replied, Thank you, uncle. What do you think of the trip? On the way back home, Zhao Guang asked Hao Ren. Very different from what I had imagined, Hao Ren answered. Hee hee. I go back to the Dragon Palace once every month to deal with the backlog of work. Today, I took you with me, so you could look around. Although we don't live there, the Dragon Palace is an important place for us, Zhao Guang said. Hao Ren nodded. He suddenly thought of the incident in the Ice Palace and asked, Today when I toured the Ice Palace with Premier Shah, I saw an immortal maid being imprisoned in an ice block. Did you know about it? I did. She is an immortal maid sent down from the above realm 200 years ago. Now that I think of it, the imprisonment time has come to an end by now. I asked Premier Shah to release her, Hao Ren said. To Hao Ren's surprise, Zhao Guang was calm. She is just an immortal maid who made a mistake. It is no big deal that we release her. After all, we can't imprison her in the Dragon Palace forever, he said. Zhao Guang wouldn't deny his son-in-law this little authority and didn't blame Hao Ren for his interference. Besides, he knew Premier Shah, a cautious man, would handle this issue well. Hao Ren was relieved because he had been afraid that Zhao Guang would scold him for deciding without consulting with him. The car drove steadily on the highway. Shortly after, they returned home. It was already 11 o'clock. Zhao Hongyu heard the car and came downstairs in her pajamas to greet them. You are back together. Are you hungry? She asked with concern. No, I'm not. Hao Ren shook his head and replied. Having eaten two small red fruits, he was still full. However, he felt a bit tired after walking around for a long time. I'm not hungry either. Let's call it a day. Zhao Guang took off his jacket and said tiredly. He had spent the whole day working in the Dragon Palace and was exhausted. Now, Hao Ren understood why Zhao Yanzi was not eager to go back to the Dragon Palace. After all, it was not a gigantic place, and it was always midnight when the trip ended. She didn't like that. You stay the night in Zi's room. I need to work on some of my designs tonight in the studio. Zhao Hongyu said to Hao Ren. Tonight, she had her hair up. Can I sleep in the room my grandma used? Hao Ren asked. Since your grandma won't come back soon, I sprayed some bug repellent in that room. It's not suitable for living right now, Zhao Hongyu explained with a smile. Then I, Hao Ren stopped speaking when Zhao Hongyu began to tug him upstairs. They stopped at Zhao Yanzi's door and knocked. Going to sleep now, Zhao Yanzi's yell came from inside the room. Naughty girl. Zhao Hongyu took out a key and unlocked the door. Sure enough, Zhao Yanzi, in her pink pajamas and a casual ponytail, was crouching in her chair playing games on the computer. She turned and was displeased at the sight of Hao Ren. Why are you here? She yelled. Ren will sleep in your room tonight. Stop playing games and go to bed now. Zhao Hongyu said as she dragged Hao Ren into the room. She took out beddings from the wardrobe and placed them on the rug before Zhao Yanzi's bed. Mom. Seeing her mom putting Hao Ren into her room for the night without consulting her, Zhao Yanzi yelled in protest. Don't yell. I need the studio in the attic tonight, and I sprayed bug repellent in grandma's room. Plus, the living room is too cold for sleeping. He has to stay in your room for the night. Ignoring Zhao Yanzi's protest, Zhao Hongyu spread out the bedding and said to Hao Ren, Ren, go to bed soon. Thank you, auntie, Hao Ren said sincerely. If Z disturbs your rest, come to me, with that, Zhao Hongyu walked out of the room and shut the door. You. The moment Zhao Hongyu left the room, Zhao Yanzi jumped from her chair and yelled, You did this on purpose. Hao Ren felt wronged since he had meant to stay the night in the room his grandma had used, and that was why he came back with Zhao Guang. He had not expected that the room grandma stayed in would be unavailable due to being sprayed with bug repellent. However, he didn't want to explain to Zhao Yanzi. 
After he unbuttoned his jacket, he walked toward the bathroom. Seeing his familiarity with her room, Zhao Yanzi was even angrier. I forbid you from living in my room, she yelled again. Go to bed early. Staying up late playing games and waking up late in the morning is bad for you. You have school tomorrow. Hao Ren turned and lectured her. You have no right to lecture me. Enraged, Zhao Yanzi picked up a pillow and threw it at Hao Ren. Chapter 88. Feudal fight Hao Ren caught the pillow. Instead of throwing it back to Zhao Yanzi, he took it with him into the bathroom. Hey! Zhao Yanzi yelled, but Hao Ren was already in the bathroom and had locked the door. In the bathroom, Hao Ren took off his clothes and hummed to himself while taking a shower. Hearing Hao Ren humming in the shower, Zhao Yanzi burned with rage. Hao Ren didn't mean to anger her. However, her unfriendly manner made him want to retaliate. After all, she had never uttered a thank you in the long period he had been tutoring her. The shower washed away his fatigue. After putting his clothes back on, he walked out of the bathroom and found Zhao Yanzi standing at the door. She was livid. I will go to bed now, Hao Ren said lightly. With the pillow in his hand, he walked sideways past her. Zhao Yanzi curled her lips furiously, looking like a little tiger that was about to attack. Hao Ren walked to the computer desk and put the pillow on the chair before crawling into the bedding at the foot of the bed. Click. Zhao Yanzi entered the bathroom before pulled the sliding door shut. The bedding was soft and warm. Hao Ren felt quite cozy in there after a day of walking. In the bathroom, the shower was turned on. Concealed behind the sliding door, the bathroom didn't have a frosted glass door so that nothing could be seen at all. Lying in the bedding on the floor, Hao Ren looked up at the blue ceiling decorated with stars and listened to the shower water in the bathroom. His thoughts were tangled and indistinct. Bang! The bathroom door opened, and Zhao Yanzi in her cute pajamas walked out. With her fragrance, soft skin, and damp black hair, she looked like a cupcake that had just come out of the oven. Since the day was warm, she was wearing a short-sleeved top and a pair of shorts, exposing her slim limbs. Seeing her coming out, Hao Ren didn't want to bicker with her, so he closed his eyes and pretended to be asleep. Thud! Thud! Zhao Yanzi walked toward her bed and was close to where Hao Ren was sleeping. Hao Ren regulated his breathing and pretended that he was buried in sleep. Then, he felt a soft foot stepping hard on his belly. Ach! Rubbing his belly, Hao Ren's eyes popped open. Pretending nothing had happened, Zhao Yanzi climbed onto her pink bed and into her soft quilt. Hao Ren decided to let it go, and he turned on his side. After half an hour, it was quiet in the room except for the humming sound of the air conditioner. Hao Ren had begun to doze off when he suddenly heard Zhao Yanzi getting out of the bed. Alarmed, he opened his eyes and observed her movements cautiously. She stood up from the bed. Her smooth and white legs were flawless. Seeing her walking on the rug barefooted, Hao Ren found it a little, sexy. Walking to the desk, she gulped down a glass of water. Afterward, she went back to her bed. Seeming to have sensed Hao Ren's eyes on her lower legs, Zhao Yanzi slowed her steps when she was about to step over Hao Ren. An exquisite jade-like small foot lowered slowly. Ouch! Hao Ren yelled again, bolding up. Sorry for stepping on you, with these casual words, she climbed back into her bed. Rubbing the crook of his left arm, Hao Ren considered confronting her. However, on the second thought, he decided not to, thinking it was futile to argue with a little girl. Zhao Yanzi slid under her quilt, and a word floated out of her mouth, pervert. Hao Ren couldn't bear it anymore. He turned to face her immediately and asked, Why did you call me a pervert? Zhao Yanzi snorted and rolled the quilt tightly around herself before turning to the wall, leaving the back of her head to Hao Ren. In the cocoon-like quilt, only her head and lower legs were exposed to enjoy the cold air from the air conditioner. It seemed to be her usual sleeping position. Looking at the round back of her head and the slim and white lower legs extending out from the quilt, Hao Ren thought, your legs are not so pretty after all. He didn't say it out loud since he knew her bad temper and didn't want to see her explode with rage. The room was quiet again except for the humming sounds of the air conditioner. Zhao Yanzi didn't turn off the lights. Apparently, she had a habit of sleeping with lights on. Hao Ren lay on his side and looked at the soft skin on her lower legs. It was the first time he had stayed in a girl's room, and he couldn't sleep. After a while, Zhao Yanzi suddenly turned around. 
Hao Ren closed his eyelid immediately and watched her movements through his squinted eyes. She glared at Hao Ren. After a moment of consideration, she poked out her leg and wanted to kick Hao Ren in the chest. However, Hao Ren was prepared. The moment her foot touched his chest, his hand shot out and caught it. It was slim and smooth like an eel. Hao Ren gripped her ankle and didn't let it go. Yu, Zhao Yanzi struggled futilely, and she flew into a rage. Jerk, she shouted. However, her shout sounded weak when her ankle in Hao Ren's firm grip. Hao Ren saw her face flush red and thought, Well, you tried to sneak attack me. Now, I just won't let go. What can you do? The more she struggled with her leg, the cuter she looked. Jerk. Let go. Seeing Hao Ren had no intention of letting go, she decided to act as the victim and yelled, Mom, he is bullying me. Help. While she yelled and struggled, she shook the bed and made it creak. The initial instance of this chapter being available happened at N0V3L. Bijane. Zhao Hongyu, who was drawing designs in the attic, heard the commotion in Zhao Yanzi's room. She shook her head in exasperation and continued working. Rape. Rape. Flustered and utterly frustrated, Zhao Yanzi yelled more blatant accusations. In the bedroom next to hers, Zhao Guang picked up the earplugs from the bedside table and plugged up his ears he turned and resumed sleeping. They didn't quiet down until 2 o'clock in the morning. When Zhao Hongyu opened the door and called them to breakfast the second day, she found Hao Ren sleeping on his back with rows of bite marks on his arm. Zhao Yanzi was also sound asleep with the quilt tugged tightly around her body. Her lower legs, sticking out of her quilt, were covered in long white socks. Zhao Hongyu couldn't help grinning at the scene and decided not to arrange them to sleep in the same room again in the future. Chapter 89. Meeting on a narrow path after breakfast, Zhao Guang drove Zhao Yanzi to school, and Zhao Hongyu drove her Ferrari to her office. Hao Ren declined their friendly offers and decided to take the bus to school. For one, his school was not on the way, and he didn't want Zhao Guang to detour. Secondly, the Ferrari would attract too much attention, so he didn't want to get a ride from Zhao Hongyu, either. On the bus, he rolled up his sleeves and studied the bite marks on his arm. He recalled the look on Zhao Yanzi's face when she finally freed her feet, jumped onto him, and showed her teeth while biting him frantically. Hao Ren found it aggravating and hilarious at the same time. When bus 767 stopped in front of the main entrance of the university, Hao Ren got off and headed towards the southern dormitory. At this exact hour, most students who had morning classes were crawling out of bed. As a result, the entire dorm building was filled with clanking noises made by the clashing of toothbrushes and mugs. As he was on his way to the dorm building number 7 and just when he was about to turn at a corner, he heard Ma Lina and Lu Yan's voices. Ma Lina and Lu Yan were in the same class as Hao Ren. In their conversation, Hao Ren seemed to hear them mentioning Xie Yujia. He looked around and found Ma Lina and Lu Yan on the other side of the road. They were walking towards the south gate while talking amongst themselves. They did not notice Hao Ren. Judging from the look of it, they planned to have an early breakfast, so they could get to class early and grab the seats they wanted. After obtaining a breakthrough to the second level of the spirit concentration scroll, Hao Ren's hearing had become sharper than ever. As he focused, he was able to hear their conversation. Xie Yujia has been close with Hao Ren lately. I bet that is because she thinks he's from an affluent family. Lu Yan asserted as she walked alongside Malina. That's nonsense. Xie Yujia is my roommate, and I know all about her. I don't think she is that kind of person. We used to stay up all night and chat. Even back then, she had often said that Hao Ren is a decent guy, Ma Lina clarified. Oh, so Xie Yujia has always had a crush on Hao Ren? Lu Yan became interested. Ma Lina shook her head and replied, not really. She was only saying that he is a good guy. I don't think she meant anything else besides that. Tisk, doesn't that prove what I just said? Lu Yan curled her lips and continued, she didn't like him before, but now, she knows that Hao Ren's family is rich, so she became close to him. Again, I don't think Xie Yujia is that kind of person, Ma Lina continued to defend Xie Yujia, besides, didn't Wang Jia and the others conclude that Hao Ren is only from an ordinary family after their investigation? The fancy cars that came to pick him up were all sent by the family of the pretty little girl whom he is tutoring. Wang Jia was the most excited when the Benz and the Lincoln showed up to pick up Hao Ren, and she kept saying that she was going to pursue him. Yet, 
After she found out that the cars did not belong to Hao Ren's family, she cooled down instantly, didn't she? After listening to their conversation, Hao Ren was able to have a glimpse of how he was seen in the girl's eyes. That's true, Lu Yan nodded, knowing the kind of girl Wang Jia is and how she made no moves after she found out about Hao Ren's real background. There is no reason for Xie Yujia to be oblivious to the fact that Hao Ren is from an ordinary family. Right, and I think Xie Yujia is a good person. The only thing is that she studies too hard and takes things too seriously, but she is definitely not the superficial type like Wang Jia. As they were talking, they had walked away. Even with Hao Ren's keen hearing, he could not make out what they were saying anymore. Xie Yujia is seen as superficial by some girls all because she has been close to me lately. I, people sure will talk, Hao Ren thought quietly. Looking at the time, Hao Ren realized that Xie Yujia might come out of the girl's dormitory and ride her bike to class at any moment. Hence, he sped up and entered his dorm building at once. He was afraid to run into Xie Yujia here and now. At this time, Zhao Jiayi and the other two were causing a commotion as they were freshening up by the sink in the public washroom. Hao Ren could hear their jeering from the staircase. These guys, Hao Ren went into their dorm room, grabbed his toothbrush and mug, and got into the washroom. Holy sh asterisk t, you just came in. We were hoping we could play cards together with you yesterday. Hao Ren's appearance caused them to make an even bigger uproar. Be honest, what did you do this weekend? Since your face is glowing, I bet you were with some pretty girls. With a towel on his shoulder, Zhou Liren walked over and wrapped his arm around Hao Ren's neck. Watching the noisy bunch fooling around, Hao Ren's mood was instantly lightened. If I told you guys that I went for a tour of the Dragon Palace on the weekend, I don't think you would believe me, Hao Ren thought to himself. After the four finished freshening up, they gathered their books and started walking down the stairs side by side. When they got out of the dorm building, they found Xie Yujia, who was in a relaxed plaid shirt, waiting outside. In her hands, there was an immaculately clean jacket, the one Hao Ren lent her on Friday. Thanks for the jacket on Friday. I've washed and dried it for you, she candidly stated as she walked up and handed the jacket to Hao Ren. Uh, oh. Standing next to Hao Ren, Zhou Liren began jeering untacked fully and had his mouth covered by Zhao Jiayi's hand immediately. However, it was enough for Xie Yujia to feel embarrassed. Blushed, she hopped onto her bike and paddled away. Xie Yujia is actually quite cute. Sao Rongwa concluded as they watched Xie Yujia disappeared into afar. Hao Ren was speechless as he held his jacket in hand. In truth, he had long forgotten about lending his jacket to Xie Yujia. Looks like you might have a chance, go for it, Zhao Jiayi said as he subtly elbowed Hao Ren. She was just here to return a jacket, is it really worth making a big fuss about? Hao Ren gave the others a hard stare and crisply put the jacket on. Come on. Let's go get food in the cafeteria, he said. Ren, since you seem to be having amazing luck with the ladies, breakfast should be on you. Zhou Liren shouted as he ran after Hao Ren. You bastard. All you ever think about is food. Fine, I will pay. Hao Ren responded loudly. After they finished eating, they went straight to class. At 10 o'clock, their morning class ended, and they had two hours in between until their next class which was to start at 12. The group was indecisive about how to spend their time. They were torn between going to the internet cafe or going back to the dorm to play cards. Since their lunchtime also needed to be taken into consideration, they found the two hours to be less than sufficient to travel back and forth. Apparently, the rock climbing club is very popular among girls, and they are all wearing attractive sportswear. The rock climbing club is recruiting today. I bet there will be a lot of beautiful girls joining. Why don't we go take a look? Zhou Liren suggested on a whim. Rock climbing? Isn't that Huang Zuji's turf? Zhao Jiayi said. What are you afraid of, Zhao Jiayi? Isn't your family so powerful that even the players on the basketball team had to offer you compensation and apologies? Let's go take a look. Huang Zuji won't dare to do anything to us, Zhou Liren insisted. Zhao Jiayi rolled his eyes at Zhou Liren's remark. After he thought about it, he agreed. All right, let's go check it out. Hopefully, it will be worth spending an hour there, so we can go for lunch by the time we come back. Ren, let's go together. Yeah, let's go. Hao Ren nodded. We are just going to take a look. Even if Huang Zuji is there in person, I don't think he'll cause a scene, Hao Ren thought. Let's not get you wrong and the others, just us four. 
Joe Liren said suggestively as if the more people he went with, the fewer glances he could steal from the pretty girls. As they finally settled on a decision, the four grabbed their belongings and hurried towards the sports stadium. When they arrived at the outdoor public square outside of the sports stadium, they found that there were already over 100 people swarming the area. Moreover, Yu Rong and the others were also in the crowd. They were standing on tiptoes and craning their necks forward. Damn, they came to see pretty girls without telling us, Zhou Liren exclaimed as he was irked by the sight of Yu Rong and the others. Zhou Liren's unabashed manner had made Hao Ren feel a loss for words. Brushing Hao Ren with his elbow while curling his lips, Zhao Jiayi signaled Hao Ren to pay attention to the other side of the crowd. As Hao Ren looked over to the hinted direction, he saw Xie Yujia, Ma Lina, and a few other girls in the crowd. At this time, Cao Ronghua pointed in a different direction while poking Hao Ren. Hao Ren turned and found that the strong-built giant like Xie Wanjun was also among the crowd. His height, which was over two meters, had made him stand out like a towering monument in the flood of people. Hao Ren felt a hint of contempt toward Xie Wanjun, who was usually extremely occupied, for showing up here. Hao Ren knew he was right about the fact that the basketball team and the rock climbing club were birds of the same flock. Now, Xie Yujia was glancing over at Hao Ren as she had also noticed his presence. Yet, when she saw that Hao Ren was staring straight at her older brother, her heart sank a little. Seeing that more and more students had finished class and were rushing to join the crowd from all directions, Huang Zuji spoke through a bullhorn while standing next to the rock climbing wall. Today is the recruitment day for the rock climbing club. Our club is the biggest club at East Ocean University and currently consists of over 300 male members and 200 female members. Those who have joined our club are all sports lovers. The rock climbing club not only provides indoor and outdoor training at the sports stadium but also sometimes organizes trips to the wild. In addition, the equipment that you purchase from us is guaranteed to be priced lower than those you will find in the sports shops out there. His voice was sonorous, and his tone was mild and gentle. Moreover, he was good-looking and confident. If one only knew him on the surface, they would surely take him as a polite, friendly, and poised senior student. However, Hao Ren knew very well how proud and arrogant Huang Zuji was and how he lost his temper when he lost the race to Hao Ren. Even though many uninformed junior students were tempted by the list of benefits the rock climbing club had promised, none had hastily gone over to sign up. Ha ha, there is no rush. We will first showcase our rock climbing club today. Huang Zuji handed the bullhorn over to a skinny, dark-skinned male student next to him while giving him a look. That guy held up the bullhorn and continued, I am Lu Bo, the assistant captain of the rock climbing club. Now, I will demonstrate to you some of the techniques required for rock climbing. Next, while holding the bullhorn, he began explaining and putting on the different types of gear needed for the climb. After, he moved to the bottom of the rock climbing wall and put down the bullhorn. He then raised the volume of his voice and used his limbs to demonstrate the proper climbing positions. Many of the students who had no experience with rock climbing became intrigued and were paying attention closely. However, Joe Liren was becoming impatient, where are the pretty girls, he murmured. Clap, 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 suddenly, Huang Zuji clapped his hands. Following his clapping, four beautiful girls who were wearing athletic gears came out from behind the rock climbing wall. Instantly, their elegant figures and charming faces had stunned and dazzled all the male students. Now, four of our members will take over and demonstrate the process of a climb to you. From start to finish, Huang Zuji picked up the bullhorn once again. As the beautiful girls appeared, everyone's eyes had lit up. At this time, Hao Ren discovered that Lin Li, who was wearing athletic wear, had also joined the rock climbing club. She joined, too, but that is no surprise. Since Lin Li is after Huang Zuji, it gives her more reasons to join the rock climbing club that is run by Huang Zuji. Likewise, Huang Zuji needs to pull in as many beautiful girls as possible to help him attract other students. There is no reason for him to reject her application, either, Hao Ren thought. On the rock climbing wall, the four beautiful girls utilized all of their bodies. After their safety was ensured by their harnesses and ropes, they grasped onto the colorful rocks and began moving up. Gradually, they had climbed up so high that the student audience had to stretch their necks considerably to see them. This is really nice. Admiring the display of the beautiful girls' youthful postures, 
Zhou Liren let out sighs of satisfaction as he eyed every inch of their bodies. Using beautiful girls as their marketing strategy, I wonder how many male students are going to fall for that, Hao Ren pondered as he observed the agile and athletic beauties. Chapter 90. Duel. One by one, the beautiful girls reached the top of the wall. Then, they descended by sliding down on the ropes. The exquisite curves of their bodies, their confidence, and their demeanors had convinced the girls that rock climbing could help them lose weight. Also, they made the guys believe that they could strengthen their bodies and have a chance with the beautiful girls in the club. The previously hesitant students had made up their minds and rushed to sign themselves up. Did they hire these girls from outside the school? Sao Rongwa was suspicious. Hao Ren shook his head as he disagreed. Although he disliked Huang Zuji, he believed that Huang Zuji could easily charm some beautiful girls into joining his club. After, four other beautiful girls appeared, climbed up the wall, and came down. Following that, another group of four did the same thing. With three rounds of sexy girls taking the stage, the male students surely had their eyes well feasted. Now that the girls had finished their performance, Huang Zuji arranged for their muscular male members to demonstrate accelerated rock climbing. Their vigorous postures and agile movements had further convinced their male audience that rock climbing could help them become sharp and robust. To join our club, you have first to pay a 200 yuan registration fee. After the orientation next week, you will join us for group training. Huang Zuji announced through the bullhorn while arranging other members to help students register. After signing up for his club, group training costs 100 yuan. Then, there is the official training where formal gears need to be purchased. It would further cost 200 to 300 yuan. If you decide to quit, the registration fee and training fee won't be refunded. Knowing the procedures involved, Zhao Jiayi quietly explained to Hao Ren. By such means, no wonder the rock climbing club has become the biggest club at East Ocean University, Hao Ren sneered. The money that they collected from their members would become funds for the senior members to go on the so-called trips and adventures. Apparently, this club's bullying behaviors had been reported to the school before. However, as Huang Zuji was the son of the deputy mayor and disputes involving clubs could get very complicated, the school wanted nothing to do with it. Seeing that the students who wanted to sign up were almost all registered, Huang Zuji wanted to attract more. He spoke through the bullhorn once again, since today is the recruitment day for our club, we would make an exception and allow students who are not members of our club to try climbing this wall. Normally, this wall is usually off limits to anyone outside the club. He added, of course, we are going to make it a little challenging. Only the 10-meter wall was used in the previous performances. If you would like to try the wall, you will have to climb this 15-meter wall. The first person to reach the top will be rewarded with this amazing set of gears. Huang Zuji pointed at the set of black sports gears of a famous brand that was placed neatly on the table behind him. The announcement had greatly excited the male students. Yet, no one was willing to be the first one to try. After all, a lot of female students were in the audience, and so many beautiful girls were present. Recklessly going forward might result in extreme embarrassment if they failed to perform. The 15-meter wall was the standard for rock climbing competitions. For people who had never been trained in rock climbing, it was impossible for them to obtain the reward. In addition, the holds from the bottom to the top were few and far between. Therefore, the difficulty level was incredibly high. Actually, Joe Liren wanted to try. Nonetheless, he knew that although he had a body that was tall and thick, it was still a body of a nerd. After careful consideration, he finally decided to give up. On the other hand, Zhao Jiayi, who had the best physique and was the most interested in sports of the four, had now become eager. At this time, Yu Rong and the others had noticed Zhao Jiayi. Seeing that Zhao Jiayi was full of excitement and was rubbing his hands together, they immediately began egging him on, Go, Zhao Jiayi. Since those guys were all good friends with Zhao Jiayi, they started jeering together. Feeling acclaimed by his friends, Zhao Jiayi could only step up and walk towards the wall. All right, let me try, he said. As Zhao Jiayi walked forward, Huang Zuji recognized him, he knew this guy was one of Hao Ren's friends and felt slightly agitated. Yet, he suppressed his negative feelings and pretended to be encouraging, great, let's applaud the courage of our first warrior. The crowd gave a round of scattered applause. In fact, the crowd was very skeptical about Zhao Jiayi reaching the top as he was not very tall. Promptly, Lu Bo, 
the assistant captain of the rock climbing club began helping Zhao Jiayi put on all the safety gears. Then, he guided him to the bottom of the 15-meter wall. In that instant, all eyes were on Zhao Jiayi. Standing there, Zhao Jiayi took a deep breath and looked up at the sparse-colored climbing holds. Then, he lifted his right foot and stepped onto the first hold while grabbing the other holds with both of his hands. He began ascending. You can do it, Zhao Jiayi. Yu Rong cheered loudly. Following Yu Rong, the other guys in their class also started yelling out random cheers. Soon, Zhao Jiayi had already climbed one-third of the wall and was five meters up on the wall. He turned and waved at Yu Rong and the others confidently. Yet, the most challenging part about rock climbing was that the higher on the wall, the more difficult it was. It was not only due to physical exhaustion but also the fact that the design and placement of the holds became very tricky as the climber got close to the top. As Zhao Jiayi was not tall nor had elongated limbs, and the holds were becoming farther and farther apart from one another, he was having problems grab onto them. Thump! Zhao Jiayi made a small jump in the air, grabbed onto a hold with his right hand and quickly moved his left foot to another hold. Phew, he hung onto the rock wall and let out a deep sigh of relief. By then, five minutes had passed. Hao Ren, Xie Yujia, and the others who were watching with their heads up were filled with worries. On the other hand, Huang Zuji, who was standing by the table, was shocked to see Zhao Jiayi, who had never received any systemic training, climb so high. He thought Zhao Jiayi must be a monster of some sort. Way to go, Zhao Jiayi. Originally, Yu Ron was hoping to see Zhao Jiayi fail so that he could tease him about it. But now, stretching his neck, he was just amazed at the fact that Zhao Jiayi had already climbed two-thirds of the wall. After briefly shaking his sore fingers and shoulders, Zhao Jiayi continued climbing up. Seeing that things were not going as he expected, Huang Zuji gave the assistant captain a meaningful glance. Now, Zhao Jiayi had climbed more than 10 meters high and had encountered a very challenging hold. Adjusting his breathing, he decided to try the same method, reaching the hold with the help of a small jump. Hao Ren also became nervous and was holding his breath. He always thought Zhao Jiayi was good at playing basketball but didn't know that he was gifted in other sports as well. Pop! Aiming right at the hold, Zhao Jiayi made his jump. Right at this moment, the rope that was hanging from the top of his head swayed a little. It was hard to maintain one's balance in midair in the first place and this slight sway had caused Zhao Jiayi to lose his balance completely. His right hand was able to reach the hold, but it was unable to sustain the grip. As a result, he instantly lost support and fell from the wall. Moreover, for whatever reason, the rope that was supposed to support the climber did not start pulling in time. Seeing that things were not going well, Hao Ren dashed out of the crowd and sprinted forwards like a cheetah. He threw himself over and reached out his arms, attempting to catch Zhao Jiayi. Thud. While Zhao Jiayi was losing his wits from the 10-meter free fall, the rope that was attached to his harness finally began pulling. Even so, Zhao Jiayi was still falling. Right before he fell into Hao Ren's arms, the rope finally stabilized and reduced most of the impact from the fall. Dragging the rope, Zhao Jiayi was now standing on the ground, and his face was ghastly pale. Likewise, Xie Yujia who was at the front of the crowd and had witnessed the whole course of Zhao Jiayi's climb closely was covered with cold sweat. She was trying to calm her heart by placing her hands over it. With his eyesight sharper than ever, Hao Ren noticed the unusual movement of the rope, he knew something was wrong. Others might not be able to tell and thought that the rope was swaying because Zhao Jiayi had made a jump, but Hao Ren knew very well that the rope was tampered with. However, he had no evidence to prove it. Letting go of his arms which were supporting Zhao Jiayi's shoulders, Hao Ren turned to Huang Zuji. With rage fueling in his eyes, he raised his arm and declared, You, let's have a match. Chapter 91. Conquer 15 meters if you are a man, oh? Huang Zuji pretended to be surprised, do you want to compete with me? Everyone else, including the members of the rock climbing club and the crowd, were all astonished when Hao Ren issued the challenge. Hao Ren didn't say anything else, he just stared at Huang Zuji. Lu Bo, get him set up. Huang Zuji clenched his fists and said, If you want to play, I will play with you. Lu Bo, the assistant captain of the rock climbing club, put the harness on Hao Ren. Although Hao Ren challenged their captain, Lu Bo was careful with the safety preparation since it was a matter of life and death. 
With an angry expression, Hao Ren spread his arms for the harness silently. On the other side, several pretty girls from the club surrounded Huang Zuji and put the harness on him. That scene aroused jealousy in Zhou Liren. Xie Yujia, who was standing in the crowd, hesitated for several seconds before walking over. Hao Ren, don't compete with him, it is too dangerous, she said. Class president, don't worry. I'll be fine, seeing Xie Yujia's frown of concern, Hao Ren reassured her. Rock climbing is a dangerous sport. Since you never practiced before, you will put yourself in danger if you act rashly, Xie Yujia tried to dissuade him while shaking her head. She was concerned not only because Hao Ren was her classmate, but also. Xie Yujia, don't interfere. If his mental state is disturbed, there will be a higher probability of accidents occurring. If that happens, you may need the responsibility for the accident, Huang Zuji said to Xie Yujia while he buckled up his harness. His words sounded well-intentioned, but they made Xie Yujia more worried. She glanced at Hao Ren in concern and looked back at Yu Rong and his buddies, wishing they would join her efforts. But the truth was, the guys would never issue a challenge and then back out in fear. It would be too shameful for a man. Class president, just watch. I'll be fine. Hao Ren was moved by Xie Yujia's concern for him, but he wasn't going to quit. He was still burning with rage. Feeling resigned, Xie Yujia looked back at Xie Wanjun who towered over the crowd. At the moment, her brother was watching the whole thing with an emotionless expression in silence. The competition is about to begin. For safety reasons, everyone, please watch it from the outside of the site. Lu Bo walked over and ushered Xie Yujia out. Three belayers held Huang Zuji's safety rope, and Hao Ren got the same treatment. The competition was about to begin when Yu Rong suddenly rushed into the site and said, We will act as the belayers, we don't trust you guys. Yu Rong was quite influential among the guys. Several other buddies of Hao Ren followed suit and rushed in. After witnessing Zhao Jiayi's failure a moment ago, they lost trust in the members of the rock climbing club. They'd rather keep the rope in their own hands. Lu Bo had no choice but to walk over and show them how to control the rope and what to do when the climber falls. Finally, Yu Rong, Zhou Liren, and Huang Jianfeng who were the strongest among them were left on sight to be Hao Ren's belayers while the rest were asked to watch outside. Then, Lu Bo walked to the rock climbing wall and raised his watch. Ready, go, he shouted. Hao Ren and Huang Zuji put their hands on the rock climbing wall at the same time and began climbing. In fact, with this level of rock climbing, a few seconds of difference at the beginning was not a big issue. The critical point was who could make it to the summit. Even if the competitors could all reach the top, there would be a difference of minutes between the first and the second place. On the 15-meter rock climbing wall, Hao Ren to the left of Huang Zuji, and they each chose their own route. Huang Zuji was very deft and climbed three meters shortly. Although the positions of the holds were changing due to different levels in difficulty, he, as the captain of the rock climbing club, was quite familiar with these holds and knew the best route to the top. He was wearing an orange mesh vest which exposed his chiseled muscles, and the girls watching shrieked at the sight. In contrast, Hao Ren was climbing steadily with his hands and feet tightly positioned on the holds firmly. He wasn't dressed professionally like Huang Zuji but his steadiness and smart route choice made the students who didn't know him admire him a little. Who's this guy? He is quite bold to challenge the captain of the rock climbing club. He is the buddy of the guy who just fell. I guess he is doing this for his buddy. How can he defeat Huang Zuji who is the best climber in the rock climbing club? Don't you know that he is the guy who defeated Huang Zuji in the long distance race in the school's athletic games? The students in the crowd began to talk among themselves. Hearing the comments around her, Xie Yujia was so nervous as she observed Hao Ren that her fingernails cut into her palms, and her heart was in her throat. By now, Huang Zuji had climbed half of the distance while Hao Ren was only half a meter below him. Huang Zuji had slowed down. After each step, he would pause to rest for several seconds while leaning against the wall. In a rock climbing race of this level, one needed steadiness, excellent techniques, and sound mental fitness to reach the summit. Hao Ren continued climbing steadily, he would calculate his route before making several moves. This guy's stamina is terrifyingly good, Huang Zuji thought as he looked down at Hao Ren who was only half a meter lower than him. From a professional viewpoint, Hao Ren's choices of holds were not excellent. 
They were energy consuming and challenging to reach. Despite that, Hao Ren was still closely following him. Hao Ren is really a monster. Huang Zuji's face turned grim at the thought. Looking up at the remaining 8 meters, he inhaled deeply and resumed climbing cautiously. If he made a mistake and fell, the lucky second year would win the competition. He had just grabbed another hold above him when Hao Ren suddenly signaled to his belayers that he was going down. He has finally exhausted his strength. Huang Zuji was pleased when he saw that. He silently mocked, Well, you are just average. Even though you were lucky enough to win against me in the long distance race, there's no way you can beat me in rock climbing. Seeing Hao Ren's hand gesture, Yu Rong and the other two belayers immediately slacked the rope and put Hao Ren down. I'm not finished. You go on climbing, back on the ground. Hao Ren raised his head and yelled when he saw Huang Zuji's belayers also wanted to loosen the rope. Huang Zuji froze in surprise and thought, What the hell is this guy doing? Hao Ren murmured some words and took the silver bracelets off his wrists. He bent down and put them on the ground. Carrying 50 kilograms on his arms while rock climbing was not an easy task. Besides, due to his bad mood, the burden on his arms seemed to have grown another 50 kilograms. As he swung his arms to relieve the tension, Hao Ren walked toward the wall once again. Chapter 92 The winner and the loser seeing Hao Ren getting down and preparing to go back up again. Xie Yujia couldn't bear it anymore. She walked out of the crowd again and said, Hao Ren, don't. Class president, I will be fine. The bracelets kept bumping into me, and I just have to take them off. Hao Ren smiled at her. Then, he took off his jacket and placed it in Xie Yujia's hands before turning to face the wall. He was up half a meter instantly. Xie Yujia was worried, but she knew she couldn't stop Hao Ren. Anxiously, she urged Yu Rong and the other two belayers, you must hold the rope tight. You can't let him fall. Towering over the crowd, Xie Wanjun noted his sister's anxious expression. He then lowered his head and buried himself in deep thoughts. In the blink of an eye, Hao Ren was two meters up. He took the same route but had a faster speed. Everyone attributed his faster speed to his experience which saved him the time of thinking. No one knew that he had been climbing while carrying 100 kilograms on his arms. Huang Zuji looked down and saw Hao Ren climbing up again. He was both surprised and contemptuous. Idiot! Do you think your strength is inexhaustible? You will be grateful if you can cover half the height you did the last time, he thought. He turned to look at the girls who were looking up at him in admiration, and he put more strength in his grips and thought, well, I'll show you the strength of the captain of the rock climbing club. While all that was going on Huang Zuji's head, Hao Ren was climbing up steadily, trying not to make mistakes. Ten minutes later, he was back at the same spot where he was last time. Meanwhile, Huang Zuji had just climbed up another three meters. The higher he climbed, the more difficult it got. The holds were sparsely positioned and thus were difficult to reach and grip. When Hao Ren was halfway up the first time, he had felt the sudden increase of difficulty and that was why he decided to go back down to take off the Mount Tai bracelets. The three meters Huang Zuji had covered were difficult, but the toughest part was the last three meters near the summit. Hao Ren inhaled deeply, looked up at the uneven and protruding rock wall and the randomly placed colorful holds, and reached out his hand. After he grasped one hold, he tried to pull himself up. Seeing Hao Ren gaining on him, Huang Zuji panicked slightly. He was horrified by Hao Ren's enormous strength. If he had known that Hao Ren had been previously climbing with 100 extra kilograms, he would have fallen with astonishment. Hao Ren was more cautious now. The last 6 meters required not only strength but technique as well. Everyone on the ground was watching the competition with their hearts in their throats. Even the emotionless Xie Wanjun was focusing his attention on the race happening on the 15 meter rock climbing wall. Hao Ren was gaining on Huang Zuji. His acute hearing picked up Huang Zuji's panting even though this guy was showing everyone his confident smile as if reaching the summit was just a piece of cake. Hao Ren looked up at the two holds above his head, not sure how to get to them. If he let go of one of his hands now, he would lose balance and fall backward. After all, the upper end of the rock wall had been designed to have a negative slope. Whatever. Hao Ren gritted his teeth, no longer caring about how Huang Zuji was planning to climb this part of the wall. He let go of one hand and immediately reached for another hold above him. Sure enough, the gravity pulled him down. 
his whole body fell backward, and his feet could no longer touch the rock wall. He was suddenly in the air. Oh! The students on the ground all exclaimed in fear. Even with the safety rope, the precarious position over 10 meters in the air was frightening to look at. Yu Rong and the other two belayers gasped and tightened their grip on the rope with all their strength. To their astonishment, with just one of his hands on a hold, Hao Ren dangled in the air. He didn't fall and didn't run out of strength. Xie Wanjin's eyes lit up at this scene. He's finished. Yeah. There's no way that he can go up. He can't hold it any longer. He will fall very soon. With all his weight on his fingers, he can only last a few seconds. While people were talking among themselves, Hao Ren suddenly bent his arm and began to pull himself up. The students watching gasped in astonishment. When he pulled himself up to the limit with one arm, Hao Ren abruptly reached for a higher hold with the other hand. Wow! There was another wave of gasps. With both feet in the air, he climbed up with the sole strength of his upper body, one hold after another. No one made a sound because they were all stunned. What terrifying strength he has! He is pulling himself up with only his fingers and single arms, they thought to themselves. After covering the portion of the wall which had a negative slope, Hao Ren was now at the same height as Huang Zuji. Hao Ren was wearing a cheap white vest, and his muscles that were exposed were not sun-tanned or strong-looking. But in the eyes of Yu Rong and the other students on the ground, he looked as dashing as a god coming down to the mortal world. In the crowd, Xie Yujia also gasped in surprise with Hao Ren's jacket in her hands. Huang Zuji was in a real panic now. Seeing that Hao Ren had caught up with him, he looked up at the hold above him and inhaled deeply before reaching up for it. It didn't matter how hard he tried, he couldn't change the fact that Hao Ren went down and had caught up with him. In people's eyes, Hao Ren was already the winner. Even if he could reach the summit before Hao Ren, it only meant that he was more skilled. Hao Ren was the one who had greater strength. The girls who had been looking up at Huang Zuji starry-eyed were all talking about the previously unknown Hao Ren. The steady and tense competition between the two rivals continued. Huang Zuji was astonished. But as a professional rock climber, he kept his emotions in control and his movements steady. In a rock climbing competition, no one was the winner until the last moment. Even if a climber was inches away from the top, he or she would fail immediately if the grip got loose and a mistake was made. At the moment, the two were so close that they could hear each other's loud heartbeats. Sweat drops flowed down from their arms and faces and fell to the ground more than 10 meters below them, shattering into pieces. If I win, you must explain to the freshmen how the rock climbing club charges its members, Hao Ren said coldly while glancing at Huang Zuji. Save your breath until you can beat me, Huang Zuji glared at Hao Ren and replied as he reached for a higher hold while spreading his limbs to their limits. Only highly skilled rock climbers could accomplish this spider-shaped movement. On the ground, Yu Rong and the others gradually calmed down from their earlier excitement. The last meter until the summit was the most challenging part. Standing far below, they had a clear view of the last few holds which were more than half a meter from each other. Without leaping, the climbers couldn't reach any of them. However, leaping was a highly risky move during which the climbers could fall from the wall at the smallest mistake. Huang Zuji knew the difficulty in the last meter well. It was a thin line between success and failure. He gulped, hesitating about the leap. On the one hand, Hao Ren was already kind of the winner in people's eyes when he caught up with Huang Zuji after going down, and Huang Zuji had to reach the summit to win back his honor. On the other hand, Huang Zuji was not absolutely sure if he could conquer the last meter. He had only a 50% success rate even during normal practice. Now, he berated himself for setting the difficulty level to the highest to prevent anyone from reaching the summit and getting the prize. While he was weighing his options, Hao Ren measured the distance with his eyes and leapt up. It seemed that time had stopped when he leapt. Everyone looked at Hao Ren who leapt into the air by kicking on two holds. Silhouetted against the blue sky, Hao Ren looked like he was flying while the wind fluttered his white vest. Of course, it was people's illusion. Hao Ren just leapt half a meter into the air with his body free of the support from the wall. Yu Rong and the other two belayers held the rope anxiously with sweaty hands. Slap! Hao Ren landed on the rock wall with one hand gripping one hold and one foot stepping on another. When everyone heaved a sigh of relief, Hao Ren, who had gripped only two holds instead of three, began to swing. Oh! 
Everyone gasped due to fear. It seemed that the audience's mouths and voices were no longer under their control. Putting more strength in his fingers and gripping the hold tightly, Hao Ren stabilized his body. Putting his free foot onto a pocket in the wall, he leaned closely against it. Hao Ren heaved a sigh of relief. He let go of one hand and reached up to grip another hold. The most challenging part was over, and he would reach the summit after two easy steps. Red-eyed, Huang Zuji lost his composure. Taking two deep breaths, he also leapt up for a hold above him. Slap. His hand grabbed the hold. Yes, the members of the rock climbing club, who had been holding back for the past ten minutes, cheered. While they cheered, Huang Zuji's arm couldn't support his weight, and his hand slipped. He fell from the position near the summit that was more than ten meters in the air. The three belayers immediately tightened their grip on the rope and controlled Huang Zuji's fall. Meanwhile, Hao Ren took the last two steps and reached the summit successfully. Wow! The cheers exploded from the crowd on the ground. Looking around at the students who were cheering in excitement, Zhao Jiayi had a feeling that the legend of Hao Ren would soon spread all over the school. Hao Ren waved his hand and descended slowly with the help from the rope. Huang Zuji had already reached the ground, and his face was purple with rage. It was obvious who the winner was and who the loser was. Xie Wanjun, who had been emotionless during the whole competition, grinned suddenly. No wonder this guy could beat half of the basketball team, he thought. Chapter 93. Wrecked the place Hao Ren, who was taking off the harness, didn't notice Xie Wanjun's expression amongst the crowd. He slowly walked to Huang Zuji and pointed his finger at the white speakerphone by the table. We just agreed on, he started to speak. When did we agree on anything? Huang Zuji stared at Hao Ren with a look so cold that it could cut through human bodies. Hao Ren embarrassed him twice in front of so many people. Therefore, Huang Zuji, who valued his reputation a lot, would be willing to die if he could cut Hao Ren into 18 pieces now. Xie Yujia saw that Hao Ren was walking to Huang Zuji and thought they were going to fight. Therefore, she hastily ran over to Hao Ren with his jacket still in her hands. Xie Wanjun was just about to leave, and he stopped as he noticed the change in the situation. Hao Ren's safety was nothing to him, but he couldn't leave his sister behind. Huang Zuji's anger decreased by half when he saw Xie Yujia, especially when he noticed Xie Wanjun, who stood out from the crowd, staring at him. He didn't dare to make any impulsive moves. At least he dared not yell at Xie Yujia. Maybe others were not aware of Xie Yujia's status. He is one of the influential person in school knew exactly what her background was. No one at school dared to get in her brother, Xie Wanjin's way. Even Lin Li, who considered herself to be the most popular girl in the school and didn't care about other girls' existence, would keep some distance from Xie Yujia. It was because she learned from Huang Zuji that Xie Yujia's older brother was Xie Wanjun, the captain of the school basketball team. What's the matter? Xie Yujia asked Huang Zuji when she saw Hao Ren's slightly irritated expression. She and Huang Zuji kind of knew each other since they were both a part of the student council. Your classmate isn't satisfied with the prizes he won. He is also trying to interfere with my club's management. Huang Zuji tried hard to suppress his anger and said in an upset tone. I don't care about the prize. However, you need to clarify your club's charges to the freshmen, Hao Ren said to him lightly. The crowd circled the three as they saw the conflict between Hao Ren and Huang Zuji after the match. What charges? It's 200 yuan to enroll, Huang Zuji insisted when he saw more people getting closer. All right, I'll say it if you won't. Hao Ren nodded as he walked to the table to grab the bullhorn. Shu. Huang Zuji reached out his arm in anger and tried to stop Hao Ren. Pa. Hao Ren was equally upset. He pushed away Huang Zuji's arm without hesitation. Even though Huang Zuji was strong, his strength was nothing compared to Hao Ren's. After all, Hao Ren had to carry 100 kilograms around on his wrists every day. Huang Zuji immediately got pushed aside, and he almost fell. Hao Ren quickly picked up the bullhorn, turned it on, and said to the crowd, Whoever is considering joining the rock climbing club, listen carefully. The fee you are paying today is only the enrollment fee, and it does not include the fee you have to pay a week later. Not only that, the training and equipment will be an extra charge as well. I thought the 200 yuan would cover everything. We have to buy our own equipment. I thought the club is going to provide it for us. 
Sure enough, those who just registered and those who were going to register started to discuss. It's none of your business, Huang Zuji dashed over. He whipped out his fist and aimed it at Hao Ren's forehead. However, it was stopped by a giant hand. He turned back and saw Xie Wanjun staring at him angrily from above with eyes wide open. Xie Wanjun was grasping onto his arm with the palm that was twice the size of an average person. Brother Jun, he injured your basketball team members, and you are still helping him? Huang Zuji took his arm back as he asked. That's between him and me, and I'll deal with that later. I'm not happy with you charging students with all these extra fees as well, Xie Wanjun said. This was the first time Hao Ren heard Xie Wanjun talk and looked at him from such a close distance. Xie Wanjun's deep voice had an overwhelming sense of power, and those who didn't obey would be playing with fire. I don't want to join this rock climbing club anymore. Can I get a refund? A freshman asked Hao Ren timidly. Ask him. Hao Ren pointed at Lu Bo, who was the assistant captain of the club. Lu Bo could do nothing but nod at this moment. Then, a couple of students who had just registered for the club got their refund one by one. They thought the enrollment fee was all it took to attend the rock climbing club and had no idea that there would be a large number of charges to follow. An official set of rock climbing equipment, for example, would cost thousands. Not a lot of students could afford that. It's almost time. Let's get back to class, Hao Ren said after the issue had been taken care of as he wiped off the sweat on his forehead. Okay, let's go. Zhao Jiayi was glad to see Hao Ren venting his anger, and he didn't want to stick around any longer after this was done. Hao Ren glimpsed at Huang Zuji, who was so upset that his eyes turned red, and ignored him. He simply took his jacket from Xie Yujia and walked out of there. Hey, you forgot your prize, Xie Wanjun said in his deep voice. He grasped the set of black equipment and threw it at Hao Ren. Hao Ren caught it in his hands and tossed it into the air twice. Then, he threw it back to Xie Wanjun and said, I don't need it. Xie Wanjun was over two meters tall and was strong like a bull. He was forced back half a step by the 50-pound equipment that was thrown to him. He thought to himself, this guy has pretty strong arm strength. Hao Ren. Xie Yujia jogged over to catch up with him. What's the matter, class president? Hao Ren turned around reluctantly. This class president was perfect besides her interest in controlling too many things. If she was like this already, she would definitely be a strict wife after she gets married. However, she was very nice to all her classmates. You forgot these bracelets, she handed them over to Hao Ren. Hao Ren then suddenly remembered the Mount Tai bracelets he just left beside the wall. Hao Ren quickly took them from her smooth hands and put them on his wrists. If I had forgotten these bracelets and had lost them, Hao Ren shivered as he thought of the necklace around his neck. Although he had never tasted the feeling of the tightening necklace, he knew it wouldn't be the best feeling in the world. It was from Su Han after all, and it was no cheap Dharma treasure. She would never leave a life behind if she had decided to kill. That was her personality. Thank you, class president. Hao Ren thanked her sincerely this time. Xie Yujia noticed how much Hao Ren valued these seemingly ordinary bracelets, and she also caught him subconsciously touching the silver necklace. Then, she realized that the bracelets and the necklace seemed like a set. Are these gifts from Su Han as well? Xie Yujia thought to herself. Class president, you must have class in the afternoon too. Go get some lunch before it's too late. Hao Ren laughed happily and said to her. Afterward, he walked away with his arm around Zhao Jiayi's neck. Xie Yujia looked at Hao Ren as he walked off. She wondered if his girlfriend was really Su Han. She didn't come to herself until Ma Lina came over and nudged her. Chapter 94. Nemesis the guys kept chatting on the way to the cafeteria. That was awesome. Did you see Huang Zuji's face, Ren? It was so awful that it looked like he was taking a poop. Zhao Jiayi shouted in excitement as he walked. Damn it, man. We are going to eat soon. Maybe don't talk about poop right now. Sao Ronghua shouted. But it was really awesome. Zhao Jiayi kept making crazy hand gestures as he talked. I still remember how arrogant that guy was when we saw him at Hongji Square last time. But today, he didn't even dare to make a sound when those students were asking for a refund. Hao Ren simply smiled. Although he felt good too, he was not as excited as Zhao Jiayi. Since they played tricks on Zhao Jiayi to make him fall, it could have been a severe accident. If Zhao Jiayi fell on his own, 
how Ren wouldn't take this opportunity to interfere with the excessive fees charged by the rock climbing club. He certainly knew that Xie Wanjin's presence was also the reason why Huang Zuji turned quiet. Huang Zuji had to swallow it because even Xie Wanjun wasn't happy about all the hidden fees in the rock climbing club. Ren, you are pretty awesome at rock climbing. Have you practiced before? Zhou Liren interrupted. Practice my asterisk SS. I have only seen it on TV. How Ren answered. However, he remembered that when he was little and stayed at his grandma's, he had rebelliously climbed onto the fences and the trees thousands of times. Those single arm swings were amazing, Zhou Liren shouted. How Ren broke out in cold sweat. His random moves on the rock climbing wall even got a professional name from Zhou Liren. While chatting, they arrived at the cafeteria. After lunch, they headed to class. The news about the rock climbing competition where Hao Ren defeated Huang Zuji has been passed around in the school, and the students had been crazily spreading the video of Hao Ren's last moves where he did consecutive pull-ups with single arms while his feet were free in the air before jumping into the air to grasp the holds far above him. That guy behind us, in the second last row, the one in the black shirt. That's him, king of the air. Even during the class, many students turned back to check Hao Ren out. Great reputation travels far, Zhou Liren sighed as he tried his best to think of a proper saying. It wasn't easy for him since his grades were the worst amongst them. Hao Ren had no time to deal with those remarks. He was focused on preparing his tutoring material, and he wondered how Zhao Yanzi did on her midterms. Ring. The bell rang. After two hours of sitting, students rushed out of the classroom. A few girls were still checking Hao Ren out as they walked out and some of whom were beautiful young girls in their freshman year. You are famous now, Ren. Some of the pretty girls might want to become your girlfriend, Zhou Liren said jealously. As they spoke, a pretty girl who was well-dressed walked up to Hao Ren and handed him a note. This is my number in case you want to talk sometime. I think you are pretty cool. I'm a first year in the business major by the way, she said. After that, she headed for the door, leaving them a beautifully shaped figure to look at shortly. She whispered to another girl curiously, How did I do? How did I do? Whoa! Zhou Liren and the guys kicked up a fuss as they had never seen something like this. Hao Ren coughed as he opened up the note. Then, he rolled it up and threw it into the trash can in front of them. Zhou Liren didn't expect that. He shouted immediately, What are you doing throwing it away? She is such a pretty girl. Plus, she is so proactive. Hao Ren waved and said in annoyance, All right, all right. Let's go already. Joe Liren took another look at the trash can reluctantly. He was struggling against the thought of picking the note back up. However, there were sticky leftover fruits in there which stopped him from going through the garbage for the pretty girl's number. If it was before, Hao Ren would probably find it interesting and get worked up and excited. He would have opened up his phone and messaged her right away. However, as popular as he was now, Hao Ren found it annoying since so many students were interested in getting to know him. He wasn't Huang Zuji who sought attention after all. Do you really have a girlfriend now? Zhou Liren caught up with him and asked. You are getting more and more annoying. I'll just give all the notes to you to deal with in the future, all right? Hao Ren looked at him, speechless. That's good. That's good. Zhou Liren kept on nodding. I'll be your agent, and whoever wants to date you will have to date me first. Shameless. Hao Ren, Zhao Jiayi, and Cao Ronghua hit him in the face at the same time. But I do think you and Xie Yujia would be a good match. Plus, you're from the same class and know each other pretty well already. We can tell that she cares a lot about you, Zhao Jiayi said to Hao Ren. How can you guess our class president's thoughts? Hao Ren said. In fact, Xie Yujia was also worried when Zhao Jiayi was climbing. Whoa, so our Ren does like class president, Cao Ronghua cried out. Hao Ren shook his head. He didn't want to argue with them. These guys did no good yet they were pretty good at ruining things. If they hadn't gone confessing Hao Ren's love for Xie Yujia without permission a while ago, the relationship between them wouldn't have been so weird lately. These days, their relationship had just been getting a little better. Hao Ren didn't want Zhao Jiayi and the guys to mess it up again. Hao Ren had more respect than the fondness for Xie Yujia. She was a charming girl, and her excellent grades and outstanding abilities made her stand out. With all these great traits, she also demonstrated the cute side of her personality such as Singh. All these made her destined to become a goddess in all the guy's eyes. 
Zhao Jiayi changed the topic when he realized how Ren didn't want to talk about it anymore. It's still early. Let's go play basketball, he yelled. Although he failed at rock climbing, his obsession with sports was awoken. How Ren didn't tell Zhao Jiayi that he might have succeeded in rock climbing if the members of the rock climbing club hadn't messed with the equipment. He knew it would only make Zhao Jiayi more depressed. Come along, Ren. Zhao Jiayi dragged his arm. I can't play basketball. How Ren shook his head. You only need to know how to pass, dribble, and shoot the ball. Zhao Jiayi knocked hard on Hao Ren's shoulder with his fist, dissatisfied. All right, let's go. Hao Ren agreed to go with them at last. He felt bad for not hanging out with them enough lately because of cultivation and tutoring. Zhao Jiayi's execution ability was really worth mentioning. On the one hand, he immediately called up Yu Rong and some other guys and told them to bring a basketball from the dorm. On the other hand, he quickly booked a basketball court with Hao Ren and the other two. The guys gathered at the court at the same time. The school made a rule for the basketball team after the incident last time. Thus, one could rarely see them practicing on the courts outside. In addition, since they were to play against Jinghua University next week, they had to train even more intensively due to the loss of a few of their starting players. The rock climbing club's registration desk had disappeared from outside of the stadium. Their new member welcoming activities used to go on for an entire day, but all the desks and chairs were nowhere to be found. How Ren could imagine how mad Huang Zuji must be after he returned to the club. He must have thrown a tantrum at his members in the club. It wasn't his first time going against Huang Zuji anyways, so how Ren wasn't worried about how Huang Zuji would seek revenge on him. Instead, he focused on playing basketball with the guys. They played four against four on the half court, Zhao Jiayi's dorm against Yu Rong's dorm. Basketball wasn't really Hao Ren's strong suit. Basically, he would pass the ball whenever he got it, and he would shoot it at the basket when he couldn't pass it since he didn't know how to dribble properly. He would score if he was lucky. If not, the rebound would be secured by Zhou Liren with his height advantage or Zhao Jiayi with his excellent leaping ability. Don't just pass it, Ren. Dribble and move around. Zhao Jiayi yelled after securing six rebounds. He was out of breath. I don't want to be caught traveling. Damn. Hao Ren answered as he bounced the ball like an elementary schooler. Zhao Jiayi rolled his eyes speechlessly, but he had to admit that Hao Ren had a pretty good sense of positioning when he didn't have the ball. Zhao Jiayi always had a chance to throw the ball at Hao Ren for him to shoot. However, the accuracy of Hao Ren's shots wasn't that good. They were mostly air balls, and he got the backboard or the basket a few times. Zhou Liren had to tackle the ball and rebound using his height advantage. Although Sao Ronghua wasn't bad at aiming, his skinny body didn't give him too much energy to run around the court like Hao Ren. He had to stay still and wait for Hao Ren to pass the ball to him. Soon, Yu Rong's team learned about Hao Ren's weak aiming skills. They focused more on defending Zhao Jiayi and the other guys and left Hao Ren alone. It took a lot of energy for Zhao Jiayi and Zhou Liren to grab rebounds, and soon they were out of breath. SH asterisk T. SH asterisk T. SH asterisk T. Zhao Jiayi shouted. He was upset when he noticed that they had fallen behind, knowing that his team's average skill was higher than that of Yu Rong's. Hao Ren held the ball and saw that the other team entirely blocked his three teammates. He took another shot seeing that he had no chance to pass the ball, and sure enough, it was another air ball. I told you I can't play basketball, and I'll only drag you guys down. Hao Ren murmured when he saw Zhao Jiayi's mad expression. At that moment, some dark clouds came above him, blocking the bright sunshine. Hao Ren looked up at the sky instantly. However, instead of the clouds, he saw Xie Wanjun standing behind him, tall as a hill. Zhao Jiayi and the other guys realized the change in the situation, and they hastily threw away the basketball and gathered around Hao Ren. They still remembered last time when Hao Ren beat several players on the basketball team. It was like yesterday when those players shouted madly in pain. Right now, the captain of the basketball team was standing on the court with a stern expression. He wasn't supposed to be here. What could this possibly mean? Chapter 95. Hard Labor. Xie Wanjun raised his hand, and Zhao Jiayi and the guys quickly ran over to Hao Ren as they thought Xie Wanjun was going to hit Hao Ren. N0 V3 LTR0 Vei served as the original host for this chapter's release on No 3 LB1N. 
However, Xie Wanjun simply pointed at Hao Ren and said in a calm yet determined tone, You, join the basketball team. This remark stupefied everyone including Hao Ren. What the hell? Why should he join just because you asked him to? Yu Rong shouted with the guys before Hao Ren could even respond. Xie Wanjun ignored their yelling and turned towards Zhao Jiayi. He pointed at him and said calmly, You as well, join the team. Ah? Zhao Jiayi was just as surprised as Hao Ren. Xie Wanjun took out a little notebook from the pocket of his baggy sweatpants and read to Hao Ren, Reaction, Level S. Speed, Level S. Arm Strength, Level SS. Positioning, Level B. Passing, Level C. Dribbling, Level D. Shooting Accuracy, Level E. What is that? Hao Ren asked. However, Xie Wanjun turned to Zhao Jiayi without answering Hao Ren's question. Leaping, level A. Positioning, level A. Passing, level B. Dribbling, level A. Endurance, level A. Judgment, level B. Height, level D, he read. Zhao Jiayi got straight as in B's except for AD for his height, which he felt disheartened about too. Despite his enthusiasm and talent for basketball, he was only 1.7 meters tall. That was also the reason why he didn't make it into his middle school basketball team. His height certainly didn't get in the way of him being popular and being liked by girls at the school. Of course, the latter part of that sentence was from Zhao Jiayi's own words. Even though that was the case, Zhou Liren and the guys kind of believed it when they saw him being invited a lot by pretty girls. The girls had always asked him to go to karaoke or go on a trip with them. When Zhao Jiayi was formally invited to join the basketball team of East Ocean University by the captain, he was thrilled. It had always been his dream to join the basketball team. When Xie Wanjun saw the rock climbing club's registration event outside of the stadium, he decided to make time to take a look and see if there were any physically outstanding freshmen. He was hoping to recruit some new players to invigorate his team. When he saw Shorty Zhao Jiayi smoothly climbed up over 10 meters without any previous experience, he realized how talented this sophomore was. At least he knew how energetic and perseverant Zhao Jiayi was. However, before he could say anything to Zhao Jiayi, the quarreling scene between Hao Ren and Huang Zuji took place. He heard that Hao Ren and his friends were playing basketball outside while he was training in the stadium, so he came over to take a look. When Xie Wanjun saw Zhao Jiayi's smooth shooting motion and excellent basketball consciousness, he knew that he found himself an unprocessed jade. Therefore, he dashed over to invite them despite other people's objections. What a, b, c, d. Is it a multiple choice question? Xu Yandong from Yu Rong's dorm shouted at Xie Wanjun, not knowing how good this captain was at basketball. A, B, C, D, E are levels in my rating system, and S is better than A. He pointed at Zhao Jiayi and said, Your physical quality is excellent, and your basketball foundation is fairly impressive. You are quite promising as a sophomore. Then, he pointed to Hao Ren and said, Your foundation is extremely poor but your physical quality is not excellent. Um, that remark hit Hao Ren pretty hard. Not excellent, but abnormally excellent, Xie Wanjun continued. Hao Ren who looked down immediately lifted up his head. I'm missing a few players in the game next week, so you need to serve as a last resort, Xie Wanjun carried on calmly as if the opinion of others didn't matter to him at all. Hao Ren thought about it for a few seconds. After he made sure that Xie Wanjun wasn't there to pick a fight with them, he said, There's no problem if you want Zhao Jiayi on your team, but I don't know how to play at all. You have no choice. One of the things the vice principal promised me when I fired my team members was that I could pick anyone for the game next week, Xie Wanjun said to Hao Ren in his calm voice. Hao Ren shook his head and replied, Even so, Xie Wanjun lifted his hands and interrupted Hao Ren. A man should take responsibility for his actions. I didn't hold you responsible for injuring my team members. In addition, it was me who urged the school to fire those troublemakers, he said. He requested them to be fired. Not only Hao Ren, Xu Rong, Zhao Jiayi, and the other guys were all surprised. You can check with the vice principal, Lu Qing, if you don't believe my words, Xie Wanjun said before closing his mouth. Hao Ren suddenly remembered that when he went to see Lu Qing in the administrative building, Xie Wanjun was there too. Now, he realized that Xie Wanjun looked mad back then because his team members caused a lot of trouble. This captain wasn't mad at him. 
Xie Wanjun didn't rush for Hao Ren's decision as he noticed that Hao Ren was rooted in his thoughts. He turned to Zhao Jiayi and asked seriously, Are you willing to join the basketball team? Okay. Zhao Jiayi agreed immediately. Xie Wanjun asked again since he didn't hear the answer he was looking for, Are you willing or not willing? I'm willing to join the team. Zhao Jiayi gave a definite answer. The guys looked at Zhao Jiayi in surprise as they didn't expect him to join the enemy team so quickly. He was just in an intense fight with the members of the basketball team not long ago, yet he was already a part of their team. However, Zhao Jiayi thought differently. Basketball was not only his hobby but also his dream. He saw the invitation from the captain of the basketball team as the recognition for his abilities. The opportunity only knocks once, so he had to make the most of it. Having gotten an affirmative answer from Zhao Jiayi, Xie Wanjun turned to Hao Ren again and asked, How about you? Do you want to be a part of the game next week? Hao Ren heard him clear this time. Instead of asking him to join the team, Xie Wanjun was asking if he wanted to play in the game next week. With your strength and fast reaction time, you can be a good fit to replace Bai Zhishang's position. You can be the temporary power forward of the team. You will be rebounding, defending, and blocking. We won't count on you for shooting and scoring. Simply put, you will be the hard labor in the restricted area. Xie Wanjun laid it all out to Hao Ren without mercy. Hao Ren understood and felt relieved after hearing this. Sounds like this Xie Wanjun had been paying attention to me for a while now, he thought. You, on the other hand, Xie Wanjun turned back to Zhao Jiayi and said, are quick in reacting and smooth in dribbling. You can also protect the ball well while dribbling since your center of gravity is lower. Plus, with a great sense of space and timing, you can pass the ball on by making use of gaps and errors in the other team's defense. You are a great fit as a point guard. Your accurate shooting skills can benefit you in this position even more. Xie Wanjun kept on and on about how good Zhao Jiayi was. Even though Zhao Jiayi was short, Xie Wanjun couldn't stop praising him out loud. Zhao Jiayi's eyes got brighter and brighter. Although Hao Ren didn't understand the meaning of the whole spiel, Zhao Jiayi, as a basketball fan, knew clearly that the point guards had the most opportunity to control the ball in an entire game. They were the real core of the team. Yes. I'm in. Hao Ren agreed without hesitation after seeing his buddy light up with excitement. He asked, when do we start training? Xie Wanjun couldn't help but laugh when he heard Hao Ren's question. Your friend can start his training with the rest of the team starting tomorrow. As for you, he dragged out his voice before stating, Yujia can instruct you. Chapter 96. What are brothers? Yujia. Hao Ren and the others felt that this name was so familiar, but they couldn't think of the person. Xie Yujia, your class president, Xie Wanjun said. Hao Ren and the others were stunned again. Ah, they looked at each other and gasped at the same time. She's my younger sister. Her basketball skills aren't that great, but she is good enough for a noob like you, Xie Wanjun said as he looked at Hao Ren. Younger sister, after some murmuring, the guys couldn't help but shout, huh? Younger sister. Comparing the skinny and pure Xie Yujia to this powerful and buff Xie Wanjun, no one would believe that they were related. This black, gorilla, actually has a beautiful younger sister. What kind of expression is that? Xie Wanjun looked at them emotionlessly and asked. Even Yu Rong, who was usually quick on his feet, didn't know what to say due to the shock. Hao Ren thought back to the morning when he rode the bicycle with Xie Yujia on the back seat. They entered from the west entrance, and there were many hotels nearby. They bumped into Xie Wanjun, who was leading the whole basketball team for their morning run. At that moment, Xie Yujia was sitting in the back and was holding onto his lower waist. N0V3LTR0V served as the original host for this chapter's release on NOV3LB1N. That'll be all. You will come to the school's main entrance and gather with us at 6 o'clock tomorrow morning. We'll start with a morning run, and then you'll join the regular training. Xie Wanjun said to Zhao Jiayi. Then, he turned to Hao Ren and said with a cold face, I will have Yujia teach you the basic basketball moves one by one. Same time in the morning at 6 o'clock, and you'll train on the outdoor basketball court. After he said that, he turned around and was about to leave. A pretty girl will teach Hao Ren basketball. This tempted Zhou Liren. And he asked courageously, Big bro, can I join the basketball team as well? As he said that, he rolled up his sleeves and revealed the round muscles on his shoulder. 
Look, I am strong too, and I am also above 1.8 meters, he added. Xie Wanjun glanced at him and interrupted with one sentence, You still have a long way to go. Then, the captain of the basketball team turned around and walked away steadily. Soon, everyone on the court could only look at his figure from afar. Zhou Liren was struck badly by Xie Wanjun's disdainful sentence. He couldn't adjust to the sentence in time, and he said to Zhao Jiayi, Ain't I strong? Don't you forget your bros since you're on the basketball team now. Zhao Jiayi, you have to recommend me. His eagerness to join the team seemed to have helped him forget how he looked at Zhao Jiayi as a traitor when Zhao Jiayi agreed to join the basketball team. Everything happened all of a sudden, and it took Yu Rong and the others a while to get all the facts straight. Zhao Jiayi was recruited to the basketball team, and Hao Ren would play in the basketball game between East Ocean University and Jinghua University. Furthermore, Zhao Jiayi was going to attend the basketball team's training, and Hao Ren would be instructed by Xie Yujia regarding basic basketball moves. The most shocking news among them was that the beautiful Xie Yujia was actually Xie Wanjin's younger sister. Not only Yu Rong and others were dazed, but Zhao Jiayi himself was also confused. He didn't expect that fighting with the members of the basketball team would bring him such fortune. He got Xie Wanjin's attention and was recruited to the basketball team to fill the vacancies. In addition, the position he would be playing was going to be point guard, the most important position in the team. However, none of them knew that Xie Wanjun was really eager to recruit Hao Ren for next week's game. Only his level of stamina and strength could help them with this tough battle when the main players were missing. Xie Wanjun wanted to punish those few black sheep, but he didn't want to lose the game as well. Even though Zhao Jiayi had potential, it would take time to train him. Fortunately, Hao Ren understood the meaning of a bundled sale of his good friends and himself. Therefore, Xie Wanjun only praised Zhao Jiayi on the surface, but he actually thought highly of Hao Ren. Since the training would be very tough, he didn't want to make it seem like he was avenging for what happened earlier. That was why he had his younger sister instruct Hao Ren instead of putting him on the basketball team for the cruel training. He didn't praise Hao Ren because he was afraid that Hao Ren would get too confident and cocky. As a matter of fact, the key to winning the game next week was Hao Ren. Xie Wanjun wasn't stupid. He had a thoughtful mind and steady way of dealing with things. If not, how could he lead the basketball team of East Ocean University to the championship in the National College Basketball League? On the other hand, Hao Ren wasn't stupid either. He accepted Xie Wanjun's request because he wanted to help his friend, Zhao Jiayi, on his first public appearance. He was planning to fully cooperate with Zhao Jiayi and make him score a lot in next week's game between East Ocean University and Jinghua University. Even though he didn't know much about basketball. He knew Zhao Jiayi's performance in the first game would determine his future ranking on the basketball team. Zhao Jiayi, you got to treat us now that you successfully got on the basketball team. Zhou Liren, who couldn't be on the basketball team, yelled to Zhao Jiayi in distress. Treat, 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 all you know is treating you. Zhao Jiayi hit Zhou Liren's head with his hand, turned around, and told Yu Rong, call everyone from room 301 to 306, I'll treat you guys. Afterward, he couldn't stifle his smile. Luck just dropped from the sky. He brought Hao Ren to play basketball and got scouted by the captain of the basketball team's captain. He became a member of the basketball team inexplicably and would have a chance to play in the National College Basketball League. After this incident, they didn't have the mood to play more basketball. Yu Rong wanted to go back and spread the news, and Zhao Jiayi was also in a rush to tell his friends from high school about this great news as well. He might have to treat them in a celebration, too. Thus, everyone dispersed. Yu Rong brought his basketball back to the dorm. Zhao Jiayi went to invite his high school friends who were also studying in East Ocean University, and Zhou Liren followed Yu Rong to join in on the fun. Hao Ren saw that it was almost 4 o'clock, so he thought for a while and decided to meet Su Han. After Su Han put the Mount Tai bracelets on his wrists, Hao Ren didn't dare to go into the trap again. However, it wouldn't work if he kept on avoiding her. After all, he still needed her to advise him on cultivation. Although Vice Principal Lu Qing was kind, he was really busy, and Hao Ren didn't want to trouble him often either. Hao Ren came to the door of Su Han's office exactly at 4 o'clock. He knocked on the door, heard Su Han say, come in, from within, and pushed the door open to go inside. Su Han wore a colorful floral dress today. 
The design of spaghetti straps revealed her smooth shoulders and made them seem pretty and glamorous. The cut of the dress totally highlighted her perfect body shape, and any guys would drool over Su Han in this outfit. At the moment, she was sitting on a chair while leaning against the window. Her long legs were resting on top of a stool, and she was reading a magazine. If Su Han isn't a teacher, she could definitely do well as a model, Hao Ren thought as he walked over and coughed twice. Su Han glanced at him and looked at the seat in front of her as she said, Go cultivate yourself. Oh, Hao Ren walked over, crossed his legs, and sat on the bamboo mat with the Tai Chi pattern. Before he closed his eyes, Hao Ren looked at Su Han, who sat in front of him, again. He saw her grabbing the coffee on the windowsill and flipping through the magazine as she took a sip. Su Han actually has a modern side to her as well. Hao Ren corrected his perspective of Su Han once again. Su Han seemed to have sensed Hao Ren's stares, so she said while reading, You were in the spotlight today. You are talking about the rock climbing club? Hao Ren thought and asked. What else could it be? Su Han asked back. Hao Ren smiled and didn't say anything. He thought Su Han didn't really care about other matters and only cared about cultivation. Yet, it seemed that an inspector like her was actually aware of the surrounding events. Did you go to the Dragon Palace last weekend? Su Han asked. Yeah, Hao Ren nodded. Hao Ren was actually a little afraid of Su Han. She was no doubt the secret agent of the Dragon Tribe. The inspector's abilities of information gathering were very intimidating. Come here, Su Han thought for a bit and waved at Hao Ren. Hao Ren walked up to her. No matter if it was a good thing or a bad thing, any types of resistance would be useless in front of this master. She held up Hao Ren's wrist as if she was trying to sense something. Hao Ren's arm was held up by her, and he felt her exquisite and smooth palm. That comfort was indescribable. Su Han is the number one beauty in East Ocean. No wonder so many people are obsessed with her, he thought. Your heart is beating very fast, Su Han said indifferently. Being held by a beauty like you, it's hard for it not to beat fast, Hao Ren replied. Su Han raised her head and stared at Hao Ren before saying, sweet talk. It might be because she wasn't happy with her reply, she added again, I can put two more Mount Tai bracelets on you if you want. Ah, uh, please don't, Hao Ren gave in quickly. It wouldn't do him any good if he made the beautiful Su Han angry. However, he felt this icy beauty was a little cute sometimes. Su Han let go of Hao Ren's arm after a while and said, You've improved since last time, but two meridians' ends were split in the wrong direction. They are Yangwei Meridian and Yinchao Meridian. Try feeling it yourself. In acupuncture and Chinese medicine, each of a set of pathways in the body along which vital energy is said to flow. Hao Ren followed her instructions, worked the natural essence in his body using the spirit concentration scroll, and felt the slight clog in these two spots. However, there were only three to four small acupoints in those spots, so Hao Ren was able to open them up in no time after guiding the nature essence in his body through them. The spirit concentration scroll formed a perfect cycle and circulation in his body, and it immediately made Hao Ren feel the increase in the speed of circulation of the nature essence. Seeing Su Han looking down at the magazine again, Hao Ren admired her and felt grateful. After all, I still need a master to coach me. If I tried to explore it myself, I don't know when I would be able to find that something is wrong with my meridians. It would also take time away from breaking through the third level of the spirit concentration scroll. On the other hand, Zhao Guang often meets up with me and instructs me on cultivation as well. Yet, he didn't spot any issues with my cultivation. This is proof that Su Han's level is way stronger than Zhao Guang's, he thought. Seeing Su Han ignoring him again, Hao Ren returned to his seat and prepared to concentrate on cultivation. He was about to close his eyes, but he thought for a while and asked, Su Han, you're not cultivating? Su Han raised her head and looked at him. You really think I am a cultivation freak? I have to rest sometimes too. Besides, you would affect my cultivation in some way when you are here, she said straightforwardly. Hao Ren forced a smile. Even though this teacher's level was high, her attitude was not exactly the greatest. He closed his eyes and was about to cultivate, but Su Han suddenly said, Do you know about Zi's birthday party? Isn't it next month? Hao Ren asked. Yeah, I already received an invitation. The scale of Zi's birthday party will be huge this time, and many important figures who live in seclusion will be there, Su Han said. 
Is it because of the importance of Z's 15th birthday? Hao Ren asked. Humph. Su Han snorted lightly, it's not as simple as you think. If it's just a normal party, I wouldn't be talking to you about it. Hao Ren sensed that there was more that Su Han was not telling him and asked, what you're saying is. This gathering seems like Z's birthday party on the surface, but it's an event to compare the strengths of the four oceans, especially East Ocean and West Ocean. Zhao Guang visited and invited many important figures to come out and help. The appearances of these influential figures would indicate where they stand. Seeing Su Han saying this solemnly, Hao Ren became serious as well. Does it mean the start of a war? He asked. It's not as severe as a war, but small-scale fights will definitely happen continuously. Even though these two oceans seem friendly to each other, their relationship has deteriorated over these years. East Ocean's businesses on land are doing way better than West Ocean. But in terms of cultivation, West Ocean is slightly better. Isn't Zhao Yanzi's third uncle very powerful? Hao Ren asked. Su Han shook her head and explained, because of him, West Ocean doesn't dare to do anything reckless. Zhao Kuo is the number one master in the human realm. Other than those old cultivators who don't come out for thousands of years, almost no one could defeat him. Zhao Yanzi's third uncle is that strong, Hao Ren was shocked again. After hearing both the flattering from Premier Sha and the compliment from the Heavenly Master Su Han, Hao Ren felt totally different about Zhao Kuo. He's truly invincible in the human realm, no wonder Zhao Yanzi's third uncle is so arrogant, Hao Ren thought. However, Su Han changed her tone, Zhao Kuo's heavenly tribulation will be next month. If Zhao Kuo can pass through the heavenly tribulation and become a heavenly dragon, West Ocean will still be intimidated for a while. If not, Su Han didn't continue. However, Hao Ren's mood became solemn as her tone changed. Since he was truly invincible in the human realm, Zhao Kuo's heavenly tribulation would definitely be very tough. Thus, don't think that you'll be fine as Zhao Guang's son-in-law. If East Ocean and West Ocean start fighting, they may not be capable of protecting Z, Su Han stated. Z will be in danger despite being the daughter of the Dragon King. Hao Ren's heart skipped a beat. In fact, East Ocean and West Ocean held grudges against each other for so long, and Z is like the spark that ignited the bomb. And you, Su Han stared at Hao Ren and said, just became Z's fiancé at this time. Hao Ren's heart skipped another beat. I'm not too sure what Zhao Guang is thinking. Maybe he's preparing for the worst and will be handing Z to your care, Su Han said. Hao Ren didn't speak. He was thinking hard. At this moment, his mind suddenly felt confused, and he was no longer in the mood to cultivate. Which side are you on? Hao Ren asked her after a few seconds. I'm an inspector. Theoretically, I need to maintain the orderliness of the whole dragon tribe. If they really start fighting, I can only remain neutral. East Ocean and West Ocean are both powerful forces and can't be stopped by one or two inspectors, Su Han replied. Hao Ren fell into thoughts again. Soon, he asked Su Han, what should I do? Work harder to cultivate, Su Han left him with four words. Hao Ren didn't expect this kind of response. However, when he thought again, there was nothing else he could do. Other than trying to raise his strength, he couldn't do anything else. These internal fights of the dragon tribe couldn't be controlled by the secular forces. In Z's birthday party next month, many important figures, as well as other inspectors, will appear in various forms. Any impure essence will be detected by them. However, as Z's fiancé, you must be there. In other words, Su Han dragged out her words, if you haven't leveled up to Khan level successfully to prove that you're a member of the Dragon Tribe, you'll be in a dangerous situation. Dangerous situation. Su Han said those two words syllable by syllable. From Zhao Kuo's speech and behavior, it is easy to tell the attitude these masters had towards normal human beings. Sai. It seems like I have no other choice, Hao Ren thought. His forehead was full of sweat as he closed his eyes and concentrated on cultivating the most fundamental cultivation technique, the spirit concentration scroll. Su Han, who sat in front of him, sighed deeply. She looked down at her beautiful hands and thought, Sigh, if this guy can't reach Khan level in time, should I help? Chapter 97 Little fiancé has her own thoughts Hao Ren cultivated in Su Han's office with his eyes closed until the vibration of his phone disturbed him at 6 o'clock. Where are you, Ren? Come for dinner at Hongji Square. I'm paying. 
Zhao Jiayi cried out excitedly over the phone. I'll pass. There's something else I need to do, Hao Ren said. Damn it, you. Zhao Jiayi tried to convince him, but Hao Ren still said no therefore, he had to let it go. Time's up. I'm out. Hao Ren stood up and said to Su Han after he realized it was already 6 o'clock. Okay, Su Han nodded. Seeing that Su Han didn't have anything else to say, Hao Ren left her office and took the bus to Zhao Yanzi's place. Today was the day her midterm results got released. Therefore, as her tutor as well as future husband, Hao Ren wanted to know as soon as possible. Hao Ren knew that the dinner at Hongji Square with Zhao Jiayi wouldn't end early, so he decided to pick Zhao Yanzi over the guys after some consideration. The front door was half open for Hao Ren when he got there. He walked in and saw Zhao Hongyu putting several dishes on the dining table. Auntie. Hao Ren greeted. Hee hee, you are here. Zhao Guang went to pick Zi up, and they should be back soon as well, Zhao Hongyu smiled lightly and said. Hao Ren asked after a bit of hesitation, Auntie, is it Zi's birthday next month? Um, yes. I thought she would tell you about it. Why? Are you preparing a gift for her? Hao Hongyu asked casually as she laid out the plates in order. Will there be a lot of people that day? Is West Ocean coming as well? Aren't East Ocean and West Ocean not getting along? Hao Ren asked a few questions in a roll. Did Su Han tell you all this? Zhao Hongyu laughed. There's no need to worry. You are already a part of our East Ocean, and we sure won't let anyone hurt you. Zhao Hongyu rubbed his head as if he was Z and said when she saw how worried Hao Ren was, don't overthink. Just act normal. If anything, Z's dad and I will take care of it. Okay, Hao Ren nodded. After Zhao Hongyu's comforting words, there wasn't much that Hao Ren could say. It seemed like there were indeed some conflicts between East Ocean and West Ocean. However, it was not an issue for Zhao Yanzi yet since her parents were dealing with all the pressure. Pa! Zhao Yanzi opened the door and entered, holding Zhao Guang's hand. She pouted as soon as she saw Hao Ren in the room. She was still not over the fact that Hao Ren bullied her last night. Okay, go wash your hands, and let's have dinner, Zhao Hongyu said to both of them softly. After the four of them had sat down at the table, Zhao Hongyu asked Hao Ren how his grandma was doing back home. Then, she asked if the tutoring for Zhao Yanzi got in the way of his own studies. She didn't mention anything about the fight Hao Ren and Zhao Yanzi had last night on purpose. Hao Ren answered each question politely while Zhao Yanzi made a cold face, ignoring him at the dinner table. After that, Zhao Hongyu asked Zhao Guang about the invitations to Zi's birthday party. I have already sorted out the list and asked Premier Shah to send the invitations out last time I went back to the Dragon Palace. So far, South Ocean, North Ocean, and West Ocean are all attending. A few River Dragon Kings who are located further will send their congratulating gifts. Several Lake Dragon Kings will show up as well, Zhao Guang said. How many people from West Ocean are coming? Zhao Hongyu asked. About 50 of them. And Old Zeng will be coming in person too. Zhao Guang said as he picked up some vegetables with his chopstick. Isn't he under his 100-year isolated cultivation? Why is he attending? Zhao Hongyu asked. Hmm, all because of this incident, Zhao Guang said in disdain. Zhao Hongyu slightly frowned and shook her head. Though we are not afraid of him because Zhao Kuo is going to be there, she said. That's true. But the biggest problem is not old Zeng. It's the inspectors from different regions. Su Han has a good relationship with us, and she never caused any trouble for East Ocean. But it's hard to say if the other inspectors will, Zhao Guang said seriously. Zhao Hongyu pointed at the dishes when she realized Hao Ren was listening carefully. Eat first. We'll talk about it later, she said. Hao Ren thought to himself, Zhao Yanzi's birthday is going to be a huge event. It looks like many powerful dragons are going to be present. Oh. I met Zi's class advisor when I picked her up today, Zhao Guang said all of a sudden. Oh, I was just about to ask. How is it? Zi's midterm result should be out, right? Zhao Hongyu was suddenly excited. It's out, but her class advisor didn't tell me about it. She said that the report cards would be distributed during the parent-teacher meeting tomorrow evening, Zhao Guang said. When her parents were talking about her grades, Zhao Yanzi was eating with her head down, pretending she didn't hear them at all. However, Hao Ren assumed she did terrible from her reaction. Tomorrow evening. What a rush. I have been working on a design lately and won't be able to make time for it tomorrow. 
Can you go instead? Zhao Hongyu asked. I know you are busy these days, but I have been arranging things for Zi's birthday event, and I have to pay a visit to Elder Mew from the Breeze Forest. You know people like him wouldn't even come if I am not delivering the invitation myself. Once I'm there, he would insist on playing chess and having a chat. I don't even know when I will be able to get back, Zhao Guang was replied. Zhao Hongyu sighed, tomorrow is the deadline for submitting the blueprint for Beijing's new Times Square, and I really want to get the bid. There are only eight architectural design studios from all over the world that got the opportunity to bid for it. All right, all right, it's okay if you can't come, Zhao Yanzi shouted, dissatisfied. Seeing their daughter throwing a tantrum, Zhao Hongyu and Zhao Guang looked at each other helplessly. Just when Zhao Hongyu was about to give up her plan on bidding for the design, Hao Ren said, I could go on your behalf. Zhao Guang and Zhao Hongyu looked at Hao Ren at the same time. Then, they looked at each other and nodded. That's good. There shouldn't be any important matters for this meeting besides the release of the report card. Zhao Hongyu nodded at Hao Ren and said, Then, please go on our behalf this time, Ren. The parent-teacher meeting starts at 6 o'clock tomorrow afternoon, and Z is in grade 8 class 2. Please don't be late, Zhao Guang said. By saying this, he agreed to the idea of Hao Ren attending the meeting for them as well. Hao Ren suddenly thought of Zhao Yanzi's third uncle. But then, he remembered that man's temper. It would be a miracle for him not to offend the teachers. Zhao Guang would not dare to let him go to the parent-teacher meeting at all. His bad temper would explode if the teacher said something bad about Zhao Yanzi, and he did have the ability to destroy the school with an easy blow. After the matter had been settled, they chit-chatted for a little while before dinner was finished. Hao Ren followed Zi upstairs to get started with tutoring. At the same time, Zhao Guang and Zhao Hongyu stayed downstairs to discuss a few more things. Zhao Yanzi's pouted her mouth as soon as they got into her room. Having ignored her attitude, Hao Ren took the books out and said, We are still focusing on English today, and you will learn the difference between to, and, for, and when they should be used. Zhao Yanzi rested her arms on the desk and her chin on her hand, not focused at all. She didn't look energetic in her blue uniform. Hao Ren figured that this must be her usual position in class since her grades were so bad. Listen carefully because this is very important and useful on tests, Hao Ren knocked on the desk with his finger. Zhao Yanzi was still not cooperating, her little mouth was puffing, and she was absent-minded today. What is this face? You are not going to pay attention anymore because the exams are over? Hao Ren asked. My foot is still hurting from your grab yesterday, Zhou Yanzi suddenly shouted at him. Is it? Well, your bite marks are still on my arm too, Hao Ren rolled up his sleeve and showed her. You deserved that, Zhao Yanzi growled. Oh, so I should just let you kick me and do nothing about it? Hao Ren asked. Well, last night you, her face blushed as she stopped mid-sentence. Hao Ren remembered last night and looked down at her feet. She was wearing white student socks, and her lower legs showed a slight curve. It wasn't showy, but the shape of her legs was pretty. Seeing Hao Ren's eyes moving down, Zhao Yanzi screamed out loud again, You are still looking. Aren't you wearing it for people to look at? Hao Ren asked. Pervert. Zhao Yanzi threw her fist at Hao Ren. He caught her little fist and laughed. All right, I won't mess with you anymore. Let's start. However, Zhao Yanzi stared at him and said, You apologize first. Hao Ren kept on laughing with her fist in his hand. You sneaked a peek at my legs yesterday. Apologize for it. Zhao Yanzi went on. She looked just like a sassy girlfriend. Okay, okay, okay. I shouldn't have checked your legs out, Hao Ren said. Are you sorry? Zhao Yanzi wasn't ready to let it slide. Hao Ren sighed, I am sorry. That's more like it. Zhao Yanzi took her fist back, but she still squinted her eyes in anger. Hao Ren couldn't help but laugh at this little girl who had been upset about it all day. I'll just check out your smooth legs. Later on, Hao Ren stopped his thoughts right there. It would make him a pervert if he kept on thinking about it. The lesson for today is the difference between prepositions, to, and, for and when they are used with a subject, Hao Ren opened his book and carried on with the lesson. However, Zhao Yanzi stood up all of a sudden and ran out of the room. What is this girl doing? She is trying to piss me off on purpose. Hao Ren was a bit mad because she interrupted him twice in a roll. Zhao Yanzi rushed back into the room just when Hao Ren was about to go out to find her, 
she almost ran into his arms. What are you doing? Hao Ren asked as he sat back at the desk after Zhao Yanzi. Here, she threw something in front of Hao Ren. Hao Ren took a look and realized it was a band-aid. He asked in confusion, what are you giving me this for? For your wound, stupid. Zhao Yanzi said rudely. I have your bite marks everywhere, and there is only one band-aid, Hao Ren glimpsed at her. It's for this. Zhao Yanzi sounded even more upset as she pointed at Hao Ren's left elbow. Hao Ren lifted his arm but didn't see the injury. He touched where he couldn't see with his right hand and felt the pain. There is indeed a wound here, Hao Ren thought. Not sure if I got injured during rock climbing or got scratched while I was playing basketball today. He looked down at the band aid on the desk and said to Zhao Yanzi, thanks. She turned her head away as her little pigtails wiggled, humph. Hao Ren laughed again. He ripped open the band aid and tried to put it on his wound. However, it was not easy to put it on precisely at such a blind spot. He tried to stick it on with his right hand while bending the left elbow. Since he couldn't see anything, he could only rely on his touch. Hao Ren failed after a few times, looking like a gorilla that was scratching itself. Stupid. Zhao Yanzi couldn't stand it anymore. She took the band-aid and put it on his wound in no time. Could have offered the help a long time ago, Hao Ren thought to himself. However, he was still a little touched by the band-aid she got for him. She brought it over as soon as she noticed the wound. The only problem was the cartoon pattern on this pink band-aid. He decided not to bother since it would be hidden under his sleeve. Now, we are going to talk about the prepositions to, and, Hao Ren continued with his class, and Zhao Yanzi finally calmed down and started taking notes. Her grades were terrible, but her handwriting was pretty nice to look at. After an hour, Zhao Guang came in to get Hao Ren and ask how it was going. Since Zhao Hongyu was working on her design in the attic, Zhao Guang led Hao Ren into the next room. The smell of bug repellent was gone. Zhao Guang asked him some details regarding his cultivation. Hao Ren's proficiency in practicing the spirit concentration scroll had become better and better. However, breaking through was not just a matter of proficiency. Zhao Guang took some time to answer Hao Ren's questions on cultivation. After having gotten Zhao Guang, Premier Sha, and Su Han's instructions as well as Lu Qing's caring advice, Hao Ren was able to grasp more and more critical points in cultivating the spirit concentration scroll. He could gather ideas from all of them and have them support each other. Not just anyone could have the opportunity to get help from these four masters, especially when it was only on a basic technique like this. Hao Ren's sincere eagerness to learn was one of the reasons why they were all willing to teach him everything they knew. It was almost 9 o'clock after Zhao Guang's tutoring section, and Hao Ren's comprehension towards the spirit concentration scroll reached another level. He went back into Zhao Yanzi's room and found her doing her homework. She had already changed into her pajamas, which made her look pretty cute. Hao Ren picked up the books and asked her, You, did badly on the exams? He wanted to ask her this question for a long time, but he held it back until he was leaving. If I did badly, then you must be a bad teacher, she lifted her head and said. Hao Ren shook his head and smiled as he left her room. Hao Ren didn't want Zhao Guang to give him a ride to school. Instead, he insisted on taking the bus. If she did well, then it must have been her own hard work. I'm doing such a thankless task, Hao Ren thought. Chapter 98 An expert in disguise when Hao Ren returned to his dorm, he found the guys from the dorm on the other side of the hallway in his dorm playing cards while Zhao Jiayi, an active card player, was in bed at such an early hour. Zhao Jiayi, how come you didn't join them? Hao Ren asked while he put his tutoring materials on the desk. I need to rest early for tomorrow's practice, Zhao Jiayi said, are you done with your tutoring? Yeah. Oh, don't wait for me tomorrow night since I need to go home, Hao Ren said. How much do you make tutoring each month? Zhao Jiayi asked. Several hundred yuan, Hao Ren made it up. Quit tutoring so that you can play basketball with me every evening. We will be the best partners on the court, Zhao Jiayi urged excitedly. Sorry, point guard, but you are on your own. Hao Ren picked up his wash basin and bonked it lightly on Zhao Jiayi's belly before going down the hallway to wash up in the public bathroom. At half past five the next morning, Zhao Jiayi jumped up and woke up Hao Ren who was on the upper berth. Opening his eyes drowsily, Hao Ren found the energetic Zhao Jiayi standing before him. He knew the latter must not have slept due to the excitement. Time to go. 
We will be late if you don't hurry, Zhao Jiayi urged. Roused by Zhao Jiayi's tugging, Hao Ren had no choice but to get up. Cao Ronghua and Zhou Liren were also woken up by the commotion and forced themselves to get up. To their surprise, the guys in the nearby dorms had also got up. Geez, it's only half past five, Hao Ren was astonished. Let's go and watch Zhao Jiayi and Hao Ren practice. Yu Rong called, walking out from his dorm in a pair of shorts. FCK, there is nothing to watch, Zhao Jiayi yelled. We won't watch you, ugly. We'd like to see Xie Yujia play, Huang Jianfeng yelled back. Hao Ren began to sweat after understanding the reason why the guys had dragged themselves out of bed at such an early hour. After stumbling around and finally washing up in the bathroom, they rushed toward the school's main gate. It was the first time that they rushed out of the dorm building as soon as it was unlocked. Xie Wanjun was already waiting at the gate with the guys from the basketball team. He looked down at his watch while counting down the seconds. Zhao Jiayi, who had been chatting with Yu Rong and the others, dashed toward them. 3. Zhao Jiayi was before Xie Wanjun when the latter counted down to 2. If you are late, you don't have to join us in the future, Xie Wanjun said with a stern expression. Then, he turned to the other teammates and said, begin the morning jogging. With steady steps, he began to run while the others followed him uniformly. Looking at shame-faced Zhao Jiayi, Yu Rong predicted, Working under such a strict guy, I think Zhao Jiayi's good days are over. Hao Ren chuckled before crossing the campus to the basketball court near the stadium. Yu Rong and other nosy guys followed him closely to watch them practice. When Hao Ren came to the basketball court, he found Xie Yujia who was in a pair of sports shorts and a white sports t-shirt was already practicing. Her bike was parked outside of the court. She was a bit surprised at the sight of the large group of guys. Hao Ren walked over and scratched his head in embarrassment, they are determined to come and watch. Xie Yujia's pretty eyes blinked, and she remained silent. With her hair tied into a long ponytail, she looked extraordinarily vibrant and youthful. Her white sneakers showcased her white ankles which were even whiter than the shoes. The color of her skin fit the description of Snow White. Huang Jianfeng and others, who had rarely crossed paths with the class president, were starry-eyed when they looked at the vibrant Xie Yujia at such close range. They had seen Xie Yujia in class, but they had never imagined that the dignified girl could be so athletic. Have you had breakfast? Ignoring the admiring stares, Xie Yujia asked Hao Ren. Not yet. We came directly from the dorms, and the cafeteria isn't open yet, Hao Ren answered. Aha! Uh -huh. Xie Yujia nodded and ran to her bike. She lifted a bag from the basket and handed it to Hao Ren. I got up early and bought some bowsy one, she said. Hao Ren was amazed. You should eat them so that you will have the strength to practice. I've already eaten, Xie Yujia pushed the buns toward him. Class president, we want to eat bowsy, too, Huang Jianfeng yelled. Those are the last three bowsy. Besides, you are not here for practice, Xie Yujia said, turning to look at them. We want to practice, too. They continued with their demands. Xie Yujia turned to face Hao Ren and ignored them. Class president, ignore them, Hao Ren was exasperated. After eating the baozi, he immediately felt better. Okay, you warm up a bit, and then I'll show you how to play, Xie Yujia nodded at Hao Ren briskly. Hao Ren nodded, though he still felt uncomfortable letting a girl show him how to play basketball. While Hao Ren was warming up, Xie Yujia picked up the orange basketball from the ground. I'll show you one of the basics, dribble. Dribble is more than bouncing the ball, she said. Xie Yujia bent her back and kept low, moving her left arm before her body in defense while her right hand pushed down the basketball deftly. The ball bounced up immediately, and Xie Yujia followed the momentum and held the ball in her palm before pushing the ball back down with a standard move of her wrist. The movements were as smooth as exercising Tai Chi in the water. Except for the slower speed, the movements were almost as professional as those of the basketball players who were broadcasted on TV. Seeing the stunned expressions of Yu Rong and the other guys, Hao Ren was no longer shameful for learning basketball from a girl. The class president was a basketball expert in disguise. But, wait, what are the guys staring at? Hao Ren found their expressions quite weird and followed their gazes. It was not the basketball they were staring at but the low neckline of her t-shirt when she bent over to dribble the ball. Beneath the white t-shirt, 
a portion of her white skin and even a part of the contour of her beautiful chest were exposed. Hao Ren immediately blocked her from their view. Er, he pointed at Xie Yujia's chest and murmured, Your, neckline. Looking down at her neckline, Xie Yujia yelled in embarrassment. She stood straight immediately as she placed her left hand on the loose neckline of her t-shirt. Her face reddened immediately. In the misty morning, her blush looked especially distinct and pretty. Ren, where are your morals? You wrong and the others shouted indignantly. Hearing their shameless yells, Xie Yujia's face fell, and she bit her lip instinctively. Well, well, get out of here. Don't piss off the class president. Hao Ren walked over to kick them away. Yu Rong and other guys were driven out of the basketball court while still protesting. Their view would be less clear through the fences. Hao Ren returned to the court and said to Xie Yujia, I drove them off. Class president, let's continue. Okay. Xie Yujia was still pink in the face, but she continued, the dribble, ah, uh, where was I? You said that dribbling is not as simple as bouncing the ball, and then you showed me the movements, Hao Ren said. Seeing Xie Yujia was still uncomfortable, Hao Ren continued, Class President, you just show me the moves. I won't let my eyes wander to the places they shouldn't. Hearing his placating words, Xie Yujia turned even redder, berating herself silently for neglecting the neckline of the t shirt while bending to dribble the ball. In fact, she had purposefully chosen a t shirt with a smaller neckline, but the guys apparently had sharper eyes than she anticipated. While Hao Ren was trying to comfort her, he thought to himself, Yu Rong and the guys are really bad for daring to peek at the class president. Now, the view is only for my eyes. The inaugural upload of this chapter took place via N O V L B N. If Yu Rong, who was standing far away outside of the court, had known Hao Ren's thoughts, he would have rushed in and given Hao Ren a good beating for being such a hypocrite. Xie Yujia lifted up the neckline of her t-shirt before bending again and explaining, I'll show you the correct dribbling position. Keep your feet apart at a comfortable distance and bend your knees slightly. Lean your body forward and keep your head up to observe the situation on the court. Then, raise your left elbow to protect the ball. Xie Yujia demonstrated while explaining the key points. During the process, Hao Ren watched the movements of her hands and feet in the white skin exposed at her neckline. Although he saw Xie Yujia's neckline had loosened again, he kept his mind on the dribbling movement of her arms. Afterward, Xie Yujia handed the ball to Hao Ren for him to practice. She moved his wrists and lowered his back to get him into the right position. Xie Yujia looked natural guiding him, but Hao Ren was uncomfortable with this pretty girl standing close to him and sliding her smooth palms along his wrist. When he wasn't following her instructions, she even moved her arm against his to correct his moves. She was Hao Ren's beautiful private coach, despicable, shameless. Standing outside of the fence, Yu Rong and the guys watched the intimate contact between Xie Yujia and Hao Ren on the basketball court more than 10 meters away. They were burning with envy. Chapter 99. Off limit from 6 o'clock to 7 o'clock, Hao Ren finally understood how to dribble under Xie Yujia's earnest instructions. He had never played basketball except for the occasions when he was dragged to the court by Zhao Jiayi. However, when he was in middle school, he had been a member of the track and field team and was close with the soccer team. He had often acted as their temporary goalkeeper and thus was not a stranger to balls. Despite the chilliness of the morning wind, Xie Yujia began to sweat while jogging around Hao Ren to get him into the correct positions. Covered with a thin layer of sweat, she looked even more alluring. Her fit and beautiful figure attracted Hao Ren's gaze while he was practicing how to dribble. After all, Xie Yujia had told him not to stare at the ball but to observe the movements on the court. Currently, Xie Yujia was the only person on the court. Xie Yujia blushed at his stare, and she went behind him to correct his posture. Class president, I've dribbled for an hour now, and my arms are sore. When can I learn something else? Hao Ren turned to look at her before asking. We are practicing the standing dribble which is the simplest technique, and we'll turn to dribble while running after a while. Why are you so impatient? Xie Yujia snorted and lectured Hao Ren like a coach. Change to your right hand, she instructed. Immediately, Hao Ren changed the ball to his right hand and resumed dribbling. Good, Xie Yujia nodded approvingly and said, Now, I'll show you the running dribble. The match is next week, so I won't have time to teach you crossovers. It will be enough if you master the speed dribble. 
She stole the ball from Hao Ren and ran to mid-court after a series of dizzying dribbling movements around Hao Ren. Look carefully. The key to the running dribble is the coordination between your hands and feet. You must not travel with the ball. The faster you move, the farther back the ball will be, and the greater force you will need to apply. When you are traveling in a straight line, you usually dribble once every two steps. Hao Ren admired Xie Yujia's vigorous figure in her white t-shirt and the sway of her long ponytail. Thinking back to how easily she stole the ball from him, Hao Ren was ashamed of himself. This chapter made its debut appearance via N0V3LB1N. After looking around, he found that Yu Rong and the guys had left. It was not surprising since they could only watch Xie Yujia from afar and could not interact with her. One hour of that would make the drowsy guys bored. Clap. Clap. Xie Yujia dribbled the ball back to Hao Ren from midcourt. It was quite enjoyable to watch her beautiful white legs running in the white sneakers. Suddenly, someone whistled at Xie Yujia from outside of the court. Hao Ren turned and saw the basketball team led by Xie Wanjun was passing the wired fence of the court. Some of the team members saw the pretty Xie Yujia playing basketball and couldn't help but to whistle to show their appreciation. It seems like not all the players know that she is Xie Wanjun's younger sister, Hao Ren thought. Xie Wanjun stopped suddenly and pointed at the guys who had whistled. Each of you, do 50 push-ups here and now, he shouted. Then, he entered the open basketball court in zone B and walked up to Xie Yujia and Hao Ren. He asked, how was the practice? Very good. He is a quick learner, Xie Yujia answered immediately. Taking the ball from Xie Yujia's hand, Xie Wanjun turned abruptly and dribbled the ball at lightning speed to the net before jumping up and dunking it with a bang. Outside the court, Zhao Jiayi gaped at the scene. He had been jogging for an hour and was soaked in sweat, but he rallied again when he witnessed Xie Wanjun's masterful show of skill and strength. Get back to your drill. Xie Wanjun caught the ball and tossed it to Hao Ren. Hao Ren caught the ball and was at a loss for words. Walking out of the court, Xie Wanjun turned to the guys who were still obediently doing push-ups and slapped them on their heads one by one. She is my younger sister. If any of you dares to whistle at her in the future, you will do 200 push-ups for it. Now get up and run to the stadium to start training, he said. Then, he jogged with the team into the stadium. Zhao Jiayi, who was at the end of the line, turned to look at Hao Ren in the open basketball court and waved his arms at him in encouragement. Just ignore my brother. He's just showing his muscles. Let's get back to our practice. Xie Yujia took the ball from Hao Ren and dribbled it like a professional player. Then, she showed Hao Ren high dribble, low dribble, dribble block, and dribble turn. Hao Ren admired her thorough and professional manner. He was surprised that this well-behaved and tri-merit student was also good at basketball. Xie Yujia didn't stop the morning session until 8.30 a.m. when some students passed the court on their way to their classes. Xie Yujia picked up the basketball and said, Well, we're done now. It's time for class. She looked quite cool tucking the ball underneath her arm. Against the green shades, she was like the cover girl on a fashion magazine. Good. Let's go. Slightly panting, Hao Ren nodded and showed his agreement. After all, it would be difficult for a strong person to practice dribbling for two hours without rest while carrying over 25 kilograms on each wrist. Walking out of the court, Xie Yujia put the basketball into the basket on her bike. Then, she walked over to Hao Ren and asked, I brought the books for today's morning classes with me. Don't you need to go back and get your books? No, we as guys never use books in class. Hao Ren waved his hand. Exasperated, Xie Yujia shook her head and replied, Okay then. I will return the basketball to my brother before we go to the cafeteria for breakfast. Then, we can head to the class. She rode the bike to the stadium nearby. Soon, she returned with an empty basket to the exit of the basketball court at Zone B. Let's head to the cafeteria. Xie Yujia beckoned at Hao Ren. You will carry me on your bike? Hao Ren was surprised. Yeah, I can carry people. Xie Yujia nodded and said, jump on. Grinning, Hao Ren scratched his head. He ran to the back seat and jumped onto it lightly. He had thought that Xie Yujia couldn't handle his weight on the bike. To his surprise, she adjusted the position of the paddles and rode steadily forward. Now, Hao Ren was in a dilemma. He had thought that Xie Yujia would have to give up and let him ride, 
but he underestimated her and had to be carried on the back seat to the cafeteria by a girl. Hao Ren kept his feet close to the wheel and cautiously placed his hands around Xie Yujia's waist. He had meant to grip the seat, but it was too small. If he were not careful, he would accidentally touch her. Xie Yujia was silent on the way. It was her first time carrying a boy on her bike. It was an impulsive act, but it was okay since there weren't many students on campus yet. They went into Green Hill Cafeteria and lined up to buy breakfast. Hao Ren had offered to treat the class president to a meal to thank her for teaching him how to play basketball, and Xie Yujia gladly accepted it. While Xie Yujia waited in line with Hao Ren, many guys glanced at her openly or secretly. This was not surprising. In a sports t-shirt, Xie Yujia's gorgeous figure, pretty face, outstanding temperament, and vibrant energy were too tempting to resist. Ignoring the admiring glances, Xie Yujia got her breakfast with Hao Ren and sat down with him to eat. Seeing Hao Ren's ordinary clothes and looks, the guys were jealous of him and wondered how a plain guy like him attracted such a pretty girl. After breakfast, Xie Yujia and Hao Ren walked out of the cafeteria. Coming and going together, they indeed looked like a student couple. Class president, you go ahead and bike to the academic building. I'll walk, Hao Ren said when Xie Yujia went over to her bike. Well, okay. After a moment of consideration, Xie Yujia rode the bike toward the academic building. She knew Hao Ren was afraid that the girls in the class would gossip about them if they were seen on a bike together. Hao Ren looked after Xie Yujia's figure and thought, even on a 100 yuan bike, a pretty girl like her can still make such a beautiful scene. Hey! Hao Ren was suddenly disturbed by a loud yell. He turned and saw Zhao Jiayi standing behind him, covered in sweat. Damn! What are you doing here? Hao Ren asked. I've been here for a while. I saw you in the cafeteria but didn't want to interrupt you guys, Zhao Jiayi said while wiping the sweat off of his forehead. There is nothing between the class president and me. Hao Ren turned and walked toward the academic building. Zhao Jiayi walked along with him. He threw an arm around Hao Ren's shoulder and said, Nothing? Do you think I'm blind? Xie Yujia rode the bike, and you sat on the back seat. You're really good at this. How come no pretty girl is carrying me on a bike? You saw it? Hao Ren asked him. Of course. I just finished the practice and was about to head to class when I saw you guys. Damn. I chased you guys halfway here, but neither of you heard me calling. Imagining Zhao Jiayi chasing them in sweat while they rode forward breezily, Hao Ren felt sorry for Zhao Jiayi. Zhao Jiayi bumped Hao Ren with his brawny hip. Go for her. It seems like Xie Wanjun willing to let you pursue his sister, he said. Well, not now. Hao Ren threw off his sweaty arm. In class, everyone had known that Xie Yujia was Xie Wanjun's younger sister, and it became a hot topic among the students in the classroom. The guys who had been secretly admiring Xie Yujia lamented about the surprising news while silently giving up their plans to pursue her. They congratulated themselves for not acting rashly. After all, it would take more than an ordinary guy to handle the sister of such an influential figure. Now, the girls understood why the overbearing Lin Li from Class 3 wasn't able to do anything to Xie Yujia. It was because Xie Yujia's brother was a figure who was more powerful than Huang Zuji. After the mechanical drawing class, Xie Yujia packed up her stuff, ignored the glances cast her way, and walked out of the classroom with her good friend and dorm mate Malina. Her ponytail swayed innocently, but in other people's eyes, she was no longer an ordinary class president. The gossip spread to other classes when the guys at school began to talk about how Zhao Jiayi, who was only 1.7 meters tall, had suddenly joined the basketball team. It seemed like guys could gossip just as well as girls. Thanks to Hao Ren, Zhao Jiayi was famous. He was in such high spirits that he didn't care about the nature of the gossips. He just couldn't wait for next week's match to begin. However, Hao Ren remained calm the whole day. After his afternoon classes, he went back to the dorm to change before taking the bus to Ling Zhao Middle School. He didn't care about all the gossip at the school since tonight's parent-teacher meeting was his top priority. Chapter 100 Experiencing another life East Ocean University was only several bus stops away from Ling Zhao Middle School. Sitting on the rickety bus, Hao Ren leaned his arm against the window and rested his head on his palm. His gaze fell on the band aid on his elbow. He tore it off and saw only a small trace of blood on it, which meant the wound was not at all serious. 
After looking at the cartoon of a pig on the other side of the band aid, Hao Ren was amused. Hao Ren was reluctant to toss away this memorable little thing after playing with the band aid in his hands for a couple of minutes. On second thought, it would be weird to keep such a thing, so he tossed it into the dustbin on the bus. Actually, this little girl isn't too bad to me, Hao Ren thought. The bus arrived at Ling Zhao Middle School, and Hao Ren got off the bus and found that it was 10 to 6. Many cars were lined up along the street on both sides of the school gate, and parents were hurrying toward the school. Afraid of being late, Hao Ren also hurried toward the gate. However, a middle school girl stopped him. Hey, we have parent-teacher meetings happening today, and only parents can come in, she said. I'm here for a parent-teacher meeting, Hao Ren said. The girl looked at him suspiciously and asked, whose parent are you? Although some parents of middle schoolers were quite young, they were not as young as Hao Ren. Zhao Yanzi from class 2 in 8th grade. I'm her brother, and I'm here to represent her parents who are too busy to come to the meeting today, Hao Ren answered. He had made up the story on the bus. Okay. The girl nodded before lowering her arm to let Hao Ren in. Is Zhao Yanzi this well-known in her school? Hao Ren thought while walking on campus. Ling Zhao Middle School was one of the best middle schools in East Ocean City. The campus was very large and beautiful with rockeries, an artificial lake, modern academic buildings, a stadium, and classical-style art museum, and a music hall. It looked like a multifunctional park. Since many of the students were kids from wealthy families or political families, the security of the school was tight, and no one could enter without permission. Hao Ren grew up in East Ocean City, but it was his first time stepping into this famous middle school. In fact, there were two departments in the school, a high school department and a middle school department. Except for the shared stadium, art museum, and music hall, the departments each had their own facilities including academic buildings, and they were divided by the artificial lake which ran across the campus. Following the direction signs, Hao Ren had no trouble finding the academic building of the middle school department. The classes of the 8th grade were on the 2nd floor, and Hao Ren walked up the stairs and followed the class signs down the hall before finally spotting class 2. There were many parents who were either resting with their eyes closed or talking to each other in the classroom, and Hao Ren attracted a lot of attention since he was too young. On each desk, there was a slip of paper with the student's name on it. Hao Ren spotted Zhao Yanzi's name on a desk in the second row, so he walked over, pulled out the chair, and sat down. The man sitting next to him was a man in his 40s, and Hao Ren nodded at him in greeting. He looked around the classroom. There were the teaching platform and the whiteboard in the front, and a smaller whiteboard with the students' articles posted on it was located on the back wall. However, the teaching platform in the front was bigger than what Hao Ren was used to seeing, and he was new to whiteboards and colored markers as well since his middle school used blackboards and chalks. The desks and chairs were made of metal and were brand new. Hao Ren noticed a small metal name tag on the upper right corner of the desk, and Zhao Yanzi's name was written on it. The students have their own set of desks and chairs. No wonder the desks are kept so clean. How come no one thought of this method in our time? Hao Ren thought to himself. Hao Ren suddenly had a weird feeling about it when thinking about how Zhao Yanzi sat in this chair in class. He imagined Zhao Yanzi sitting here facing the whiteboard while the teacher was giving a lesson exchanging glances with Ling who sat close to her, and passing slips of paper to communicate with her best friend when talking wasn't allowed. There were probably some boys messing with each other when the teacher wasn't looking while some boys glanced secretly at the girls they liked. Some of the boys sitting in the back row probably played with the braids of the girls sitting in front of them, and the girls probably turn around to roll their eyes. Imagining the scenes in the class, Hao Ren glanced at the name tag on the desk next to Zhao Yanzi's and found that it was a girl's name. Well, Zhao Yanzi's neighbor is a girl. Hao Ren was relieved before he caught himself. What am I thinking about? While he was looking around, a middle-aged woman in a suit came into the classroom and stepped onto the platform with a binder tucked under her arm. Good evening, parents. I'm Luo Ying, the class advisor of class 2 of the 8th grade. She introduced herself. Suddenly, she spotted a young man sitting in the classroom and asked suspiciously, and you are. Oh, I'm Zhao Yanzi's older brother. Her parents are busy and asked me to come in their place, Hao Ren said. Since you are her older brother, aren't her parents your parents, too? The experienced class advisor immediately caught the loophole in Hao Ren's words. 
she suspected that Zhao Yanzi, embarrassed about her low scores, had asked a random person to attend the parent-teacher meeting. Some students had done such things before. One student from the middle school department had asked a student from the high school department to act as his parent. The teachers were smarter than the students after all, and both of those students ended up being punished. Oh, I mean I'm her cousin. Fortunately, Hao Ren quickly thought of an explanation. A cousin in the parent-teacher meeting. Luo Ying was displeased, but she didn't pursue the topic. After all, the other parents were waiting for the meeting to begin. The main purpose of today's parent-teacher meeting is to announce the midterm examination scores. As you all know, the kids are now in the 8th grade and will soon be entering the 9th grade. We must prepare them for it since the 9th grade performances depend on their 8th grade performances a lot. They must build a solid foundation for, Luo Ying began her speech to the parents. Sitting in the chair, Hao Ren saw the parents around him listening attentively, and he followed suit, putting on his serious face. However, he knew the class advisor was giving a cut and dry speech, and the purpose was to urge the parents to keep a sharp eye on their kids' studies. It was Hao Ren's first time acting as a parent. Seeing the anxiety on the parents' faces, Hao Ren suddenly thought that he would be one of them one day. Some of you have the mistaken impression that you don't have to worry about your children's academic performances since they could go to the high school department as long as they have passable scores. In fact, Children's performances in the middle school department will decide their academic levels in high school, which in turn will decide which university they can enter, Luo Ying continued her speech. Unlike the other parents, Hao Ren got bored. He lowered his head and began to quietly run through the stuff stored in the drawer of Zhao Yanzi's desk. There was a bottle of half-empty drink, half a bag of chips, and some unopened bags of dried fruits. Also, there was some girly stuff besides the snacks including a nail clipper. This girl even stores food in her desk. Hao Ren pushed those things aside and tried to find out what was behind them. Luo Ying, who was familiar with students' little tricks, had immediately seen Hao Ren's act. However, she swallowed back her reprimand and continued her speech for the other parents. Um, this is, suddenly, Hao Ren hit on something intriguing. 